to see whether or not you get a split screen on gas prices. If we go to four bucks for most of America, we're only three sixty now. Here's the point: if, if you're at four dollars this summer, and Trump's out there saying I was at a buck seventy nine or a buck eighty nine or buck ninety nine, that is a very interesting comparison and split screen that I think applies practically to every American. You know, the president has said over and over again he's had record job creation, unemployment historically low, under 4%. Inflation has come down, but he gets low marks on his handling of the economy over and over and over again. He can't seem to convince Americans that things are better. He thinks they are better, but we just he just can't convince yeah. people. In a broad sense, you've heard that they don't talk about binomics anymore. There, there's a reason yeah, for that. Yeah, that's not a... You know, okay, that. so that, it, they don't want to touch that. Um, some of these surveys will show that a lot of Americans feel good about themselves, and a lot of Americans feel good about their community or even their state, but they don't feel good about the rest of the country. And I, I don't know if I can recall a time where the data suggested that. I, I don't know what that means in the end. You feel good about yourself, but not about everything else. M maybe these are headwinds from some of the bigger stories that are happening around the world. An, an unsettled planet, I would argue, over the past couple of years yeah. with Ukraine and now with Gaza. Yeah, and with Gaza. You bring up people feeling good, yet concerned. You know, Reagan famously asked Carter, or, you know, in the, in the debate with Carter, are you better off than you were four years ago? That's being talked about now. But Democrats will say, well, wait a minute. Do you want four more years of Trump? Because they, they'll bring up, you know, chaos that he had and, you know, all the tweets he used to do. And they think he's going to come back and, and go after people who've been going after him and his legal cases. I mean, it's interesting because when you we have a very unusual case, we're not turning the page to somebody new from mm -hmm. President Biden if we vote him out of office. We're going back to the guy who was in office before him. Hasn't happened in a long time. Yeah, the president did a rare interview this week. He did it with Univision, and he talked about Trump destroying democracy and eviscerating the Constitution. I believe that progressives and a lot of Democrats probably believe that. I, They're afraid of him. I don't believe that most Republicans and even the majority of independents do believe that. I don't believe they do. Um, wh what I find on the inside for some of the polling and what I call the Magnificent Seven, in, in these polls, they've, they've been somewhat consistent for the past month and a half or two months. And that shows Donald Trump with a slight lead. I don't know what that means. Yeah. I don't know if that holds throughout the summer. Yes. I, I think some polls have given... President Biden, a little edge there. I've seen a little bit of movement in the last five or six days, and we'll see whether it lasts. But I, I look, I, I think if you're riding the poll numbers now, I think you're looking at the wrong thing. You know, there's so much that can change. Um, Polls are also unusual, I, I, I Bill. I don't know how Republicans go after this early voting issue, but they've made it pretty clear that they're going to they're gonna talk about it now. And I, I, I don't know how that translates, but look, it's April. You mean play, you mean, you mean do more to get early voting. Encourage, encourage their, their, people, their people to, do, right, to, because, to bank the vote. Yeah, yeah, because, okay. you know, four years ago, that was a big thing. Republicans didn't want to do that, but... I think a lot of Republicans say, well, we have to play the same game as Democrats in order to beat them. Listen, I think, I think they're fools if they don't play by the current state laws in these key battlegrounds. Whether it's mail-in or whatever. It, wh whatever the rules are, you have to push for it. Otherwise, you're just going to keep losing, period. And the polls are also interesting. I, there's a Fox poll that has former President Trump ahead of President Biden among voters under 30. By almost mm. 20 points. So there's another poll by Quinnipiac that has just the opposite, where Biden's ahead of Trump. Another, by good, like, another good reason not to pay attention uh, to So it. I don't know, but... <laughs> but if, I, I do trust our polling, however. Go ahead. If our polling is accurate, where the former president leads with young voters, that's not something Republicans have done traditionally. The former president has, in some polls, appeared to have some more support among black Americans or Hispanics, too. So... Maybe he's making some inroads that will really help in November. Could be, and maybe that's a reflection of how people feel about the economy again. I, I thought there was a really interesting piece. I read it about a week ago. It was in the Financial Times. 
And they looked at all the uh, waves of immigration that have come into the United States, going back to the 1800s. Mm -hmm. now. And he made a very interesting point that maybe is applying right now, whether it's African-Americans, if, if the support is real now, if it is, by the way, it's, you know, George is gone. You know, Joe Biden does not have a shot of winning Georgia if those numbers are legit. They talked about Hispanics uh, in America and where the generations change and they grow more conservative. I don't know if he's right, but he made a very interesting point. Now we have a president in Joe Biden who Republicans blame for the border situation, illegal immigration. He might do an executive order at some point to try to, to stem the tide. That issue is going to be an issue, it seems like, all the way into November. How many people do you think will vote on that issue? Um, I think a lot. I, I, I got to tell you, this. I think this issue really, it, it came out of nowhere. And it, 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 immigration especially, it just spread all over the country. Um, and I think a lot of people think about it right now. You know, what, whether or not, you know, you're going to, you're going to have an open line because it, in a lot of ways, you know, we look at our live shots down there and it's, it's, it's not a border. It's not even a fence. It's just people crossing. And we had a fellow on this week from San Diego. Uh, he's a county executive down there. And he said the intent now, because the laws are the way they are, is that those crossing the border would see the Border Patrol and run the other way. Mm -hmm. Now they see the Border Patrol and they run to them. Mm -hmm. The reason you do that is because you want to be apprehended, let you, know, you get your court day that comes five years from now. And, and you're just let in. Now you're in the country. So, you know, what Abbott did in Texas, like it or not, you know, what DeSantis did in Florida, like it or not, it grabbed headlines. And there's still a lot of programs now where they're flying a lot of migrants into the country. Um, we report on it. A lot of others don't. Uh, it's really popping up there on the uh, on the issue scale for immigration among Americans and what they think we can do. You know, when Trump was talking about that wall in 2016, a lot of people thought he was nuts. Yeah. And well, you know, a lot of mocking him, Mexico is going to pay for it. A he, lot of right. Republicans, yeah. were, they were thinking he was nuts. And now it, it's become... Um, it's, it's become an acceptable argument, where in 2016 and 17, frankly, it wasn't. In 2016 and in 2020, we didn't have abortion to the degree we have it now. It's the number one issue for Democrats. Arizona this week, you mentioned it, is a, is a state that's a battleground state. Arizona this week, the Supreme Court there upholds a law from 160 years ago. 1864. Banning mm -hmm. almost all abortions, even in cases of rape and incest. Even Republicans want that law off the books. Can Democrats overcome the Biden economic issues, the border issues, and win on that issue? They might. I, I, I don't know. And I think that's it's like sports. It's why you play the games. It's, what, it's why you vote. And it's why you hold elections. I think it's going to be a very interesting thing to watch. And we'll, we'll see, you know, if, it, it will pull out voters. I, I just don't know how many and I don't know how it's offset by, you know, where inflation is then, where the economy is then, and where immigration is then. I don't know. But former President Trump has had struggles in the polling with, say, suburban white women, right? Mm -hmm. You've seen that. You you do with election night coverage. You go yeah. county by county on that mm -hmm. map. There are some voter blocks that are difficult for him. Does that make it harder for him, the abortion issue, with some women voters? Uh, it, it could. And... Um, uh, again, that's why that's why they vote. There are seven counties that surround Pittsburgh, Allegheny County. They're not all they're not all suburban. They tend to be rural. Also, they 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 tend to offset the vote inside Pittsburgh. They can. It's possible. There are four counties that surround Philadelphia. The city of Philadelphia goes big for Democrats. Sure. You know, and maybe those other four offset that. Uh, uh, I don't know. Um, but if we find what I saw in 2016, and I still think it's the case today, like Northeastern Ohio is my state. That's where I'm from. And when I saw these counties in Northeastern Ohio flip in red in 2016, I said, man, he's, he's got a chance. Mm -hmm. um, those people haven't changed. They're still there, and we're about to find out whether or not they come out in bigger numbers than before.
We're about 30 weeks away from it all. We have a lot of time, and who knows what will come up until mm-hmm. then. Bill Hemmer, co-anchor of America's Newsroom, 9 to 11, Monday through Friday on the Fox News Channel. Great to talk to you. Thank you. Dave, nice to be with you. Kale and Company, morning 6 till 10, Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Sneezing, coughing, uh, stuffy nose, runny nose, post-nasal drip, interrupted sleeping. I just I was groggy at the end of the day. Allergies and sinus congestion were making Jana miserable. Then, a friend recommended Navage. Navage provides immediate drug-free congestion relief, flushing your nasal passages with refreshing saline and sucking out mucus germs and other airborne irritants. Navage helps you breathe easier, sleep better, and feel your best right away. Navage gave me instant relief. I didn't have to wait 30 minutes. I didn't have to wait an hour, 90 minutes. I didn't have to wait. I didn't have to wait a minute. I just, I ran the rinse and I felt immediately I felt better. Stop suffering from congestion and start breathing and feeling your best again with Navage. N-A-V-A-G-E. I've had people ask me how I find relief, and I tell them Navaj immediately. This thing is amazing. Navaj is available at Navaj.com or at Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, and Rite Aid. Hi, I'm Henry Winkler. My eyes are very important to me. My eyes connect me with everything I love. I loved my late father-in-law dearly. He always lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. And since partnering with Apellus, I've learned there's an advanced form of dry AMD called geographic atrophy, or GA. His struggle with vision loss made me want to help others know about GA's warning signs. For some, colors appear dull or washed out. For others, hazy or blurred vision make it hard to see details, like fine print on price tags. Many have trouble seeing in the dark, making driving at night difficult. GA gets worse over time and cannot be reversed. If you think you have GA, don't wait. Treatments are available. Ask a retina specialist about FDA-approved treatments for GA and go to gawon'twait.com. Join us at Odyssey as we all do our one thing, together millions of things for our planet. This spring, Fairmount Park Conservancy invites you to connect with your Philadelphia neighborhood parks. Join your local park friends group during Love Your Park Week in May or join us for weekly volunteer events all year long. Throughout the city, Fairmount Park Conservancy works with the City of Philadelphia and its communities to bring parks to life. For information and to sign up, visit myphillypark.org. For over a decade, NJ Diet has helped thousands of people lose a contractually guaranteed 20 to 40 plus pounds in only 40 days. That's nearly twice as fast as weight loss injections and without any of those nasty side effects. NJ Diet uses your hair and saliva along with scans to personalize natural solutions and supplements to get you to shed that fat quickly. Then, NJ Diet uses your DNA info to help you keep the weight off. Call 855-5-NJ-DIET or go to njdiet.com Get slimmer before the summer with NJDiet.com. Lexus of Cherry Hill, a six-time J.D. Power dealer of excellence for customer service. Why would you buy your Lexus from anyone else? The 2024 Lexus models are here and moving fast, and the 2024 Lexus GX will be arriving soon. Tony LaBelle and his team at Lexus of Cherry Hill are your source for the Lexus of your dreams. Over 300 new and pre-owned vehicles are in stock and ready to roll. Face it, you deserve this Lexus, and you deserve award-winning winning customer service. Start your journey at LexusofCherryHill.com. Pastor Brad Lacey here, First Baptist Church, Conshohocken. Join us Saturdays for the great message and be blessed. 5 a.m. right here on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Don't miss the Education Show with Dom Giordano every Sunday morning at 5.30. Find out how you can help your child or grandchild succeed. Sponsored by New Hope Academy. I was afraid to cut the cord, but once I did, I couldn't believe it took so long to do it. Paying too much for my cable bill had become a bad habit. I either wasn't getting what I wanted or never knew where to find any of my favorite shows until it was too late. Plus, the prices just kept going up. Thankfully, I discovered a new way to watch called Philo. For just $25 a month, I can catch all my favorite shows on networks like BET, MTV, and TLC. It even has Nickelodeon for my kids. I can watch anytime I want, anywhere I want. Plus, Philo lets me have up to three streams at once so everyone can watch what they want at the same time. 
Throw in the unlimited DVR that saves all my favorites for up to a year, and this really is the best deal in TV. I just wish I hadn't waited so long. Sound too good to be true? Well, try it out for yourself, and you'll see why people who love TV love Philo. Go to philo.tv, that's P-H-I-L-O dot TV, and start your seven-day free trial now. Now there's a simple, easy, and effective way to clean your nose and protect your health. It's called Navage. Navage, available at navage.com. Be sure to follow Talk Radio 1210 WPHT on the free Odyssey app. Download it now. Or up next. Free speech lives here. Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Company weekday mornings six till ten. You can't play naked twister anymore when you grow up. Naked twister. Yeah, oh, nice. play it right. Both people win. Nice work out of Robin. We might have to put that one on the board. <laughs> if our buddy Jim the floater is listening, get that on the board stat today. I'm going to ask my apartment complex. They do all kinds of community things down in the yeah. lobby, wine tasting and Cinco de Mayo things. I'm like, can we do a, an apartment naked twister night? Oh, that might. Yeah, then there you go. Man. Bring your own booze. You don't keep score though on naked twister, do you? I don't know. Is it inclusive? <laughs> Start your day with Kale and Company, weekday mornings 6 till 10, on Talk Radio 1210, WPHT, and the free Odyssey app. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash joy. Through Hims, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you. Discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at Hims, so is treating it. Just go to hymns.com slash joy and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free. With zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash joy. That's hymns.com slash joy for your free online visit, H-I-M-S dot com slash J-O-Y. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle, unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. Don't miss Good News in Real Estate with Deanne Katsaros and Mark Cumberland, Saturdays at 1 p.m. Find out all you need to know about home buying and selling. Considering a career in real estate? Visit PhiladelphiaRealEstateClasses.com. Good News in Real Estate, Saturdays 1 p.m. on WPHT. Don't miss the Labor and Energy Show with J. Doc and Krause, brought to you by Advocacy United, this Saturday night at 6. Find out about the important issues that will affect you. The Labor and Energy Show, Saturday night at 6 on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. At Odyssey, we help protect this planet we all share through our One Thing Sustainability Initiatives. We donate $1 million of media every year to local environmental nonprofit organizations. And this month, our Odyssey teams will be out in our local communities cleaning up, planting trees, and more. When we each do one thing, it becomes a hundred, a thousand, a million things for our planet. What's your one thing? For more, download the free Odyssey app or go to odyssey.com com slash one thing spring is the time to bring a breath of fresh air into your home with a bouquet of irresistible deals on home renovations at colonial marble and granite right now save up to 65 percent on our exclusive collection of blowout stone and watch your beautiful home blossom sale ends april 22nd restrictions apply and quantities are limited see colonialmarble.net for details that's colonialmarble.net for details 
Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash joy. Through hymns, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you. Discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at Hims, so is treating it. Just go to hymns.com slash joy and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free. With zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face to face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash joy. That's hymns.com slash joy for your free online visit. H I M S dot com slash J O Y. Yo, 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 Roy is Ford. What? We know your favorite station is 1210 WPHD. The latest from Fox Business. I'm Maria Bartiromo, and this is the Fox Business Report. Wednesday was not a good day on Wall Street after the Consumer Price Index for March showed that inflation came in at a higher level than expected. Prices were up four-tenths of a percent from February and three-and-a-half percent year-to-year. The core CPI, which excludes food and energy, was up 3.8 percent. It was all extremely damaging to any chances there will be any federal interest rate cuts anytime soon. The Dow was down 422, finishing at a little more than 38,461, its lowest mark since Valentine's Day. The Nasdaq lost 136, the S&P 500 down 49. Today we get the producer price index numbers and the weekly unemployment figures. Delta Airlines has reported a small first quarter profit. The airline says it earned $37 million in the first quarter. It suffered a loss a year ago. That's your Fox Business Report. I'm Kevin Uretsky, invested in you. This is the Fox News Rundown. Rundown. Nine days before a key U.S. surveillance tool expires, it's in limbo. The House blocking an effort to reauthorize Section 702 of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, or FISA, designed to allow surveillance of non-U.S. citizens abroad without a warrant. Critics, including the American Civil Liberties Union, say it's also allowed the FBI to search collected data for information on Americans. Reauthorization failed to clear a procedural hurdle yesterday. For all of us that wish to protect our country, we know first and foremost we must protect our civil liberties or there is no country to protect. Texas Congressman Chip Roy, one of 19 Republicans voting against it, many of the members of the conservative House Freedom Caucus, including Pennsylvania Congressman Scott Perry, who read from the Constitution's Bill of Rights, highlighting the Fourth Amendment protection against unreasonable searches and seizures. It doesn't say... Well, if we've got an important matter, we can violate it. If, if, we don't, if it's too difficult, if it takes too long, Mr. Speaker, we can violate it. It doesn't say that. It says it shall not be violated. The vote coming just hours after former President Trump posted kill FISA, blaming the law for an FBI probe of his 2016 campaign. But the House bill includes a number of reforms. Two Trump administration officials calling it the single largest overhaul to the FBI in nearly 20 years. Former Attorney General Bill Barr and former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo writing in a Fox News op-ed that it would directly address FISA abuses, in part by slashing the number of FBI personnel who can authorize a query about a U.S. person, also prohibiting the use of political opposition research and media reports to secure a FISA order, the way the infamous Steele dossier was used. Critics want more, arguing a warrant should be required to access surveillance data on Americans. Texas Republican Congressman and retired Navy SEAL Dan Crenshaw sits on the House Intelligence Committee. If you gut FISA, if you make FISA unworkable or let it expire, you are seriously endangering our nation. A mass amount of our intelligence about what our foreign adversaries are doing and terrorist plots around the world want to do here. A mass amount of that comes from FISA-derived intelligence. In excerpts of prepared remarks for a budget hearing today, FBI Director Christopher Wray will tell House lawmakers Section 702 is an absolutely indispensable tool and critical in securing our nation. 
at a time when he says we need all the tools, people and resources to tackle elevated threats and to keep Americans safe. I mean, I think it's pretty important. Dan Hoffman is a three time CIA station chief, senior executive clandestine services officer and Fox News contributor. And I think you've heard the directors, director of FBI, uh, Christopher Ray, uh, talk about that, um, the value of this program as a vital tool to hunt down al-Qaeda and ISIS, to detect Chinese spying and fentanyl crossing our border. There's a, there's a lot of value there, and I don't think there's any debate about that um, among our elected representatives. The debate really comes in um, in terms of how it's used, right? And in particular, what happens when data from Americans is swooped up as part of the collection of surveillance on foreign targets, right? Does, it, does this really come down to a debate about Americans' data and rights? Yeah, I think that's true. It's, it's all about connecting foreign threats to the homeland. And so, of course, there will be Americans um, who potentially could be caught up in that collection. Uh, it could be Chinese, for example, trying to spy on a private sector company, an American company. We don't want to be blind to that, and we want to be able to warn those Americans of the threat they're facing. It could be an American unknowingly in contact with a sleeper cell from, from ISIS who might be seeking to conduct a terrorist attack. Again, we want to be able to warn the American. Uh, the key thing, at least from my perspective, because there's some elected representatives who are concerned about collection on Americans, there have been a number of, I would say, measures that the FBI has taken. They have to have justifications for every search they make. They've had additional training in how to conduct appropriate searches. There's an attorney's approval required whenever you're looking at over 100 names. And then most importantly, there's congressional oversight. I don't know that the Congress needs to turn this over to the judiciary, because if we need a warrant every single time an American is is potentially caught up in some collection, you're going to lose time. And, and intelligence threats like Chinese spying or an al-Qaeda terrorist attack, that's not like fine wine getting better with age. We don't have days, weeks to wait for the process of a warrant. But what we do have are our House and Senate intelligence committees, judiciary committees. Uh, they can... Uh, provide the necessary oversight of, of the FBI. And, and there's a record for every one of these searches. And there's an ability to determine whether there are any abuses. And I think that's, that's the critical element here. There were some reforms proposed to the existing law, especially Section 702. Those reforms were, were part of a reauthorization effort that has so far been blocked, at least temporarily, in the House. Um, and part of the sticking point was that it, it didn't include, did not include a warrant requirement. Is there any way to, to bridge the gap on that? Is there some sort of nuanced way to include that that wouldn't as be be as cumbersome as you're describing it for the investigative process? I, I know that's been a discussion between you know Republicans on the Intel Committee and uh, some of the Freedom Caucus members. So they're, they're going to hash that out themselves. Again, for me as a U.S. citizen, I am perfectly comfortable with without requiring a warrant, with having oversight, and then the things I mentioned about justification for every search. There's a record for every search. There's training for the FBI. Sure, if you, if you want to go completely to one end of the spectrum and have zero collection, okay, but then we're going to be blind to foreigners trying to do us harm. So I'm sorry we have to give up a little bit of that, but I trust the FBI and I trust our congressional oversight to ensure that, uh, that there will be no abuse of, uh, of this capability. Look, we, we've got intelligence services, we've got police department, there's you know, state, federal, local law enforcement. Um, these are things that, that we need to have uh, to protect ourselves from those who wish to do us harm. And so, you know, that's the, if, if you had unlimited liberty, in other words, no collection whatsoever on Americans who might be caught up in a network of Al-Qaeda Al terrorist attack or Chinese spying, 
then we're going to open up ourselves to to uh, potential attacks in our country, and we can't have that. So it's a it's a good debate. It's been a debate that I think has been worth having. But uh, even you know, Speaker Johnson who wrote a letter to um, his fellow congressmen and women uh, last week and said that FISA Section 702 have been essential. I'm quoting him uh, to intercepting communications of dangerous foreign actors overseas, understanding the threats against our country, countering our adversaries, and saving countless American lives. That's what he's saying. I 100% agree with that. FISA was first created actually back in 1978 and then expanded in 2001, right, as part of the Patriot Act. What happened before 1978? Were, you know, the threats just different then, um, obviously, and then also, you know, intelligence gathering was, was different. You know, was this was this necessary in order to evolve as threats evolved? Or, you know, what is the worst case scenario if we go back to zero collection? I don't think any of us wants another 9-11 terrorist attack in our country. So if we deprive ourselves of valuable collection, which has grown commensurate with our technological advances, over the past decades, then we leave ourselves wide open to attacks in our country. And I just don't think we want to be doing that. Our sources and our methods have become more and more sophisticated over the years. There are all kinds of, of rules and procedures and laws governing how intelligence agencies en engage with American citizens uh, or collect on American citizens. And that is that needs to keep a pace with uh, the value of the collection itself, which which we desperately need. That we are facing more threats today than we were in 1978. We are facing a wickedly complex array of threats to our national security that we weren't facing back then. The growth of, of transnational terrorism, China, uh, Iran, North Korea nuclear program, Russia interfering in our elections, uh, drugs pouring across our border, you know, these these are things that we need that that additional collection for. And again, I think that with the modifications that we've already seen uh, and the oversight, I think Congress is in a position to see how things go in the coming years and determine whether additional measures might or might not be necessary. How concerned are you that politics may be overshadowing this debate now, especially in light of what happened with former President Trump's 2016 campaign aid um, and the surveillance that was done there. Is, is, is there a danger that there's, you know, too much of an emphasis now on the whole political atmosphere surrounding this? Well, I think it's natural that there's politics involved uh, and there's gonna be political debate about this program and it's highly charged from that 2016 camp 2016 presidential campaign, you got the whole issue of Carter Page and, and what he had to go through. But I think that that's where, again, the oversight's important to hold anyone accountable for whatever instance we see where they didn't follow the rules and the procedures or they broke the law. That's the case for anybody. Any of that can happen from any of our um, civil servants or elected officials. We've had senators and congressmen a number of the recent examples who broke the law and are paying the price for it. And so that's what our system of checks and balances enables. And as a citizen, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. What would you say to other American citizens who are um, perhaps more concerned than ever about national security and about the intelligence community? Well, look, I think U.S. citizens should understand that there are a lot of hardworking, dedicated American patriots who go to work every day in the intelligence community to try to detect threats and preempt them before any harm is caused to our homeland or to U.S. citizens globally. That's what we do every day. And most of those people could be doing other things, but chose to serve their country. And so the problem for our intelligence community is that, as one of my old bosses at CIA used to like to say, the secret of our success is the secret of our success. People don't know what we what we do because it's secret and they don't know all the successes we have. They don't know um, necessarily all of the, and nor do they want to know, you know, all the Al-Qaeda terrorists we've taken out. To me, the, the real silver lining in all of this 
discussion about about the FISA surveillance is. We're having this discussion openly, and Americans are free to express their views. They're free to contact their congressmen and what congresswomen uh, and 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 express whatever concerns they have or support or lack thereof. Uh, and that's a great example of how our democracy serves our citizens most effectively. Former CIA station chief and Fox News contributor Dan Hoffman, thank you so much for your time. Okay, thank you. Rich Cioli, afternoons 3 to 7, Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Hi, I'm Henry Winkler. My eyes are very important to me. My eyes connect me with everything I love. I loved my late father-in-law dearly. He always lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. And since partnering with Apellus, I've learned there's an advanced form of dry AMD called geographic atrophy, or GA. His struggle with vision loss made me want to help others know about GA's warning signs. For some, colors appear dull or washed out. For others, hazy or blurred vision make it hard to see details, like fine print on price tags. Many have trouble seeing in the dark, making driving at night difficult. GA gets worse over time and cannot be reversed. If you think you have GA, don't wait. Treatments are available. Ask a retina specialist about FDA-approved treatments for GA. And go to gawon'twait.com. Get ready for grilling season with the ultimate burger perfection flight for just $89.99 when you shop omahasteaks.com and use promo code SIZZLE at checkout. That's 24 rich and juicy Omaha Steaks pure ground burgers. They're guaranteed to deliver an explosive combination of tenderness, juiciness, and unmatched quality. Each six-ounce burger is guaranteed to satisfy with every bite. That's omahasteaks.com, SIZZLE at checkout to unlock this exclusive deal. Hurry, supplies are limited. Omaha Steaks, America's original butcher. If spring allergies keep you trapped inside, then you need Navage Nasal Care to keep you breathing clearly and enjoying all the beauties of spring. Navage helps clear nasal passages that are often clogged because of seasonal allergies. Navage gently flushes a pure, refreshing saline solution through your nasal passages to clear out congestion, sucking out that springtime pollen and other irritants trapped in your nose. Navage is available online at navage.com or in stores at Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, Rite Aid, and Target. Navage, N-A-V-A-G-E. Hey, Philly, don't miss the Best Buddies Friendship Walk on Sunday, April 28th at the King of Prussia Mall. The Best Buddies Friendship Walk supports people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. And with your support, you'll be making the world more welcoming to people with IDD. Join 50,000 participants across the globe to support the Best Buddies programs in schools, workplaces, and communities. Register or donate today at bestbuddiesfriendshipwalk.org forward slash Philadelphia. I'm Bill, and I'm living with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, a type of interstitial lung disease that causes scarring of the lungs and makes it hard to breathe. ILD can be hard to diagnose, so if you're out of breath with a constant dry cough, ask a pulmonologist if it could be ILD. My wife Bev and I have walked every step of this journey together. I couldn't have traveled this road alone, and neither should you. Get help. Find hope. Go to lungsandyou.com. I'm Philomena, founder of Kin Apparel here in Philly. I love my natural hair, but not what hoodies and hats were doing to it. So I made my own satin line hoodies and created a business in the process. I've got big dreams, and Chase for Business in Philly was like, all right, how do we get you there? Get financial guidance from bankers in your community and convenient digital tools all in one place. Learn more at chaseforbusiness.com. Make more of what's yours. Real customers compensated. J.P. Morgan Chase Bank, and a member of FDIC. There's nothing quite like local. Local is your weekly farmer's market or homemade strawberry ice cream. It's live music on the corner, yoga in the park, and a chance to try something new. That's why AARP is local, right here in our community, offering free events and enriching experiences that can help with finances, family, and fun. Join AARP Philadelphia and Longwood Gardens for a free virtual tour of the garden's history on April 23rd. Register at aarp.org local. 
News. I'm Sue Guzman. A New York appeals court rejecting former President Donald Trump's third request to delay Monday's hush money trial. Fox's Grinnell Scott. His lawyers argued their client, the presumptive Republican nominee for president, should be on the campaign trail and not at a courtroom defense table. It was quickly denied by New York Justice Ellen Gessmer. Jury selection set to begin Monday. The former president accused of falsifying company records to high payments made to a porn actress to remain silent over their alleged affair. At least one person is dead in Mississippi in severe weather in the Gulf, and there's a confirmed tornado that touched down in Slidell, Louisiana. What I saw was just buildings with the windows busted out, cars on their side, other vehicles wrecked, power lines down. Worst case scenario you, that you could imagine. Slidell police officer Rod West America is listening to Fox News. Is the Fox News Rundown. Now a look at sports. After 15 seasons at Kentucky, John Calipari is now wearing red. Calipari was introduced as the 14th head coach of the Arkansas men's basketball program on Wednesday. He signed a five-year deal with a salary beginning at $7 million per season, which is less than the $8.5 million per year he was making in Kentucky, but the deal does include a $1 million signing bonus. Coach Cal takes over a program that went 16-17 and 17 during the 2023-24 season, missing out on the NCAA tournament. Calipari leaves behind an impressive legacy at Kentucky, taking the Wildcats to four Final Fours and winning the national title in 2012. That's sports on the Fox News Rundown. I'm Joe Morgan, Fox News. Now an update from Outkick's Hot Mike. It's going to be some arm girl from Indiana that takes Indiana Hoosiers women's basketball places they've never been. It's something like that where it's surprising when you see it happen. And uh, Caitlin Clark shattered a lot of expectations and, and stereotypes and, and did a lot. I hate it when Brianna Stewart, I think, was the one who says, no, she can't be considered the greatest if she doesn't win a title. And Brianna Stewart won four. Brianna Stewart had an amazing supporting cast around her in an era where UConn had no close equal. It's an amazing accomplishment. I'm not trying to take anything away from her, but I do think the Brianna Stewarts of the world need to understand her supporting cast and women's college basketball in her time versus what Caitlin Clark, who she's playing with and who she's playing against in the women's game before you just throw out a, no, she needs to win one before we consider her one of the greatest. I don't buy that. I'm Chad Withrow with Hot Mike with Hutton Withrow on the Fox News Rundown. Do you have three ex-wives and your current trophy wife wants a life insurance policy three times the size of the policies you had to purchase for your previous mistakes? If so, you need to call Big Lou at Term Provider, 800-700-6898. Big Lou is intimately familiar with your problems, and if you're 50 or 60 years old and in reasonably good health, a $1 million policy should only cost about $100 to $200 per month. Big Lou may have a solution for your previous policies as well. You may even save enough money to lighten the load on your new $1 million policy. Remember, call Big Lou. He's like you, except he's only on number two. Call Term Provider at 800-700-6898. That's 800-700-6898. For a million dollars in term life insurance that you can live with, call Big Lou at 800-700-6898. 800-700-6898. Fraudulent tax returns due identity theft increased by 30% in 2023. If you're in a bind this tax season, LifeLock can help. They're U.S.-based restoration specialists are dedicated to helping solve identity theft issues, and all plans are backed by the Million Dollar Protection Package, which means if you lose money because of identity theft, a LifeLock will reimburse you up to the limits of your plan. Help protect your information with LifeLock. Go to LifeLock.com and save up to 25% your first year with my name, Clay, as your promo code. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle. Unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies candidates with the right skills, sends you great matches, then you can easily invite them to apply. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. See for yourself. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash free to try ZipRecruiter for free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. 
So tell us a little bit more about the Morgan and Morgan law practice. We sitting here talking about law practice? It's not a game. Not a game. With over 900 lawyers nationwide and $15 billion recovered, we got full court domination. No more questions. Injured? Dial Pound Law or visit ForThePeople.com. Morgan & Morgan, America's largest injury law firm. Proud sponsor of the Philadelphia 76ers. Offices Philadelphia. Join us for April baseball that's sure to rock when the Rockies visit CBP on Monday, April 15th and Tuesday, April 16th, both at 640 and Wednesday, April 17th at 605. Secure your seats at phillies.com. Get two hot dogs for the price of one on Hatfield Philly Franks BOGO Night on Tuesday, April 16th at 640 when the Phils host the Rockies. Secure your seats now at phillies.com. I'm always striving to live my healthiest life, so I need a health plan that has my back. With Independence Blue Cross, I get access to the largest network of doctors and hospitals in the region and free virtual doctor visits 24-7. Plus, with premiums as low as $0 per month, I can stay on top of my health and keep my budget in check. Independence has given me coverage I can count on, and they'll do the same for you. Learn more about your coverage options at ibx.com. Hey, Philly. Jason Kelsey here. Even though I won't be playing on Sundays anymore, you can still find me at Lincoln Financial Field on Saturday, May 18th for the Eagles Autism Challenge presented by Lincoln Financial Group. This event raises millions of dollars to support autism research and care and gives you the chance to walk, run, or ride your bike beside your favorite Eagles players. Together, we can transform the lives of individuals affected by autism Register today at EaglesAutismChallenge.org and I'll see you there. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle, unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies candidates with the right skills, sends you great matches, then you can easily invite them to apply. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. See for yourself. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash free to try ZipRecruiter for free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. We are Lions International, the world's largest service organization. We are volunteers committed to strengthening our communities and supporting those in need, one act of kindness at a time. For more than a century, Lions have been serving a world in need right here in our community and around the world. Lions International makes the impossible possible. This is your invitation to join us because the only thing missing from our mission to make a difference is you. Visit lionsclubs.org to find a local Lions Club near you. We all hear the radio ads about the IRS. They tell you to be afraid, to be scared, and they try to frighten you into calling. I'm not here to do that. Tax Relief Advocates is different. TRA is here to tell you that if you owe money to the IRS, whether it's $5,000, $50,000, or $500,000, we have a solution. It doesn't matter if you're sitting in your car, at work, or with your kids. No matter where you are, call now. 800-575-6986. Don't lose hope. TRA can eliminate or reduce what you owe to the IRS. There is zero risk to you. If we can't reduce your tax debt, then you pay nothing. Our passion is taxes and helping individuals fix their IRS problems. We have a five-star rating on Google and an A-plus with the Better Business Bureau. You don't need to be afraid of the IRS any longer. End your tax nightmare today by visiting us online at tra.com or call 800-575-6986. That's 800-575-6986.
Tax Relief Advocates, real solutions for real people. Don't miss Good News in Real Estate with Deanne Katsaros and Mark Cumberland, Saturdays at 1 p.m. Find out all you need to know about home buying and selling. Considering a career in real estate? Visit PhiladelphiaRealEstateClasses.com. Good News in Real Estate, Saturdays 1 p.m. on WPHT. WPHT, WPHT, HD, WOGL, HD3, Philadelphia. Always live on the free Odyssey app. From the Cherry Hill Volvo Studios, where relationships matter. Live and local from Philadelphia. Free speech lives here. 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 It's Kale and Company on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Hey! And away we go, live on this Thursday, April 11th. It is indeed Kale and Company, right here on Talk Radio 1210, WPHT. We are always live on the free Odyssey app, and of course, streaming live for your video viewing pleasure on YouTube. As we head until 10 o'clock this morning, 855-839-1210 is the phone number. On social media at 1210WPHT, I am at Nick Kale. K-A-Y-A-L. Greg Stocker, the chairman of the board. Phil Omquist, Anthony Dorenzo, our associate producers. Mary Walter filling in for Dawn this morning. Mary, happy Thursday. Good to have you back. How are you? Good. It's actually happy Friday to me. Oh, your weekend's getting started after today's show? <laughs> yeah, I'm not with you tomorrow. Lucky, that's, that's true. Lucky you. I'm not with you tomorrow either, so. Yeah. It's just going to be me and the uh, the guys in the back. Yep. We're going well, to burn the sucker down. And Sean. And Sean Farish, yeah, yes. Yeah, so. yeah, looking forward to that. First day of the Masters. Of course, it'll be a weather delay because all it does is rain in this stinking country. Not that I'm bitter about it. <laughs> uh, but anywho, everything good in your world, Mary? Yeah, yeah. Busy day today. And then I'm going down to the University of Delaware tomorrow to watch my niece play uh, lacrosse. She's a senior. Oh, beautiful. And it's going to be one of her last games. So we're going to see them. You stopping by the Biden family compound in Delaware while, while you go down there? Well, I didn't know if you knew this, but yeah, Joe and I are just like this. I knew you guys were tight. Just I could like see this. that. Yeah. I, I, I sense a lot of commonalities mm-hmm. between the two of you. Here's the secret. Bring them ice cream and they let anybody in. That's exactly right. (laughs) We got a good big take coming up this morning on uh, a couple of the woes for Joe. Both the economy with some of the numbers that came out yesterday and also at the border, Alejandro Mayorkas uh, being grilled yesterday on Capitol Hill. We'll get to that. Also a side-by-side comparison of the economy uh, for Biden and Trump at the same exact point in their first term. We'll get to that. Media manipulation, as the Biden administration tells the USA Today. How about you change that headline? I think we're going to get more of the same from four years ago. We've got bathroom policies at Penridge. The cut sheet will be loaded. And also coming up at 9 o'clock this morning, Dan Zakshevsky, the reporter and writer from OutKick, that uh, put Dawn Staley on the hot seat last Saturday about whether or not she thinks biological men should be able to compete against biological females in sports we'll get to him he'll join us to kick off the final hour this morning but before we get to the big take and uh, with dawn being out we don't do the traditional news at six and seven o'clock but we've tried to have a a story that's pertinent to our audience this week in her absence and i do want to pass this along as yesterday there was another senseless act of teen gun violence here in the city of Philadelphia as three people were shot after gunfire erupts at the Idel Fitur event in the Parkside section of Philadelphia marking the end of Ramadan. Uh, Philadelphia Police Commissioner Kevin Bethel said that there were two factions inside the park and they exchanged gunfire and some 30 shots were fired. Uh, Here's what we know, according to 6ABC from yesterday, uh, and this was last updated around midnight last night. Three people were shot and five people are in custody after gunfire erupted in the Philadelphia park. Uh, And obviously there's this, you know, Muslim Holy Month celebration going on taking place. It happened yesterday around 2.30 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, in the area of 47th and Wyalusing Avenue in the Parkside section of Philadelphia, where there was an estimated 1,000 people there for this celebration. Amid the gunfire, 
one of the officers engaged uh, an armed 15-year-old male suspect, shooting that teen in the shoulder and leg. The officer then secured the gun and took the teen to the hospital. Uh, the teen is in stable condition. Sources tell Action News that the teen was armed with a rifle, however, uh, still unknown if the weapon was fired. Uh, some other details of this horrific shooting. Uh, the discharging officer, as protocol and standard operating procedure, has been placed on administrative duty pending the outcome of the investigation. A total of five weapons recovered at the scene, and investigators say the five suspects include four males and a female, all of which fall between the ages of 15 and 21. A 22-year-old man suffered a gunshot wound to the stomach. A 15-year-old boy arrived at the hospital with gunshot wounds to his hands. And uh, the police commissioner saying that this violence is a stark reminder of the issues facing the community, particularly concerning youth engagement in gun violence. So, once again, a bunch of the youths with nothing better to do but to disrupt a uh, holy gathering where we have a 1,000 people in the city of Philadelphia and everybody just opens up fire like it's uh, you know Call of Duty on Xbox Live. So, uh, one of the past that story along. I think we have some audio, uh, yeah, Greg. This is uh, this is the police commissioner, Philadelphia police commissioner Kevin Bethel from uh, on uh, on Fox uh, Fox Twenty Nine okay. yesterday. Uh, Phil, if you want to bring this up, this is cut ten, my friend. Go. But at 2.30 today, uh, there was an uh, after Ramadan celebration here at, at the park. We had about a thousand uh, individuals out there and things were going well. We had a detail uh, assigned to this uh, event and they were working the outsides. During that time period, they were writing tickets. There was tickets, uh, cars were parking on the, on the gas station behind us and they were writing tickets. At some point, they hear a large volley of, of gunfire. They say approximately 30 gunshots. What we do know is there appear to be two factions within the park who are now exchanging gunfire. As the officers start to deploy into the park, they observe three males and a female uh, running, and they stop those individuals, and we recover four weapons. At that same time, we have one of our officers who was assigned to the area engage a 15-year-old male who has a weapon. She fires, and that male is, receives a gunshot to his shoulder and his leg. The officer secures that weapon and then transfers that child to the hospital. We have another individual who showed up who's 22 years old. He has a, shot, a gunshot to his stomach, and we believe that may have happened during the gunfire. We also have another juvenile who showed up shortly after, within the last half an hour, at the hospital who has a gunshot wound to his hands. And so, so in, in total, we have five individuals under arrest four who were carrying weapons, as well as the individual that our police officer uh, fired and, and struck, as well as an uh, individual um, adult. It was a, that's, a, that's the numbers, right? So there he is, uh, com uh, Police Commissioner Kevin Bethel. Sounds to me like it was just two gangs that were fighting. Well, and... two rival factions. Okay, <laughs> and and it just so happened that there was the celebration happening at that time. Yeah. Is is that what I'm gathering he, from this? That's what okay. I gather. Mary, we just talked about this yesterday when Tony Bruno was in here guest co-hosting. I did a big take on crime and all the bad data that the FBI is putting out where the Biden administration, Democrats, big blue cities saying we've got crime under control the numbers are down it's a total fabrication it's a complete lie uh, and again here we go gangs guns youth in a setting where you probably the last thing you're expecting if you're attending a a holy gathering so to speak is you expect gunfire to just erupt everywhere we've again we have a major issue on our hands in this city and in this country and these these politicians and these elected officials they've got to get a hold of it quickly yeah they're not going to get a hold of it quickly the chaos helps them right they they to us they benefit from chaos because then what do they do they crack down on us what's the call going to be this isn't going to be about hey why aren't you parenting your kids hey why did your 15 year old have a long gun like, that's not going to be the conversation the conversation is going to be trump's terrible this is trump's fault republicans won't ban guns mm -hmm. yep that's what the conversation is going to be i would love to see when they have these when this happens I would love for there to be some kind of an investigation to find out how did how did these children mm -hmm. get their hands on these weapons? Where did you buy it? Where did you store it? Hey, mom. Hey, dad. How come you didn't know your kid had an arsenal in their bedroom? Mm -hmm. Those types of things. We need to get drilled down into it. And when you talk about the dishonesty of the reporting of the numbers, again, there's a reason why. 
that they also will often change the perpetrator's race to white. You've <laughs> yeah. seen that, I'm sure, yes. on X, where there's a guy who's clearly black or Hispanic, and his his ethnicity or his race is white. I know they totally. So they're cooking that. the books all the way around. I, I totally agree, and I, I have no idea what the parenting issue is or the situation is for everybody that commits one of, of these course. crimes. But my God, it just seems like again. I I really, and this is not a shot at moms, but guys need to have their dad in their life. Like it, it's just yeah. a it's just a fact of life, no matter how you slice it or dice it. But see, you shouldn't have to say this isn't a shot at moms. Moms and dads serve two different roles Mm -hmm. in a child's life. But wouldn't it be great to find out commonalities among young men who do this so that we can address that issue and get to the cause of it and help them out as opposed to having another life wasted now Mm -hmm. where this kid at 15 years old is probably going to go to jail. Yep. So wouldn't it be wonderful if we never had this kid be in that position to begin with and we can't get there until we find out what the commonalities are with these young men who seem to be so angry Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so violent How did they get there in 15 short years? Yep, it's a great question. It's a great point. All right, 611 here on this Thursday morning. Let's get to a Thursday Big Take. The Big Take on Kale & Company. All right, the Big Take this morning brought to you by the Gift of Life, the Big Take, Joe's Woes. Double order, the economy and the border. For the past two days, we've talked about the GOP's worst nightmare. It's abortion, Roe v. Wade. Donald Trump, his official position on abortion, and the latest developments in Arizona with an 1864 ban. But today we welcome Joey back into the fold. Wednesday was a rough day for the big guy on two fronts, the economy and the border. The border and the economy. Either way you divvy it up, these are the two biggest hurdles in the way of a second Biden term. And the news, the optics, and the reaction hasn't been good. Yesterday was a day where border boob Alejandro Mayorkas was set to testify in front of Congress. And prior to that, more bad economic news dropped for the Biden administration. And let's start with the economy. The headline, as we were on the air yesterday in the 8 o'clock hour, just in, U.S. inflation rises to 3.5%, hotter than expected. Boy, them Bidenomics really working out, aren't they? But any smart and savvy person knew that this was bound to tick back up. The Biden administration has created a false economy. The cooling and easing of inflation has worn off. Gas prices are soaring again. But don't worry, the White House will point towards part-time jobs that they've created, and they'll say that the stock market is telling you everything is A-OK. But here's the truth. Overall prices are still up 19.4% since Joe Biden took office. This is CNBC breaking down some of the financial news from yesterday. Listen and watch this. Hotter than expected, 3.5. This is three tenths, three tenths hotter than we looked at in the rearview mirror, 3.2. To find a bigger number than 3.5, you're going back to May of last year when it was, oh, excuse me, I am wrong, September of last year when it was 3.7. And finally, what many would consider the most important number, uh, year over year, CPI core, 3.8, hotter than expected, equals the rearview mirror. To to find a higher number, January was 3.9. And what's the lowest it's been of late? Well, 3.8, our last look at what we have today, actually is the lowest since 3.0 in April of 21. The issue is it's still running hot. So some of that is in the weeds, but let me break it down at a kitchen table issue level, issue by issue. Since Joe Biden took office, gasoline up 48 percent, groceries up 21 percent, eating out also up 21 percent, baby food up 31 percent, pet food 24 percent, rent 21 percent, electricity up 28 percent, natural gas 27 percent, used cars up 21 percent. Airfare, a staggering 33% increase. Public transportation is up 22%. Meanwhile, real average weekly earnings are down 4%. 
Donald Trump posting on Truth Social, quote, inflation is back and raging. The Fed will never be able to credibly lower interest rates because they want to protect the worst president in the history of the United States, end quote. From bad economic indicators to the southern border and hypocrisy, Axios with a scoop and a big story yesterday with the headline and report that reads as follows, quote, Biden plans to soon issue an executive order to dramatically limit the number of asylum seekers who can cross the southern border. He'd be taking a page from Trump, who leaned on Section 212-F of the Immigration and Nationality Act, end quote. Now, wait just a minute. I am old enough to remember when the establishment Democrats told me and scolded all of us that such action would be racist. And remember, folks, no human is illegal. Hmm. Biden, the career fraud, taking a page out of Trump's playbook. And weren't we told that Joe had, quote, done everything he can and that it's now on Republicans in Congress to pass a bill? Why, in fact, yes, he has. And he did. This was the big guy back in January addressing the border crisis. Listen and watch this clip. With executive authority, is there more you can do? Absolutely. That's all I can do. Just give me the power. I've asked for the very day I got in office. Give me the border patrol. Give me the people. Give me the people to judge it. Give me the people who can stop this and make it work fast. Hmm, we always keep our seats here on Kale & Company. And never forget, Joe Biden took 94 executive actions in his first 100 days, creating the border disaster, undoing everything Trump had established at the southern border. He also blocked the House, which passed the Secure the Border Act. But I guess enough illegals have entered the country, repopulated districts, and after all, it is election season, so you need to act like you care. Except... Nobody is buying it. Here are some of the details from the Axios report. President Biden used an interview with Spanish-language broadcaster Univision that aired on Tuesday to send a massive signal that he plans to issue an executive order to dramatically limit the number of asylum seekers who can cross the southern border. Axios is told that while it's not final, such an executive order is likely by the end of April. We're told there's a fierce debate internally about the legality and the politics of a Trump-like lockdown, but Biden briefed on polls of rising voter anger wants a dramatic step. The provision Biden is eyeing would restrict the ability of immigrants to claim asylum and doesn't require congressional approval, Axios reported uh, just last month. Biden would also use authority in Section 212-F of the Immigration and Nationality Act, which gives the president broad leeway to block entry of certain immigrants if it would be, quote, detrimental to U.S. national interests. He'd be taking a page from former President Trump, who repeatedly leaned on that section. You know, nothing like saying you're the best man for the job as you take a page out of your rival's playbook. Fraudulence and hypocrisy all wrapped into one. Which gets us to Alejandro Mayorkas and his day on Capitol Hill. Here is Republican Congressman Michael Cloud grilling Mayorkas. Listen and watch this. Could you speak to any authorities that Congress has removed from you or the president since taking office? Um, uh, Congressman, um, ha- you has mentioned Congress you- removed any authorities from you or the president since you've taken office. Congressman, the uh, the point that's a yes that you- or no question. Congressman, the point that you make with respect to border patrol agents is exactly why you're, you're we- filibustering. I asked you a yes or no question. Congressman, the point Has that you make Congress exactly removed any authorities from you or the president since you've taken office? Congressman, the point that you make with respect to border the patrol answer is agents. no. I'd also make uh, the point that you have approximately 20 percent larger budget than Trump had. Uh, the president has made the point that he can't secure the border. He can't get down to he because he is waiting on Congress to move. And I just point that out to belay that and point out the truth of the fact that he has every single authority as President Trump. He has more resources at his disposal than President Trump, yet he has done everything he can to undermine the security of our border. Have you a simple yes or no question? And that man can't and or won't answer the question. You know, in a cabinet full of useless hacks and identity politic hires, that guy right there makes my skin crawl. 
the most. And just how many Chinese nationals have crossed the border? Mayorkas with a mildly better answer, but still largely a nothing burger. Listen and watch clip two. Do you have any concerns that China may be engaged with unrestricted warfare in our country? Congressman, um, uh, addressing uh, the challenges that the People's Republic of China poses is one of our highest priorities, and we have a number of lines of effort to address that, whether that is enforcement of the Weaker Forced Labor Protection Act. How, how many Chinese fight, nationals have crossed our border in the and, last couple of years? And the, and the fight against uh, forced labor, whether that is battling... That's not uh, homeland security. I, I, I appreciate that, but that's not homeland security. Um, we are tasked with enforcement of the UFLPA, Congressman, Secondly, I'm asking fighting, you about the border. How many Chinese nationals have crossed our border? I, I'd be pleased to provide that data. It's uh, tens of you. thousands. It's um, the second. Secondly, tens of thousands. Secondly, the the threat of cyber attacks. Right now, from, right now, crossing our border are tens of thousands of Chinese nationals who are not presently in our country. They are primarily single-aged adult male, military-aged, uh, and they've crossed our border. And uh, you are not doing anything to counteract that. I wouldn't task that guy with securing my apartment complex, much less the southern border. And Mayorkas, in all likelihood, at the behest of the president, values new voters in districts that are losing Democrats over your safety, the taxpayer, that funds the salaries of these people. So in actuality, it is a double whammy for you and I financially. The economy is not good. And inflation is on the uptick. Gas prices are going up. And oh, by the way, we are paying for people not to do their job at the southern border. A total disgrace on both fronts. And that's the big take. The big take on Kale and Company. And it's brought to you by Gift of Life. You can join Gift of Life for their 27th annual Donor Dash on Sunday, April 28th at the Philadelphia Navy Yard. Promote the life-saving importance of organ and tissue donation by participating in the 5K or 10K run or the 3K walk. Register today at donors1.org. That's donors, the number one, dot org. We'll come back, get your thoughts and reaction, 855-839-1210, on social media at 1210WPHT, and of course in the Kale & Company comment community on YouTube. Just go to youtube.com slash at 1210WPHT and hit the like and subscribe button while you are there. Nick Kale, Mary Walter, in for Dawn, Greg Stocker, back after this on a Thursday. Kale & Company, Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Bet the NBA with a no-sweat same-game parlay from FanDuel in partnership with Valley Forge Casino every Thursday with TNT Thursdays. It doesn't matter if you're new to FanDuel or already have an account. You'll get bonus bets back if your same-game parlay doesn't win on any NBA on TNT game. NBA same-game parlays are the perfect way to combine your bets for a chance to score an even bigger payday. You can bet on everything from point spreads to money lines, over-unders, you can even do player props. How many points will will a particular player score over 15, over 20? Who will score the first basket in the game? There's all kinds of stuff that you can do. However you want to play, just head to FanDuel.com slash Greg. FanDuel.com slash Greg to bet the NBA with a no sweat. Same game parlay with TNT Thursdays. That's FanDuel.com slash Greg. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA and 1210 WPHD 21 and over. President PA. Minimum three-leg parlay required. Refund issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets, which expire seven days after receipt. Max refund $5 unless otherwise specified. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Hi, it's Dawn. Want an environmentally friendly approach to lawn care? Call my lawn care company, Natural Lawn of America. Natural Lawn has been creating green lawns quickly, more naturally, and with fewer weeds for more than 35 years. I've been a customer for years. Trust me, you're going to love the results. Their certified specialists tailor their treatments to your lawn's specific needs. This reduces the need for chemicals and creates a safer lawn for your entire family, including your pets. Natural Lawn is locally owned and family operated. They have offices and pencil Pennsylvania and New Jersey. They're competitively priced and have a satisfaction guarantee. I trust the leader in organic-based lawn care. You should too. Give them a call. New customers? Take advantage of Natural Lawn's unbeatable offer. Free seeding every year. Schedule Natural Lawn's full service program and they'll seed your lawn every year free of charge. 800 free seed. NaturalLawn.com. 800 free seed. And choose my lawn care company. Natural Lawn of America. Greener grass, fewer weeds, guaranteed. Tell them Dawn sent you. 
At Cherry Hovava, we have absolutely incredible offers, incredible offers, and a plethora of both new and certified Volvos from which to choose. We are eager to offer amazingly competitive prices because we need the room for all of our construction vehicles. When leasing or purchasing a new or certified Cherry Hovava, you become part of our team. Join Cherry Hill Volvo for the pricing and attention you deserve. I am Judith Krepnik, president of Cherry Hill Volvo. If you put the words retirement savings crisis into Google, you'll get about 81 million references to explore. Jim Cipriati at Retire Ready Financial Group doesn't need Google to know you're worried about retirement. Between inflation, rising taxes, crazy markets, and uncertainty about Social Security, he understands. That's why he offers a complimentary retirement second opinion. It's a no-obligation meeting for you to talk about your concerns about retirement. You want to know if you're going to be okay? Let's find out. Don't trade the stress of work for a new kind of stress in retirement. Call Jim Cipriati today. 610-894-7415. That's 610-894-7415 to schedule your complimentary retirement second opinion. Or go online, retireadyfg.com. Dot com. Investment advisory services offered through Retire Ready Wealth Management, a registered investment advisor. Insurance and annuities offered through James V. Cipriati, Retire Ready Financial Group, LLC, and PN number 2083768. Hi, everyone. Matt here from Edmonds Roofing and Siding. There are a lot of companies out there that say they do roofing, siding, windows, and doors. Some good, some not so good. Be careful of those that say buy two, get two free. Does that really make sense? Think about it. At Edmonds, we don't offer gimmicks, just quality products installed by our experienced craftsmen. We do offer 12 months, same as cash financing, though. That's not a gimmick. That's because we know how tough it is for some people right now to get these projects done. If you need roofing, siding, or windows and doors, call us for a free estimate today at 856-885-6677 or visit us at callemmons.com. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Don Stensland this morning at 10. Kale and Company now on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT and the free Odyssey app. Thursday morning here on Kale and Company. Hopefully all of you off to a great start to your work day. We inch closer to the weekend. Pints and politics tonight. Rand Paul, Dom Giordano. Looking forward to that. A little bourbon as well. Mary Walter is in for Don Stenslin this morning. So, Mary, uh, yesterday e- economic reports come out, inflation back on the uptick, and, of course, uh, resident border stooge Alejandro Mayorkas saying a whole bunch of nothing. Uh, your thoughts on both as they developed yesterday? I'll let you get your pound of flesh here. <laughs> One of my favorite parts of the day yesterday was on MSNBC when uh, Congressman James Clyburn was on and he was talking about how great the economy is. And he was really touting the economy and he was saying, you know, like people, uh, the inflation's down and, and this is, uh, all these things are great. And he's going on and on and they're all sitting there, you know, shaking their heads in bovine agreement, you know, and they had to break in and cut him off for the new inflation numbers. 
<laughs> which were higher than expected. <laughs> and to me, it was just a perfect illustration of everything that it is the Biden administration, right? Mm -hmm. They lie, they lie, they lie. The media, the state run media, which is in the tank for them, obviously, they're just the they're just the press arm of the Democrat Party at this point. Mm -hmm. They uh, they they actually got called and the whole it was like the curtain was thrown right back on it. And it was absolutely perfect. And it happened in real time. And I have to tell you, that made me so happy yesterday. <laughs> the bar's low for me to make me happy. Yeah. And that did it. Yeah, no, that definitely did. And the, the, the other thing that I thought was infuriating was, uh, and I want to go to the border with Mayorkas, specifically that second clip that we played for you with uh, Chinese nationals coming into this country. Because, you know, when we look at the border and we see, uh, you know, Bill Malusion of Fox or anybody that's kind of camped out and staked out at the border for some of these networks, you were, we were always told that these were asylum seekers, these were families with young children. And you see that certainly from time to time. But many of the times we, we watch and we see all the people people lined up and they are men probably in their early 20s to early 30s physically fit and we don't know if they've been let out of mental facilities as Trump likes to talk about uh, Venezuela emptying out their prisons and there's you know possible terrorists from the Middle East and there's also been a lot of Chinese individuals that have been at the border and I'm just so tired of China kind of steamrolling us as a nation um, military wise they've probably eclipsed us economy wise everything runs through China because we outsource everything but also just, you know, these police precincts that are in big cities that are uh, basically operated by the Chinese government. And a lot of these individuals, they look like they're coming here and they are ready to do evil things. This, this does not look like people seeking a better life, so to speak, as they always claim to be the case. No. Well, you know, if you're unhappy with life in China, you can just leave. It's no big deal. You know, you can just walk out. So I'm sure they're just here for a better life. Well, and, and they encourage it over in China, right? Like right. They, they're they do. all about population yep. control in that nation. Right. They want you out, especially military age men. They don't need them at all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So they send them right out. Here's the thing. So, so I think we all agree that the reason that the Democrats are doing this is to replace the population that they're losing in these Democrat run cities and states mm -hmm. as they flee and they go to red cities and states if any red cities exist. Right. And uh, they, they flee to those states. So, and they, to turn them blue, they need that population back because they're losing the representation in the House of Representatives. Correct. Right. So they need that. So what do they do? We'll bring in a lot of illegals. We'll bring in these bodies. It's all we need is bodies. Mm -hmm. So that's what they're bringing in bodies to, to accomplish that goal, to maintain power. The disconnect for me and the question I have is, are they really, I don't want to say, Evil, evil, not caring about the American people, that they were willing uh, to risk a horrific terrorist attack in this country that could kill thousands of Americans. I would say they're diabolical. They, they, so, they, they, they will do whatever it takes to maintain power. That's why they beat Republicans. Republicans aren't as hell-bent on victory as Democrats are. That's very true. That is very true. And and I think the other part of it for them, the calculation is that if Joe doesn't win and this horrific terrorist attack happens, it's going to happen under Trump, mm -hmm. right? Because the Chinese love Biden. Remember, didn't Hunter didn't Hunter work for a Chinese energy company? That's uh, what I've been line? told. There's a little yeah. bit of a yeah. Biden China connection, right? right? Um, Russia likes him. Didn't didn't uh, didn't uh, yeah, Russian give Hunter a big diamond that he lost or something or sold? I or heard something, something along about those lines. that. Yeah. yeah. So they don't want Trump in because Trump had China in line. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. And Ch Ch Putin did not invade Ukraine under bu under Trump. Right. He didn't under Bush, under Obama and under Biden, mm -hmm. but not Trump. Right. So who do they want in? Right. So if the terrorist attack happens under Trump, well, it's Trump's fault. Yep. That's correct. It's not Biden's fault. It's Trump's fault. It yep. doesn't matter. Yep. And they want Biden in there because he exudes weakness. And yes. as you see, you know, China, Taiwan, that's a powder keg that could happen at any moment. They've already come out. John Kirby, Jake Sullivan. We do not support Taiwan's independence. Oh, great. So like, OK, why don't we just say, hey, China, go do whatever you want to Taiwan. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Russia, Ukraine, Iran, the Middle East. So all of this global upheaval under one man's watch. The one miscalculation for me with the Democrats, and I'm surprised because they're usually very calculating. They have everything planned out. Mm -hmm. If there is a terrorist attack on this country and we can bring it back to someone who came into this country illegally mm -hmm. before the election, 
Trump wins in a landslide. They can't even fix it. They can't even, they cannot stuff enough mail-in ballots that come in, you know, three weeks later Mm -hmm. into the ballot boxes to prevent that from happening. 855-839-1210 if you would like to jump in and join the conversation. So I do want to look at this um, side-by-side comparison. You will see the graphic, I believe, on YouTube. Uh, Inflation at the same point in respect of presidencies. So we're talking about first term, year four, about a third of the way through the calendar year, a quarter of the way through the calendar year, and you can see the categories and you can see the inflation rate. Trump on the left, Biden on the right. For those that don't have the visual component of the show on YouTube, we'll go through these and then we'll give some takeaways. So energy, Trump to Biden. For energy, inflation under Donald Trump was non-existent. It was at zero percent because we were energy independent as a nation. Under Joe Biden, inflation, energy up 39%. Gasoline under Trump was a negative 2%, with Biden, as I mentioned in the big take, 48%. Electricity, there was small inflation under Trump at 3%. With Biden, it was 29%. Natural gas was a negative under Trump, 27% under Biden. Then we get to stuff at the kitchen table. Groceries under Trump, 3.5%. Biden, 21%. Eggs, a negative under Trump, under Biden, 49%. The cost of an omelet oh. is is off the charts. See, I always thought an omelet was a cheap way to get your breakfast. Not under Joe Biden. Wow. Milk, 2.5% for Trump. Biden, 15%. Chicken, 4%. Uh, for Trump, Biden, 24%. Transportation, a 30-point difference. Look at the airfare. Negative 14% under Trump. 33% under Joe Biden. That is a 47% swing. Public transportation, used cars, and apparel on down the list. Everything in the Trump category in that column right there is a shade of green or yellow, as in minimal or nothing. Everything under Biden looks like a terrorist uh, code uh, code alert of yellow, orange, or red. Yep. Mary, if that's what a threat to democracy and dictator on day one looks like, Sign me up for the dictator because I'll have more money under my po- in my pocket under a dictator running this country. You know, eggs, you said it. You, you would think like that's like a nice cheap breakfast. So we had omelets the other night for dinner. Um, totally support- underrated, by the way. Breakfast for dinner is not a bad idea. Well, come on. We live in in the diner air capital of the world, right? Sure, yeah. So So you can get breakfast any time of day. It's an amazing thing. I love it. It is. It is. Right. So so we had omelets the other night and I I, now I feel so decadent. I had no idea I could have had lobster and it would have been cheaper. (laughs) You could have saved a few bucks, right? Right. We're having I'm having brunch here on Sunday. We're having people over and I need three dozen eggs for the different things that I'm making. I don't know if I can afford it now. All All right. You said brunch. So are we going mimosas or Bloody Mary's? Oh, no, no, no. I do champagne, and then I do, um, I have a choice. You can have orange juice, cranberry juice, or peach nectar to mix with it. Oh, peach nectar sounds enticing. Wait, 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 wait. So Bloody Marys are not even on the table, Mary? I mean, they're no, named after you. I don't like you. tomato juice. <laughs> they're what? named after you. What is wrong with you? <laughs> I don't like tomato juice. Oh, man. Yeah, I will say this. Tomato- Bloody Marys are just the the greatest i love bloody mary's yeah. uh i like mine very spicy with a little bit of salt to it as well but yeah tomato juice like straight up v8 out of a can i can't do it makes me gag and i love tomatoes i love pasta sauce but you can do it with vodka in it <laughs> <Can I laughs> do anything with vodka in it brother <laughs> kidding me where do you see me at pints and politics tonight uh, vodka has no taste and that's what makes <laughs> yeah, it tal- exactly, dark. exactly. <laughs> so well, if you guys come for brunch i will have bloody mary's okay oh wow Right. Is, is it, are, are you extending the official invite she's not, and the offer? She, she's not. No, she's not for this Sunday. No, I have my hands full this Sunday. She's just not being polite. Yeah. No, if you. No, no, no. If you ever <laughs> wanted to come and visit, in all seriousness, at yeah, the yeah. Jersey Shore, yeah. you can come visit me, yeah. and I will make you brunch because I do make a mean brunch. Mm. However, not this Sunday because I've got. I've, I'm kind of full. All right. So she's, if, way, she's full. If you're in that capacity, in that capacity, it's something there. Chris Christie has never said. I'm full. <laughs> uh, so if we're keeping track now, Dawn has promised for months and months and months to bring something in. With her slow cooker, that's yet to happen. Yeah, I, I've been waiting for. I've worked with Dawn for ten years, and and she's she's never once brought in anything uh, that she said she was going to. So it's, it's never going to happen. No, I, I, I it's tell terrible. You, yeah, I'm telling you, Stalker, we got to stop. Only males from now on in this station, all right? The females are always leaving us, leave wanting more. It's true. 
Hey, you didn't even give me a chance. I <laughs> bake and in uh, I bake and around Christmas, I'm always foist enough and I make a mean crumb cake that I'm always bringing mm. in to get because I can't keep it in my house. All right. Very good. Very good. All right, eight five five. I am too, actually. Eight three nine twelve ten if you want to jump in. We talked about the media being the lapdogs and carrying the water for the Biden administration. And it happened yet again for one of the nation's biggest publications. We'll give you that story on the other side as we have more media manipulation. It's Kale and Company as we continue. Mary in for Dawn. And we're back after this on Talk Radio twelve ten WPHT. Do you have a life insurance policy of $100,000 or more that you don't need? Well, don't lapse or surrender your policy. You might be sitting on a gold mine. That's right. You may be able to sell all or part of your life insurance policy to Coventry for cash or a combination of cash and coverage with no future premiums, even a term policy. Call Coventry Direct at 800-411-8300. Or visit CoventryDirect.com to find out if you're sitting on a gold mine. That's 800-411-8300. For over 25 years, we've helped thousands of people sell their policies. And we can probably help you, too. Call us today at 800-411-8300. Or visit CoventryDirect.com to find out if you're sitting on a gold mine. That's 800-411-8300. Call now. Right now might be the best time ever to upgrade your old, inefficient water heater to a state-of-the-art Bradford White Aerotherm Heat Pump Water Heater. It's eco-friendly, Energy Star certified for high efficiency, and will help lower your energy bills. Rebates and tax credits are now available that could save you thousands of dollars. How you heat your water matters. So ask your plumbing professional about the Bradford White Aerotherm Heat Pump Water Heater or visit bradfordwhite.com to learn more. Tune in to Crash Proof Retirement Show, Saturdays at 11 a.m. to hear Phil Canella and Joanne Small. The Crash Proof Retirement Show, Saturday mornings at 11 on Talk Radio 1210. Chronic pain, cancer, fatigue? Find out about the benefits of medical hydration therapy on Health Watch with Dr. Molly Fantasia every Sunday morning at 8 on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. See Joe Conklin's benefit comedy show at the Church of the Incarnation in Metro, New Jersey for parishioner Christina McNasby, Saturday, April 20th. Get tickets at JoeConklin.com. JoeConklin.com! Hi, this is Dom Giordano. Let's face it, most people fear the dentist. It's a real thing. It's called dentophobia. But my friend and dentist, Dr. Robert Bentz, understand this. I've seen over the years how he's helped even the most fearful patients overcome their anxiety and show them a comfortable, positive dental experience. Give Dr. Bentz a call, 610-272-6949. Take care of that dental work that you've been putting off and finally get that smile that you've always wanted. 610-272-6949. BentzDentalGroup.com. Just like our offensive line protects our star quarterback, plumbers protect the health of the nation. And Philadelphia Plumbers Union Local 690 is no different. In hospitals, commercial, industrial, and residential, with the best trained plumbers in the world, you can be sure your project is done on time and on budget, no matter how big or small. So when your business needs to build new or expand existing facilities, you can count on the members of Plumbers Union Local 690. Visit plumbers690.org. Org. Free speech lives here with Don Stensland weekdays 10 till noon. Talk Radio 1210. WPHT. WPHT. Kelly Company, 642. Happy Thursday to all of you. Nick, Mary, Walter, Greg Stocker, Phil, and Anthony here as well. What's on the cut sheet coming up in just about one hour? Dan Zakshevsky at 9 o'clock from OutKick. He was the reporter that interviewed Dawn Staley over the biological male in uh, women's locker rooms and women's sports story. Looking forward uh, to that. Uh, And also, we've got a lot of other good stories. Joe Biden in the betting market, which we like to look at from time to time, 
is now the betting favorite. We'll get to that story coming up. And also, why I would advise a couple of red states not to do and not to try to do what some of the Democrats in blue states were doing to Donald Trump. We'll get to that and a local story as well in the Penridge School District as far as bathroom policies go. Uh, But I I wanted to break just a little early last segment because I wanted to get a a full segment in on this story because this one really bothers me. If it wasn't for the economy and the border, this would have been a big take today. We're seeing, once again, media manipulation, Mary, at the behest of the Biden administration. Now, look, I I do think, in, in fairness, both administrations historically, and we're not talking just Biden and Trump, just, you know, the history of politics and also presidencies and administrations with journalists and the news outlets. They're always trying to, you know, manipulate and get better coverage and a certain slant put on a story. But what we've seen the last four years is that the Biden administration, they'll strong arm social media, they'll silence, they'll suppress, they'll shut down the reaggregation of stories, most notably the New York Post with Hunter Biden's laptop. And they're at it again with the USA Today as the USA Today, which I think is a really, really declining publication, uh, changed a headline about Donald Trump and his abortion stance at the behest of the Biden-Harris campaign. Uh, This story, uh, this version of it, courtesy of OutKick, uh, it was Bobby Barak, who I believe you had on uh, your podcast earlier this week, correct? Oh, yeah, I did. I had um, Bobby Barack. I thought for a hot second, I saw you looking at Greg, and so I thought you were looking at Greg. No, and no, not no, I'm sorry. When I, when, when I look that way, I'm actually looking at the monitor to see you. Oh, okay. Because, like, the camera's right up here, yep. but I got to look over here to see you. So I'm sorry. I I'm saw like, you look over there, and I was like, I wait, is he chair. talking to me? I'm always on the move here. But, yes, yeah, so you, had, you, yes. had, you had Bobby on your podcast, right? Yeah, I have Bobby on my podcast a lot. He's, okay. he's great. All the writers from Outkick are fantastic. Okay. So. I just wanted to make sure that I confirmed that. So, Bobby. Bobby wrote this and he said, USA Today stealth edited a headline about Donald yeah. Trump's stance on abortion at the behest of the Biden-Harris campaign. Monday morning, the outlet, the outlet published the headline, quote, the will of the people. Trump opposes national abortion ban, says states should decide. And that was the quote in reference to a video that the former president posted on Truth Social hours prior. Later in the day, however, USA Today changed the headline to Donald Trump says states should decide abortion policy avoids talk of a national ban. The article does not contain an editor's note explaining the revision. According to Mediate, Mediate.com, the paper edited the headline less than two hours after a complaint from Biden's team during a press call, including Biden campaign manager Julie Chavez Rodriguez, Deputy Communications Director Brooke Gorin, and pro-abortion advocate Caitlin Cash. Quote, one particularly egregiously false headline even said Trump, quote, opposes a national abortion ban and will leave it up to the will of the people. USA Today was uh, reached out. Uh, they were contacted by Fox and other outlets, and they said that this is, quote, not uncommon for breaking news Our mission is to report the facts as accurately as possible as part of our routine editorial process with breaking news. Headline updates are not uncommon. In this instance, the headline was updated to more precisely reflect the story. Okay, so my question would be, would they do the same thing if the Trump administration came out and said, I need something altered based on what Joe Biden says? My, my guess would be they would not be as willing to acquiesce and, you know, abide by and appease the current administration. But this, these are the little subtle things that I'm glad we have social media for because we have seen a lot of these stealth edits in the last six months. Washington Post, USA Today, New York Times, where they think they're clever and people will screenshot one of it, uh, the, the first version, and then they'll post the second version and you will see the way these companies operate. I think this is just another thing where we look at the the disadvantage of Republicans and Donald Trump up against the machine. So two things. Um, it's the stealth editing, as we like to call it, because it makes it sound really pretty, mm-hmm. um, is election interference is what it is. Right. They're they're interfering in our election to spin things a certain way in order to protect one candidate and promote one candidate. That's a problem. The government is using these third parties to censor free speech, basically. Mm hmm. 
Yeah. That's what they're doing, what they did with Hunter Biden's laptop. They went around. They didn't do it directly, but they got people on the inside to do it. And remember, Twitter, their board didn't even think it was, they should have been censoring it. But the government pushed on them so hard that they collapsed like a deck of cards. And they said, OK, we'll do what you want. And Fox News reporting this morning that the administration in early January of, the, of 2023, Snopes, they got Snopes to alter a fact rating that they had conducted on a potential federal ban on gas stoves because mm-hmm. it's very unpopular banning gas stoves. I swear to you, I'm a ba- I'm like not a great cook. I can bake, but I'm not a good cook. You are going to take my gas range from my dead hands. I there <laughs> there is no way yep. I am cooking on electric or one of those little round thing that no, it's not happening the mm-hmm. induction thing. No. So they got them to change it. They had issued a mixture rating on the claim that they were going to do that. And um, they got that to change that to false, that they weren't going to Mm -hmm. do it. Yep. No, you're exactly So this has been going on for a long time. This has been going on. This one was going on during the Trump administration. This was happening with all the quote unquote stealth edits. They were doing it on their own at the time. What bothers me is they are now doing it at the behest of one political party and the current administration, which sounds to me like something a fascist would do. Yeah. And I think the thing that's frustrating the most for me is, you know, look, I understand where where the media has headed uh, and is heading and going. But now more than ever, it's like, okay, the media and journalism, it's really three things. It's either affirmation or confirmation of what you want to believe or what you think. And then it's 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 entertainment and it's either meant to make you laugh. You just let it roll off your back or you get really furious about it and you get outraged about it. And you talk about it for 10 minutes on your talk show. And I I just feel like now more than ever, this is really the sad point of all of this is we have more information, more technology than ever before. And it's incredibly difficult to navigate the water, so to speak, to find out what is real, what is not, what is misinformation, what is disinformation. And I think the politicians, they love it that way because it keeps us divided and bickering over maybe inconsequential things while they continue to line their pockets. Mm -hmm. That's just my view from 30,000 feet above looking at the field of politics in general. But if you can't, like, uh, I'm not going to sit here and trust CNN. I'm not going to trust MSNBC. I know Fox, they'll put their slant on things as well. But if you can't trust them, if you know social media is rigged with algorithms from big tech and all of your legacy newspapers have become advocates for the left, We're at a point now where you have to just trust your gut. You have to trust independent journalists, whether they are grassroots journalists that started their own sub stack or they're the Matt Taibis, the Barry Weisses, the Michael Schellenbergers that are well-respected journalists. By no means are they right wing, but they have kind of exposed the way the game has been being played. Yeah, trust. The only problem with trusting your gut is you're being influenced by your own political beliefs at that point in the game. I love the idea of looking at these independent journalists who don't necessarily have a dog in the fight. Mm hmm that that's super important and being informed now is a job it's it's harder it used to be you could just turn on the six o'clock news and you would get that news that's what you would get was news now you get propaganda and it, it's learning the difference between just the facts ma'am <laughs> and here's my opinion joe friday <laughs> Some people can do it and some people can. It's Mm -hmm. just easier to just sit and listen to it while it's on in the background. And sometimes you actually have to dig and you have to dig down into something when someone posts something on social media. I'm like, okay, where did that come from? Right. Give me the source. Mm -hmm. And you look at all of these publications, USA Today, Washington Post, Philadelphia Inquirer, Philadelphia Daily News, New York Times, New York Post. Obviously, the New York Post is not left wing, but at times they can be tabloidish as well. And I think the biggest issue for us in a never ending news cycle, especially, you know, whether you're doing a radio show, a YouTube show, a podcast, uh, social media, the the news cycle, to your point, you used to watch the six o'clock news or the five o'clock news and then the 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock news, um, you'd get your newspaper the next morning. Now you can get it any time of the day you want. All of these right. companies are circulating new content at 3 in the morning because they've got everything scheduled to be posted on their social media feeds. And it's just one of these things where you got to be careful before you retweet things or you comment on them because you don't know if it's fake news. Now you throw in artificial intelligence to boot 
And yeah. it's just like, you know, best of luck to you. If you can figure out what's real or not, God bless you. Yeah, but to your point, it's it, I think they used to call it bread and circuses to keep the people happy and keep the people entertained. And now they do it with all of this other, all these distractions, right? I, like, I'm still waiting for the election pandemic. Anybody else is waiting for that? That's what I think is the next thing coming. Is the is the bird flu disease X? Have we confirmed that? Because remember when they were alluding to there's a there's a disease X coming, and now there's a there's all well, these contaminated products with the bird flu that's out there. Well, it, it, it's now here in the U.S. because they found it in um, a park in New York. Oh, is so it? Now it, it made its way are, to New York. Yeah, it's in New okay. York. So, so here we go. Right here we go. Like I, I'm just to me, it's almost so predictable. It's laughable, but I don't think that would stop anyone from you know more circuses for the masses. Mm -hmm. You're right. Eight five five eight three nine twelve ten. If you want to jump in, we'll come back. Kick off hour number two. Two red states could try to keep Joe Biden off the general election ballot. I think that's a poor choice. We'll get into that when we come back. Hour number two. Kale and Company, Mary in for Dawn. Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Extraordinary awaits when you open up yourself to a world of possibilities with the 150-year-old Heradora Tequila. Made with unmatched care and aged to perfection, Heradora Tequila has the sophisticated taste to make any moment extraordinary. Heradora Tequila. Available at your local PA Fine Wine and Good Spirits store. Please enjoy Heradora Tequila responsibly. Alcohol 40% by volume, 80 proof. Heradora Tequila, imported by Brown Foreman, Louisville, Kentucky. At Infinity of Westchester, we believe in transparency, fairness, and above all, serving our customers with care. Whether you're looking for a brand new Infinity or a reliable pre-owned vehicle, we have something for everyone. This month, save up to $15,000 on select Infinity models. And that's not all. Every new Infinity purchase comes with three years free maintenance. So don't wait. Visit us in store or online today at infinityofwestchester.com. Philly rides with us. Do you have shoeboxes full of photos? Today only, radio listeners get VIP access to the new Photo Legacy Box. Get your family's photos professionally scanned for as low as seven cents, which is 76% less than what other brands charge. As the world's largest digitizer, you know you can trust Legacy Box to digitize your entire collection of 4x6 photos. Everything from the embarrassing haircut you had in the 90s to photos of your great grandma's wedding. Visit LegacyBox.com value to get 200 photos scanned starting at just $19.95. Oh, and don't forget, Legacy Box also digitizes over 15 other types of analog media. So you can get your favorite memories on VHS or grandpa's film reels from the 40s digitized too. Take advantage of this exclusive offer on the new Photo Legacy Box today and preserve your past for as low as 7 cents. Go to LegacyBox.com slash value. That's LegacyBox.com slash value. You're in hot water, mister. What'd I do? I told you months ago our utility bills were getting higher because of that old outdated tank water heater. Maybe it's time we finally switch to a Navian tankless. Learn about Navian's high-efficiency tankless water heaters, endless hot water, all while helping you save on your energy costs. Hey, look at this. Our utility bill is lower since we got the Navian tankless water heater. Who's in hot water now? We are, all the time. Learn more at tanklessmadesimple.com. You've heard it said, he's a diamond in the rough. Or maybe, diamonds are forever. Here's something else I've learned about diamonds. They're just pieces of coal put under pressure for a long, long, long time. So, when I start feeling like I want to give up, I think about that little piece of coal. And if that piece of coal can make something of itself by not giving up, so can I. Persistence is in you. Pass it on. From PassItOn.com. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency on earth. And if you owe back taxes, the news isn't good. The IRS is raising the interest rate it charges on unpaid taxes and further rate hikes are expected. Most people don't know it, but the IRS adds interest charges to your tax debts daily. So if you owe the IRS today, you'll owe even more tomorrow. And it doesn't stop until you get right with the IRS. The good news is getting right can start with one phone call to Optima Tax Relief. 
America's number one tax relief firm. Optimus Tax Professionals specialize in the Fresh Start Initiative, a powerful IRS program that can save you thousands if you qualify. In fact, the experts at Optima have resolved over $1 billion in tax debt for their clients. Call now for a free consultation. Call 800-354-2840. 800-354-2840. 800-354-2840. Optima Tax Relief. Some restrictions apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. Are you tired of dealing with those old, inefficient windows in your house? Well, maybe it's time to go Guida. How about that drafty, beat-up-looking entry door? You've painted over more times than you can count. Well, go Guida. Need added protection from the elements with a new storm door? Go Guida. And what about that sliding patio door or garage door you've been meaning to replace? Go Guida. Whatever your home improvement needs are, I suggest you go Guida with the great people at Guida Door and Window. To help you get your project started, Guida is offering 20% off all windows and doors while allowing you to start your project with no money down and up to three full years to pay it off interest-free. That's right. Receive 20% instant savings with the luxury of paying off your project interest-free for up to 36 months. Restrictions apply. Offers for a limited time. So what are you waiting for? It's time you finally go Guida. Call today to schedule a free in-home estimate at one eight seven seven go guida or visit them at goguida.com. That's go, G-U-I-D-A dot com. WPHT, WPHT, HD, W-O-G-L, HD3, Philadelphia. From the Cherry Hill Volvo Studios, where relationships matter. Always live on the free Odyssey app. At Cherry Hill Volvo, we have absolutely incredible offers, incredible offers, and a plethora of both new and certified Volvos from which to choose. We are eager to offer amazingly competitive prices because we need the room for all of our construction vehicles. When leasing or purchasing a new or certified Cherry Hill Volvo, you become part of our team. Join Cherry Hill Volvo for the pricing and attention you deserve. I am Judith Krepnick, president of Cherry Hill Volvo. Hey, Clementon. We know your favorite station is Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. I bring it. 7 o'clock it is hour number two on this Thursday morning. It's Kale and Company. Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Get us on the free Odyssey app. Watch us live on YouTube. 855-839-1210 is how you climb in. Nick, Mary, and Greg. Coming up, 745, what's on the cut sheet in just about 20 minutes. Some local stories, including what's going on in the Penridge School District. So, Percocy, get ready. We're coming to you in less than 20 minutes. 7 o'clock hour brought to you by Budget Blinds. Spring is here, and now is the time to budget. Budget Blinds, your one-stop shop for blinds, shaders, uh, shaders <laughs> shades, shutters, custom drapery, and motorization. Visit BudgetBlinds.com for a free in-home consultation and the only no-questions-asked warranty in the business, BudgetBlinds.com. Uh, a couple of people reacting to some of the stuff we were talking about in the first hour, including our buddy, hasn't been sober, uh, very uh, <laughs> <I like him. laughs> aptly named. He says, spicy V8 with tequila. It's a bloody Maria. You can Ooh. keep the vodka. I don't like tequila. Oh, I love tequila. I don't like it. I'm sorry. I can't help what I like and I don't like it. I don't like tequila or gin. I'm sorry. Oh, I've man. never had tequila, though, in a Bloody Mary. A tequila, I just, it's Sounds either, terrible to me. you know. So my aunt used to make Bloody Marys with Clamato, that clam-flavored tomato juice thing. Oh, oh no. No, <sighs> I mean, I love clams, but I'm not mixing it no. uh, with tequila or any other type of cocktail. No, that's yeah. that's that's a little strange. Not as strange as Mary Walter uh, drinking coffee <laughs> uh, yeah. with. Uh, you're gonna have to explain this. We're gonna get off the rails here. Uh, do you care to uh, inform our audience of what you uh, texted us about 20 minutes ago? So I'm so proud of myself because the bar is so low. I made an exceptionally good cup of coffee this morning, and yeah. I'm so proud of myself. Like yeah. if you make a really good cup of coffee, you're like so happy, yep. right? Yeah, it, of course. It, it 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 can make or break your day. Honestly. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like there's nothing worse than going and, and getting a cup of coffee, and that you sucks. Yes. And, right, and it's terrible, and you're in your yep. car, and you're like, oh, this yep. is terrible, mm -hmm. right? So I was so proud of myself when I made my coffee this morning. I found a um a container of peeps, you yeah, know, the sure. pe right? 
and they're pure sugar. Yep. So I said, oh, well, instead of using sugar this morning, maybe I'll just throw a peep in there. Yep. So I threw a peep in and um, with my creamer, and, and I, it made the best cup of coffee yeah. this morning. You've never I'm heard so of this? I'm so excited. And, and the peep, I love just, it. And I, I'm assuming you're drinking hot coffee, not iced or yeah, cold Yeah, you have brew. to have hot coffee because okay. the, the peep will not melt no, otherwise. Right. Right. So, right. The, so the peep melts, and now you yeah. think you have this, this beautiful mix of caffeine, sugar, and cream. It is yes, mm-hmm. it, and it's fantastic. But it's it's not like doesn't taste the same as it would if it was regular sugar. I have heard that I I have heard other people doing this. This is a thing. So good, yeah. so yeah. good. Yeah. I see. I, I I hate peeps. I oh me too. Oh me too. I hate candy corn or <sighs> certain too. candies. Oh, I just hate. Oh, but I would hideous. never. All hideous. Like I used to put a little bit of sugar and some half and half in my coffee. Then I'm I so tra- wild. Then I transitioned to almond milk. Now I don't. Yeah. Now I don't put anything in my coffee. I drink it black, whether it's iced cold brew or. Hot coffee. I just drink it straight up black. Yep. But I could never imagine dunking a peep in my coffee. It's like dunking an Oreo in milk. It's you I, don't I feel dunk like that's it. what I feel like that's what twelve year olds do, Mary. No. Not to take a shot at you, but I feel like that's a childish. But feel neighbor. free. Yeah. But feel <laughs> But that's okay because um there was a, there was a study that was done in Austria and they found out that people who drink um bl- their coffee black yeah. are more likely to have um psychotic disorders. So ah. yeah, that explains half of my existence. Yeah, there's no mm-hmm. doubt about it. Yes, uh, dishonest, manipulative, obsessive uses guilt to harm others emotionally, believing that they're perfect and on a higher level than other folks, using manipulative tactics to get what they want, impulsive, irresponsible, and prone to sil- thrill-seeking. Ah. But you go after my peep. I will. <laughs> so I'm wondering if, if other people stick peeps in their coffee or any other sort of candy insertion to get their sugar high. Maybe it's we could throw so up a good. poll. Maybe we should put up a poll question in the YouTube chat. Is Mary a communist? <laughs> yes or no? Hey, and don't knock it until you've tried it. I will actually try it. I'm always it's down very for good. Try. I will always try something once in life. I will never reject anything, no matter how disgusting I think it is. I'll just confirm that it's bad after I try it the first time. All right. Uh, here's what I would suggest though republicans don't don't do what democrats tried to do um i i thought it was patently absurd that we had state after state after state trying to take trump off the ballot that to me is the true definition of messing and meddling or being a threat to democracy uh now there's a story out about how two red states could attempt to keep Joe Biden off the general election ballot. Republican secretaries of state for both Ohio and Alabama have told Democrats that their presidential ticket might not qualify for their ballots, warning that the party's nominating convention in Chicago will come too late to make their deadlines. Let me just give you a couple of details here, and then we'll get to this uh, and we'll react to this. Uh, There are, quote, no exceptions to Alabama code section, blah, 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 blah. Alabama Secretary of State Allen said in a statement to Semaphore, uh, citing the state's August 15th statutory deadline. In Ohio, the Secretary of State's office sent a letter to the state Democratic Party last week warning that the DNC, scheduled to start on August 19th, would miss its August 7th ballot deadline. The options were laid out by legal counsel. Either the DNC would have to be moved up or the Republican-controlled Ohio General Assembly would have to pass a law changing its deadline to May 9th. Uh, Democrats will have a couple of options as far as paths to resolving any of these ballot access questions. We'll get to their four possible resolutions in a moment. But I I would just say this. Obviously, this is a little bit different because, you know, um, these Democrat-run states were trying to take Trump off the ballot for, you know, the insurrection clause, uh, Article 3, Section 14 of the Constitution. We realized how dangerous that was. And I remember when we were talking about this story, Mary, and talking about all of these states that were trying to piggyback Colorado on down the list of all of these states, that you're setting a dangerous precedent because the last thing you're going to want is years from now, Republicans attempting to do the same thing. The specifics, the context, the nuance, different here, but I would argue that this is a bad precedent. And if I'm being fair about it and being balanced with it, like, I'm sorry, I, I don't want Joe Biden removed from ballots let the voters let the people determine who we select and who we have access to that that's my first reaction from this story yeah you're wrong okay um <laughs> there, why, it's why totally you, okay so that? if there's a deadline for you to apply for a loan or, mm-hmm. or or let's say get into college yep 
and you d can't really seem to, to do that. It's like, oh, but you know what? I plan to put my application in two weeks after your deadline. Yep. Should there be an exception made for you? You know, everybody should have the opportunity. If you're a better candidate, you should still get in if you're a better candidate. You know, oh, so so we, we, we should allow you to do that. No, the Democrats knew when the deadlines for the states are. They mm -hmm. know. They haven't changed them. Are they just punting then because Alabama and Ohio are not winnable for a Democrat? I mean, may, I mean, no. Ohio probably a little bit more winnable on on a on a scale than Alabama. I mean, Alabama is certainly not going blue. Ohio's a red state as well, but probably they're just saying it's it probably doesn't matter to them. I'm trying to figure well, out the end game because it's it's 12 days, right? August what? 7th versus the 19th. This listen, clearly somebody made a mistake somewhere. But you got to tell me that if this was the Trump campaign in a blue state, that they would give him a free pass to put him on the ballot? Oh, no, no, Hell no. Hell no. And this Absolutely is why not, Republicans have to learn to fight like Democrats. They're not asking that he be punted off the ballot. They're not trying to keep, you know, they're not conspiring to keep Joe Biden off the ballot like the Republic, like the Democrats are trying to do to Trump. Mm -hmm. This is clearly somebody made a mistake and they ain't getting the paperwork in on time, basically. I right? Mean, I, I, so I, yeah. I'm sorry. That's on you. It's too bad. So sad. To me, and, and look, I want I want Republicans to fight like Democrats do for yes. sure. But it, I look at there's there's a difference here for me. Like I want Republicans to take advantage of all of the tools of the trade, so to speak, that are out there to win elections: ballot harvesting, mail in ballot. It's like you know until until these things are banned, and which they, they probably never will be. But do what Democrats do up until the point where. You're trying to take somebody off of the ballot. That's kind of where I draw the line. Maybe that makes me a little weaker. I just yeah. I, I don't want to get to the point where I'm living in a nation where, you know, the opposing color of a state is trying to take the top challenger off. But they're not trying to take him off. All they're saying, these are the rules. This is when it is. It's for every candidate. They're just holding the Democrats to the standard of the, the law. That's not taking him off the ballot. Well, they didn't make yeah, but, a special rule to take Joe Biden off the ballot. The Democrats didn't follow the rules. They didn't mm -hmm. follow the laws. They they're 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 mis they, they just didn't do it. Which do you find a bit so, surprising that they would make that kind of error? I do find it surprising that they would make that kind of error. My hunch is they just figure, oh well, paperwork error or whoever made the, however this came about, they'll give us an exception. Mm -hmm. You know, Republicans cave all the time. Democrats would never do this for for Donald Trump. No, you're right. So, you're right. so my feeling is this isn't not this isn't playing dirty. Yeah, no, this I don't, is I don't actually think it's dirty. playing by the law. This is following the law, which is why I think Republicans should follow the law because the Democrats would absolutely say, "Hey, Trump's campaign is such a mess." Mm -hmm. They look at what the Republicans did. They can't even get on the ballot in Ohio and Alabama, or name two states. They can't even get on the ballot there because they screwed up their convention. <laughs> ha ha ha! Yep. Now Trump's not going to be on the ballot. They're such losers. No, and here you are going. Well, we should really, you know, be nice because I want the people to decide so we should let him on the ballot no it's not about being nice it's just it I, I just nice. i just don't want to go down this path of where it's you of know following the law you don't want to go down that path. no it's not following the law it is it's, following the law that's the law and if you make an exception for biden then why even bother having a deadline maybe i'm getting soft in my older years you i don't are. know yeah. i thought i was angry get off the lawn guy but now i'm getting soft again yes. so i'm like a peep in a cup of coffee i'm melting before <laughs> your very eyes so, uh, go ahead, Greg. I was going to give you the no, floor. no, no. I'm just laughing at the, you. The problem, the <laughs> with problem you, with this with whole, you. the whole, oh, you can laugh at me too. <laughs> the problem with this whole thing is, 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 yeah, you can follow the law, you can do this, but it, it's at the same way that it would have backfired on the Democrats for removing Trump. This is this would backfire on the Republicans if they did this. How so though? Like, I mean, in the backfire in the media, which I wouldn't really give a rip about. I just looking, I'm looking at it from like a press, uh, a precedent standpoint. Like I just don't want to get start playing these tick for tack type games, so to speak. Well, that's that's what it would look like, and I think there would be this no. groundswell of Democrats and Democrat voters that would, you know, so what? Write in Joe Biden. Well, that's go yeah. for it. They're allowed to write in Joe Biden. That's the law. Uh, uh, holding someone to the rules is not disingenuous. It's not playing games. It's not setting a dangerous pre a dangerous precedent. It's actually the law. Mm -hmm. 
No, look, the deadline no is not a, right. shouldn't be a surprise to anyone, Democrat or Republican. That's the law. They screwed up. Take advantage of it. They fumbled the ball just before the end zone. I want to use language Nick can understand. Yes. They fumbled the ball just before they got to the end zone. I did you know, that say, once Yeah, in but real you know life. they were really close, and it'd be so bad to take advantage of that because people, the you know people might not like their fans might not like that. No, they screwed up. They tripped and fell, and take it and hold them to the law. It's on them. Let them move. The, they can move their convention if they want to. To summarize what Mary is saying. Go f- yourself. Exactly yes. right, Elon Musk. No, I'm not even saying that. I'm saying follow the law. Yes. So the Democrats, if uh, this becomes a issue, they have four paths to resolving these ballot access issues. Number one, according to uh, this article, submitting letters from the DNC, which will confirm that the party will nominate the president and vice president, as Republicans did in Alabama four years ago. Secondly, getting the deadline changed by the state legislature, as Republicans did in Ohio four years ago. Third, they could take legal action, which would cite recent precedents that have prevented election officials from treating political parties differently and then the fourth option is holding a virtual vote to nominate the biden harris ticket ahead of the in-person nomination in chicago to to that point i would say number four is kind of what you just mentioned mary i think to some extent where you have the the write in so to speak where you can do that virtually yeah and and wasn't that see the difference was colorado would disqualify when they were trying to t- remove Trump from the ballot, not because the Republicans made a mistake right. and the Republicans own themselves. on It's not like what's happening with the Democrats, but they would not count any votes for Donald Trump, period, mm-hmm. even if you wrote him in. That's not what's happening here. Yep. 855-839-1210 if you want to join the conversation. We have to get to this local story when we come back. Percocy, here we come. The Penridge School District unveiling a new bathroom policy. And I think parents, especially those with daughters, with common sense and a functional brain, not happy about this. We'll get to that story when we continue. Kale and Company, back after this on Talk Radio 1210. WPHT. This is the time of year to enjoy life. Dawn Stensland here. Stop letting that pain in your joints keep you from doing what you want to do this spring. Just call my friends at QC Kinetics. QC Kinetics is the nation's leader in regenerative medicine. I'm talking lasting joint pain relief. No surgery, no drugs, no downtime. It's a fact. QC Kinetics is transforming lives. Their advanced treatments harness your own body's ability to restore and repair damaged joint tissue. Now, this life-changing treatment is available for you. So you can walk, run, climb stairs, play golf, move again, pain-free. No pain pills, no risky surgery. It's an all-natural solution. QC Kinetics has tens of thousands of satisfied patients who've reclaimed their mobility. Take action now. Do this. Live your best life this spring and summer. Great use of your tax refund check, by the way. Call QC Kinetics for a free consultation. 215-999-3000. 215 Tell Dawn say you. When you look at your kids or grandkids, you can't help but wonder. You wonder what their world will be like in 20 years. Then you think about yourself. What will your life be like when you step away from work and into retirement? There are a lot of things you can't control, but with the right planning, there are some things you can. At Spectrum Wealth Partners, our portfolio x-ray is designed to show you how you're doing so far and what your monthly income will look like in the future. In other words, they can take you from wondering to knowing. So take control of your financial future. Call today for a complimentary evaluation. 856-322-8686 856-322-8686 or at spectrumwp.com and tune in to the Retirement Spectrum with Alan Cohen Saturdays at 3 here on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT Advisory services offered through Concurrent Investment Advisors LLC and SEC Registered Investment Advisor Concurrent Investment Advisors LLC and Spectrum Wealth Partners are not affiliated companies 
Hey, it's Rich Zioli. This spring is your chance to get the perfect smile from my friend, my dentist, Dr. Mike Venaria at Venaria Dental. Dr. Mike is the master of implant dentistry. I've been telling you about Dr. Mike for years. My entire family goes to Dr. Venaria because the level of care and commitment to dental excellence that Dr. Mike and his team delivers to every patient is unmatched. He's been delivering results that surpass expectations, and that has made him a top dentist in New Jersey for 10 consecutive years. He has one of the most respected reputations among his peers as a master of dental implants. So, if you've been on the fence about getting that dental procedure done, reach out to Dr. Mike today. You have a choice, a clear choice for you and your family. So give Dr. Venaria a call. I promise you won't be disappointed. With two locations to serve you in Cinnaminson and Woodbury right over the bridge, schedule your free implant consultation today for your perfect smile. Call 856-786-2020 or VenariaDental.com, V-A-N-A-R-I-A, VenariaDental.com. There's breaking news all day long from around the world. And sometimes all that noise makes it hard to hear about what's happening right here at home. With the free Odyssey app, getting your local news plus breaking news is easy. And even when you're not near a radio, stay connected with what's going on right here by listening live and push alerts. Just download the free Odyssey app and search and follow your local news station and you're good to go. The local breaking news to get you through your day at your fingertips on the free Odyssey app. That's A-U-D-A-C-Y. Hey, it's Shutter Camera here. Baseball season, it is back. From driving your kids to practice to driving to the ballpark, make sure you are taking care of your car. Schedule an appointment at United Tire. From new tires to oil changes to state inspections and everything in between, the highly skilled technicians at United Tire, they're happy to work around your schedule to do whatever work your car needs, no matter the make or model. Let United Tire help you get in gear for the spring season. Take your car to your locally owned United Tire or visit UnitedTire.com. Don't drive alone. Drive United. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash joy. Through hymns, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you. Discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at Hims, so is treating it. Just go to hymns.com slash joy and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free. With zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash joy. That's hymns.com slash joy for your free online visit, H-I-M-S dot com slash J-O-Y. Hey, Dawn Stensland here. You've heard me talk about Chapman windows, doors, and siding. How much I love my new patio doors. You know by now, if I needed windows, doors, or siding, I'd only trust the Chapman team. If you're thinking of updating your current siding or removing your current stucco and replacing it with siding, think Chapman. With the new updated siding choices available, the curb appeal of your home will pop. If you currently have stucco, updating it with James Hardy plank or vinyl siding will truly add value to your home. If you're looking to sell, you can bet buyers will value updated new siding. And right now would be a good time to get ahead of the ball and plan your siding project for 2024. The certified Chapman installers are the folks you want on the job. If you or someone you know are looking for windows, doors, siding, stucco remediation, shutters, or hardware, give them a call or text them 610-431-8898, chapmanwindowsdoors.com. Chapman, the name I trust. Tell them Dawn sent you. Yo, Roy is Ford. What? We know your favorite station is 1210, WPHD. You've been told, so maybe it's time to learn. Kelly Company. 721 Thursday morning. Nikhail Mary Walter. She's in for Dawn Stenslin today. Greg Stocker. Phil Armquist, Anthony Dorenzo. Cut sheet coming up 745 this morning. Culture wars continue in our schools, Bucks County. Get to that story in just one minute. But a lot of people reacting to our 
caffeine and cocktail consumption conversation. Caffeine and cocktail. <laughs> that's going to be our next event. I, I, I agree. Yeah. Oh, can I come to that yes, one? Absolutely. Caffeine and cocktails. <laughs> yeah. I'm bringing my peeps. Yeah, baby. <laughs> I have long said that if you can start your day with a good cup of coffee and end it with a good cocktail, anything that happens in between is inconsequential. Exactly. I think those are words to live by. Yep. You have um, a good espresso martini with breakfast. Yeah. Wow. How about yeah. that? Kevin Poles, I gotta rip him on Twitter. Uh oh. He says, Uh-oh. forget peeps, and he threw the trademark TM logo in his tweet. Uh, Kevin, you got too much time on your hands, pal. Uh, he <laughs> says, forget peeps in coffee. I can't drink more than a half cup, but when I do, I add a half of a junior frosty from Wendy's to my coffee. That sounds so good. No, it does. No. Yes, it sounds just, amazing. Yeah, I was just going to say that. that he, sound... he says the flavors I use, standard chocolate, vanilla, or mint, yes. only during the holiday season. Yeah. How, how about, here's what we'll do. Uh-oh. Why don't we just take a <sighs> Snicker bar or a Milky Way I mean, or a Twix they can and we'll do just that. we'll just melt that into the coffee they as well. They can do that. If you want candy, just go to the convenience store and eat candy for breakfast. By, people. <gasps> by the way, Nick, uh, Wawa's coming up as a sponsor for the 8 o'clock hour. So maybe, yeah. maybe you can get, uh, I'm sure they have some of these sort of coffee concoctions at Wawa, right? I, I, I don't know if they do, but I, I mean, I get, ridi- sure I get ridiculed for like buying Starbucks, but at least I'm not drinking girly kitty coffee, okay? Girly, girly kitty, kitty coffee? coffee? Yeah. I, like, I don't need all these wow. kitty concoctions. Kitty there. like K-I-T-T-Y or kitty like K-I-D-D-I-E? No, like my, my daughters, when they get ready to perform for uh, their dance competitions, yeah. My wife, which I approve of, and they don't drink coffee at nine years old, but before well, their good. competition, they, they will get a small, very small coffee for a caffeine jolt, because I don't want them drinking like Red Bull and stuff like that. So they'll get a coffee, but they always get like these mocha frappa latte, kappa, I don't even know how you pronounce half of these yeah. drinks. And I'm just like, for the, like, I give my kids a pass, but if you're a grown man drinking things like that, we need to have a conversation. That's all I'm saying. Wow, look yeah. at Nick judging judging Kevin's manliness. A lot of toxic masculinity coming out of me this morning. Can't help A little it. judgy, that's all I'm going to say. You're just being a little tad judgy. Not my style, usually. And they have creamer that's like Snickers flavored and all that stuff. Uh, yeah. Not my jam. I don't love that as much. Yeah. I, I'm like a coconut or a cream or a um, mint girl in okay. my coffee. Mm. Fair enough. Let's is, get, that, is that okay for you? Uh, yes, yes, okay. because I have to, we, we have to do another two hours and 35 minutes, and I want you to not want to kill me, so I'm going to give you you know <laughs> special dispensation. I don't know. Greg and I are back on the same vibe again. so Which is know. really scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're, we're back Stop. together. Yeah. Fucker, you're in cahoots with a Villanova grad right now. It's, yeah. Look, as long as she does good radio, I don't care <laughs> where she went to school, honestly. All right. Uh, speaking of schools, let's get to this story in Penridge coming out of Percocet, uh in Bucks County. As Penridge School District on Monday, they presented an updated version of its highly debated bathroom policy. And the revision of the policy, which is Policy 720, was presented for its first reading Monday to a lot of mixed reaction. The new iteration asserts a right to privacy. However, it states that the, quote, use of school restrooms is included in this right. And with the options for bathroom use, all individuals have the ability to select the bathroom of their choice translation dudes can go into women's bathrooms if they choose to because they are now identifying as a female further the policy says that the district will quote provide access to single user restrooms so you do have some privacy there if you choose to use that one multi-user restrooms and restrooms that are not based on their biological sex board member ricky chaikin said that if the policy were adopted as it was presented she would consider leaving the district and instead have her children attend a charter school saying quote i won't let my tax dollars fund an institution that won't protect its students and mary i agree with ricky here wholeheartedly again this is insane uh mm-hmm. this is ridiculous the world we're living in now keep in mind this is the entire school district so it's not just high school so girls that are eight years old in elementary school 12 years old in middle school 16 years old in high school will likely encounter at some point in time a man in their safe space. Um, I would do the same thing if, now this is Bucks County, 
which is supposed to be more red than Montgomery County. I live in Montgomery County, which is pretty much super blue. Mm-hmm. So I just know that my daughters, there's a there's a percentage chance that they'll experience this in the next nine to ten years before they wrap up high school. Um, and I'll just tell you right now, if that the day ever comes where that happens, and I'm somebody that wants my kids to go to public school. I don't want to put them in private school, Catholic really? school, charter school. I want them to be around all different groups of people because that's how it's going to be when they go to college. It's how it's going to be in the real world when they enter the workforce. But I, I will yank them quick, fast, and in a hurry if my daughters ever experience that because they shouldn't have to. I would think that the um, single-use bathroom is going to be super popular. Yeah, and I think that's kind of their their they're out they're out the yeah. little bit of wiggle room they've left them. Yeah. Well, if Olivia or Mia don't feel comfortable sitting in a stall where a dude sets up shop next to them, they could always use the single use restroom, Mister Kale. It, it we we sh- Title Nine, all the things that women have fought for for over 125 years now, and we're just going to obliterate it and nuke mm-hmm. it for less than one percent of the population. Doesn't seem right. Well, once you understand the pyramid, of, the pyramid of victimhood on the left, you understand what's happening here. They used women for a really long time to, you know, advocating women in order to get into power, right? That's how they got there. Now, they then when women weren't really as necessary, anymore, they kind of kicked them down. And then it was um, the gays and lesbians and gay rights, right? So they used them. Now they don't need them anymore. So now they're onto transgenders, right? right? right. So, so, so they you, you eventually get kicked down the pyramid. Mm-hmm. And so women are being kicked even further down for the transgenders and so are the gays and lesbians being kicked down and now all hail the transgenders who are like uh, we can't we're going to just have to keep finding smaller and smaller percentages of populations that are quote unquote victimized and oppressed. marginalized yeah right and and they are going to have to be be raised up this transgender thing is as hit it's as hit the, the top of the curve yeah and we're down on the other side and you talked about this earlier in the week in your big take with dei mm-hmm. you're starting to to see all of that the good thing about this the silver lining is stuff like this keeps parents engaged in the school and True. before covid parents didn't go to school board meetings yep. they didn't vote in school board meetings they had they didn't talk to their kids about what they were doing in school had no clue what their kids were learning now parents are starting to get involved that was the gift of covid the one gift covid gave us was parents going oh wait they're teaching you what mm-hmm. yep Yep. So this gets parents involved, and I love the threat of charter school and private school, which is why I'm a big fan of school choice, because if you had school choice, shenanigans like this stuff wouldn't be going on. But, I mean, here's the thing, and you always want to protect your child if you believe that your daughter should not have to deal with this. Now, there is a select few of people who are out there like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. Get over it. Suck it up. I'm not in that camp. But you're going to pay tax dollars for where you live for the public school, and then you have to pay, obviously, to put them in another school. So it's, right. it's it's you're getting you're getting it on both ends. And to be honest, it's unfair because I think a lot of people just flat out can't afford to do that. Pay right. school taxes and then pay tuition elsewhere. So you just made the argument for school choice. Oh, I'm I've been pro pro school choice. I mean, those voucher programs that they were yep. doing in Florida and things like that. I I am all for that. Fund the child, not the school, not the, not the uh, the machine. Fund yes. the child, yes. and if you want to put your kid, as long as the the, the school is accredited. Right? Mm -hmm. Go for it. I agree. 855-839-1210 if you want to jump in. We'll come back, work our way towards what's on the cut sheet. That's coming up at 745. But first, a word from my friends at the Piazza Auto Group. Just about two and a half months ago, the debut episode of Kale Pool Karaoke dropped on all of our social media channels at 1210 WPHT. And we filmed that first episode with the Honorable Philip uh, Patrick Murphy in a 2024 Honda Pilot Trail Sport. Honda's full-size SUV. The Trail Sport is the rugged, all-terrain, off-road edition, which features a seven-mode drive system. Trail Watch multi-camera view, so it's highly rated for safety and security. 18-inch alloy wheels. Very slick look to it, and wireless Apple CarPlay. All the technology for all the devices for all the kids. And also, one of the great features, the the real new popular trend, 
third row seating, and you can explore all the new options on all the variations of the Honda Pilot, including the Trail Sport, at one of their five Piazza Honda locations in Philadelphia, Pottstown, Reading, Springfield, and Langhorn, or shop all their inventory at piazzaautogroup.com. Dawn Stensland here for a greener, healthier lawn. Call my lawn care company today, Natural Lawn of America. Natural Lawn has been creating green lawns quickly, more naturally, and with fewer weeds for more than 35 years. Their certified specialists tailor their treatments to your lawn's specific needs, reducing the need for chemicals and creating a safer lawn for your family and pets. Time's running out on Natural Lawn's unbeatable offer. Free seeding every year. 800 free seed, naturallawn.com. Greener grass, fewer weeds, guaranteed. Hey genius, it's the king Howard Eskin here. You might think of me as the king of sports media, but I think of myself as the king of grilling. I've been grilling athletes and coaches for over 30 years, but I've also been grilling for years with my Weber grill from Gerhard's Appliances, from Wi-Fi enabled technology to stainless steel burners and flavoring bars. My Weber grill from Gerhard's Appliances is the real genius. And whether it's summer or winter, it's always grilling season. Grill like a king. Go to GerhardtsApplances.com. This is Larry Steinitz with Investor Schooling. Do you know when the best time to buy investment properties is? It's now. It's always now. You just need to learn how to buy them correctly. Go to InvestorSchooling.com and sign up for a complimentary class this Thursday night and learn how to buy investment properties and make money every time. That's right. That's what we teach. We teach how to buy investment properties and make money every time. Go to InvestorSchooling.com and RSVP right now. Take a class this Thursday night at 7 o'clock. That's InvestorSchooling.com. This is Larry Steinitz with Investor Schooling. Don't go through life ignorant about how to become a millionaire. Learn how to invest in real estate, the stock market, precious metals, and learn from an expert. At Investor Schooling, we teach these things and more. We only provide education, and we will teach you how to leverage real estate, how to leverage the stock market, and how to leverage precious metals to make more money than you've ever made before. Go to InvestorSchooling.com and take a complimentary class this Thursday. We will see you there, InvestorSchooling.com. That's InvestorSchooling.com. Hi, this is Dom Giordano at Martin Water Conditioning's Customer Appreciation Sale. Everything flows smoothly. Martin Water Conditioning has the latest in water purifying technology for your home. Until April 22nd, receive up to $500 off when purchasing a Connecticut water system. 18 and 48 month special financing or 10% off spot free car rinse system and more. Call Martin Water Conditioning at 1-800-853-1093. Offers cannot be combined or applied to prior sales. Get slimmer for the summer by losing a contractually guaranteed 20 to 40 plus pounds in only 40 days with NJ Diet. Call 855-5NJ Diet or go to njdiet.com. Get ready for spring with njdiet.com. Did you know the country's best Trump store is right in your area? Conveniently located on Street Road in Ben Salem, the Trump store has a huge selection of everything Trump, ranging from shirts, hats, mugs, flags, and more. With a new 2024 collection, the Trump store is the perfect spot to find a gift for yourself or any other Trump fan in your life. Open seven days a week. Stop by or shop online to see their huge selection. The Trump store, where Trump is still president. Visit in Ben Salem, PA, or visit online at TrumpStorePA.com. Texting privacy policy and terms and conditions posted at xplan.us. Texting enrolls for occurring automated text and marketing messages. Message and data rates may apply. Reply stop, opt out. Go to nomoredraftywindows.com for full offer details. Attention all homeowners. Do you know when to replace your windows? Feeling too hot or cold? It's time to replace. Fog between the glass. Time to replace. Spending too much on expensive energy that literally goes out the window? It's definitely time to replace. If you've put off replacing windows in your home because it's too expensive, here's great news. You can now get a free in-home window consultation and free price quote from Renewal by Anderson, the company with the most five-star reviews among leading full-service window replacement companies. And right now, you can save $359 off every window and $887 off every door. Just text DOOR to 200-300 for your free consultation on top-quality affordable windows or patio doors for no dollars down, no payments, and no interest for a year. That's right. You don't pay a dime for an entire year. Plus, save $359 off every window and $887 off every door. But hurry, these big dollar savings end this month. Text DOOR to 200 300 right now. Text the word DOOR to 200-300. Don't wait. Text DOOR to 200-300. Do you have three ex-wives and your current trophy wife wants a life insurance policy three times the size of the policies you had to purchase for your previous mistakes? If so, you need to call Big Lou at Term Provider. 800-700-6898. Big Lou is intimately familiar with your problems. And if you're 50 or 60 years old and in reasonably good health, a $1 
million dollar policy should only cost about a hundred to two hundred dollars per month. Big Lou may have a solution for your previous policies as well. You may even save enough money to lighten the load on your new one million dollar policy. Remember, call Big Lou. He's like you, except he's only on number two. Call Term Provider at 800-700-6898. That's 800-700-6898. For a million dollars in term life insurance that you can live with, call Big Lou at 800-700-6898. 800-700-6898. Call on Blackwood to follow 1210 WPHT on the free Odyssey app. Download it now. Mustard, Dale and Company, 738, Thursday morning. Nick, Mary, and Greg. Dawn will be back next week. Sean Farish in tomorrow. Don't forget tonight, Pints and Politics, 7 o'clock. Zlock Performing Arts Center, Bucks County Community College. Dom Giordano, Rand Paul, bourbon and cocktails shall be had. What? They will mix it up. Now, I think they will be in agreement on about 99% of things tonight. Yeah. Obviously, with uh, the grilling and the roasting of Tony Fauci, Rand Paul with that book out. But there will be a debate between Dom and Rand over the banning of TikTok. Yeah, yeah Dom is wrong on that, by the way. Rand, I agree. I agree. Rand Paul is 100% correct. Mary, where are you on the banning of TikTok, by the way, in this country? So I don't think you ban the app, but I do think you can force the sale to um, an owner that is not an enemy of the United States that's waging war on us, even mm-hmm. though we won't acknowledge it. Right. Also, I mean, also wait, very wait, interesting. Wait, Go wait, ahead. But where does that end, though? I mean, like, Saudi Arabia is not a friend of us. I mean, like, we there are, there are a lot of enemies that own a lot of different devices and things here. Apple. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, it's... You're saying slippery slope? You start uh, yeah. here, where yeah. does it end? Yeah. No, uh, I don't know. I, I think I think China is, you know, they, we know they steal our technology. How about when you stop stealing our technology, we'll let you have your company back? I love how China actually uses TikTok for educational purposes. In their and, country. And, yeah. And, yeah, and we use it here in our country for stupid challenges, like uh, sticking your head in a batch of acid and you know, all these b- bizarre yeah. horror stories. Like, kids have been doing stupid stuff forever. It's just that we didn't have TikTok challenges back when, you know, we were kids, you know, in the 70s, 80s, 90s. 90s, early 2000s. Nowadays, it's like, hey, we got this new challenge going on on TikTok. You're going to blow off half your body. Do you want to partake? Sure. Yeah. So, very interesting stuff. I'm looking forward to that debate tonight. Uh, Speaking of uh, absurd things that have happened to your body, whether you've created the infliction of pain yourself or if you've been on the receiving end of assaults, uh, we have to give an update to this story. Uh, This was, I think, one of the most... um, horrific visuals I have seen in this world of the Utes fighting at schools or after hours. Uh, if you recall, this is this has got to be at least a month old now, the story about uh, two teens in Missouri where uh, there was a very, very violent assault, a fight between two teenage females. Um, I believe we have the video here. This is a video we have played multiple times. And uh, there you go. It's on YouTube. You have two teenagers fighting in the street, and this is where the one girl gets oh, her I head. Can't, just I can't even watch this. I can't re- watch it. I can't watch it. Repeatedly makes me slammed. So angry. It's so nauseating and disgusting. Um, and we have an update on that story. So the daughter uh, is Kaylee Gaines, and she was the victim. Her father, uh, according to the New York Post, has revealed details of what led to that brutal, vicious assault. And it started with text wars, which led to the near-fatal fight. Uh, So obviously this is tragic, and the Missouri teen Kaylee Gain had been exchanging digital insults for weeks with the adversary who bashed her head onto the pavement on March 8th. Her father has exclusively told the New York Post. Clinton Gain, 41, detailed how his daughter suffered brain bleeding. She still can't walk by herself, and she now talks in a loop as she struggles to recover from the life-altering assault. What does that mean, she talks in a loop? 
I guess repeating the same thing, thing. kind of getting oh, caught God. up on like not like able to you know Jesus. flow smoothly with yeah. the, the transition of speech from one thought to the next. That would be my guess. Man. Um, I've, I've been known to have that trouble from time to time True. reading a story on this show. <laughs> yep. um, and my head was never bashed. Uh, the father and Kaylee's stepmother, Jamie Gain, told the Post that they combed through their daughter's 16-year-old device uh, to understand what led to the caught-on-video clash. And the teens, according to several sources, told the Post they were part of a rival friend Click. Oh, for God's sake. So again, it's like not this maybe this isn't like gang related, but it's like, you know, two groups of females that just don't get along. Same thing where guys have their little their little posses, so to speak. Uh this obviously at Hazelwood East High School in St. Louis. Uh the altercation set off a fresh round of phone threats between the two, uh the assault and the victim of the assault. Uh she has now been charged with felony assault, and the two girls uh, apparently they agreed to square off one one-on-one -on -one and have this fight and we know what happened since uh, they are saying quote we hope that the justice system sees that this went way overboard and nearly killed our daughter and it doesn't matter who said what to who before all of this happened you know Mary we've been talking about this story for a while on this show and high school kid fights are nothing new it just seems like there's a different level of anger and rage in today's yeah. youth where they they look like they're trying to kill each other. It's not just punching yeah. somebody in the face. It's bashing in their skull. Right. Yeah, there's a lot of stomping on heads now. And a lot of it is also group attacks on one kid. Right. Yes. You never notice. That's the other thing. It's a pack mentality. Mm -hmm. um, and th supposedly the girl who now is charged with, uh, with this uh, assault, I think they're just going to decide whether she's going to be tried as an adult. Oh, she better that be. That's coming up uh, beginning of May, I believe. Uh, she's supposedly an honor student, played violin uh, in the orchestra and all this other stuff, and that's great. And she did ultimate cage fighting on the side. Like, come on. Yeah. Well, so she's she doesn't have any mental deficiencies. There's no way you can say, well, yeah. we got to treat right. her with kid gloves. No, you charge right. her as an adult. Absolutely. I yeah. agree 100%. But there does seem to be a problem. And I don't know if it's COVID related. I don't know because of the lockdowns, what happened to these kids. But there's an entire, and first of all, fighting was when I was back in the day when I went to school, you know, when we had to, you know, do our homework on stone tablets, <laughs> there were no girl fights. The girls didn't fight fight there was a lot of words thrown around but girls didn't fight social media though and this ability to keep it going after school with the texting and everything else i think intensifies it everything gets taken too far now there's no end there's no cooling off period right mm -hmm. and that that looks like what happened here they were both going back and forth both parties i think are guilty in this both parties escalated this fight however ultimately that one girl took it to attempted murder basically right Right, and right. I, I'm, I think she's getting off lightly. I think with felony. I assault. agree. I agree with you. It looks like attempted murder to I think everyone who watches this video. And sadly, her life is now going to be ruined. But kind of like the shooting in Philadelphia yesterday, we got to find out where is this anger coming from yeah. with our young people because it's our young boys have been angry for a really, really long time, and now it's our young girls who are super angry. And one other quick thing, mm -hmm. parents. Man, how do you not know what your kids are doing on their phones? I know. You know, I, and I know it's hard, but I I know my listen, my brother did it, and I know it's really hard, but their kids, he said I own your phones. Mm -hmm. Every single night all three girls had to give my my brother and sister-in-law their phones. Yep. Yep. And they went through them, and sometimes the girls didn't know if they were going through them that night or they weren't going through them that night. Mm -hmm. You better stay so, involved. No doubt. And they they went through, and they went through their text messages. They went. They would just do it sitting in front of the TV, you know, looking at them, to so they knew what was going on with their kids. Yeah. Well, my wife does it. She'll she'll just walk yes. in the living room. My girls have very little downtime between school and dance because my wife and daughters are just obsessed with dance. They do it like five six days a week. So I mean, they have very little downtime, and the little downtime they do have you know they're scrolling and swiping they're watching stuff on youtube but my wife will come in and just randomly grab the phones like once a week yeah and my daughters will be like oh let me guess it's a uh, phone check time and she'll spend 20 minutes she'll go through the text she'll check the apps yeah direct messages things like that. now there's we she have a lot of like you know restrictions placed so they don't have full access to everything 
but she just want to make sure that there's no bullying, no talking mm-hmm. about each other, making fun of the other kids' shoes or things like that, because that's where it starts, right? And yes, then it escalates, yes. and then sadly you get stories like this. Right, and had they done that, they might have known that they had made this this appointment, if you will, that we're going to go fight on this day, and here's where we're going to be. Yeah, yep. that that. That video too is the uh, the, the savage uh, that pounded her head into the into the concrete. Um, that is not when you fight. You fight. Yes, I get it. Right. You, you get on somebody. You punch. Blah 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 blah. That behavior of 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 taking somebody's head mm-hmm. and smashing it into the concrete. Right. You know exactly what you're doing. And nobody and it, jumps into help. And it's and it's that is learned behavior mm-hmm. too. That is something that 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 she saw somewhere. Somebody did that. Right. And it and right. she knew she was going to inflict the most the most harm on that person. She either saw that on That is intentional on, yes, by the way. Yeah. Absolutely. She either saw that online where they sensationalize yep. these fight videos or maybe she saw it in her own household. I mean, we have no yes. idea. Yeah. Well, that, that, yeah. But haven't we all seen it by now? It's true. It's right? true. We've all you seen see, it. So it's yeah. not a surprise that she would have seen it somewhere. We've all seen this before this event. And we've all seen these these, you know, mo- these pack fights where you know two people are fighting and then you know one person's losing so all their friends jump in and beat the crap out of the the one person you know the one kid so we've all seen this and you have all these other kids that just stand there and they film it and they record it right that that is the most infuriating well there's a lot that's infuriating about that but one of the most infuriating things about that is just the the fact that there's i think it's a dude Mm -hmm. who's filming it oh yeah he could easily step in and break it up, right? Right, exactly. Assuming he's not, uh, you know, 5'2", 110 pounds. Still! He should be able to handle himself. It, but the clicks and the likes are more important. Way more important. Way more than, important. Than, you know, possibly saving someone's life. Yeah. That's right. Like, yo, look at this. We got this. We got this girl fight going on here. I could post this on on, yeah. on TikTok and get a million likes. No, It'd be this great. Is, this is where they need to have Stalker step in and say. Not everything needs to be on Twitter. Thank you. Exactly right. <laughs> Thank you very much. 7.48 as we get to a Thursday edition. Put, such put upon here of what's on the cut sheet. What's on the cut sheet? What's on the cut sheet on this Thursday? Sponsored by Cherry Hill Volvo, where they have incredible offers for spring. Choose Cherry Hill Volvo for the pricing and attention you deserve. Cherry Hill Volvo is where relationships really do matter. Judith Yosef and the entire team look forward to meeting you. Check them out on Route 70 in Cherry Hill, Cherry Hill Volvo, where relationships matter. Yesterday, Donald Trump was in Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. Hot Atlanta. Stopped at a a (laughs) Chick-fil-A. Loves fast food. Loves fast food. It's unreal. Loves fast food. (laughs) If he wants to, you know. Uh, he's only he's gonna almost gonna yeah. be eighty years old. I guess it, yeah. I guess at this point it really doesn't matter. Does you know, it? everybody's got their vice. His is fast food. Yep. <laughs> he walked into a Chick Fil A in Atlanta, Georgia, and ordered and ordered thirty milkshakes. Oh, wow, it's a lot of milkshakes. That it is. Did he get one for the big guy? Check uh, Chick Fil A milkshakes, Nick Kale. Where do you rank them? Very solid. On the uh, yeah. I've I've That's long ha- I've long had the belief that Chick Fil A is overrated in yep. general, but I the agree. milkshakes are very good. I agree. I agree. I've never had one. You've never had a Chick Fil A milkshake? No, I've only oh. been to Chick Fil A one twice. Mm. And do you do you agree with Nick and I that it's a little overrated as far as chicken goes? Yeah. So when I was living in DC, everybody's like they were all about Chick Fil A, all oh, about Chick Fil A. No. Yeah, yeah it's, it's all they were about. And we just got one near me here for the first time. I think like two years ago. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, I'd never been. So we went, and I will say the breakfast is good. Like the breakfast biscuit thing with the yeah. chicken and the honey mm, is yeah. actually really good. But they stopped serving that at like 10 or 11 o'clock, yeah. I forget. And yep. so I, my husband came down to visit. I'm like, got to go to Chick-fil-A and get it. And we had to get lunch. I was like, oh, it's okay. Yeah. The one the one thing, uh, and by the way, Phil, I'm starting with uh, Cut 13 here. Uh, the one thing I will say Chick-fil-A does very well is the orderliness oh, of, yes. of the getting speed. through. Yeah. The one up in uh, Langhorn up there, Langhorn, Pennsylvania, up by Sesame Place. Like it is just, you can go there mm-hmm. at peak r- rush time. And it is just, they have you in and out yep. in, in five minutes. Yes, it's they do. Amazing. And, it's amazing. And, and, and on amazing the rare operation. occasion where there is a huge line, yeah. like people are, they, they, they'll wait because they know it's not like the typical thing. I'm going to say something that's, and my son loves Chick fil A, so that's why we go there a lot. But I'm going to say something uh, that is going to get a lot of people upset. Here we go. Get ready, YouTubers. Wendy's chicken nuggets are better than Chick fil A's. I'm just I don't know that I've ever had Wendy's chicken nuggets. Oh, Wendy's chicken, no, no, no. chicken nuggets. 
chicken nuggies. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm, like, had... I'm like talking to my four year old. You're like Andy Reid in that <laughs> yeah. State Farm commercial. <laughs> nuggies. Uh, Wendy's chicken nuggets are amazing. Sorry. I can't remember the last time I had fast food. So yeah, I can't, yeah. Can't you tell it's seven fifty one in the morning? We're starving. I tried. To, you know, are we ever going to get a food drop for the? This show has been going on for eighteen months. Yeah, I know the suits are listening. Yeah. I know that. Can we uh, just something in here? Yeah. Just something to nibble on everybody, for the love of God. Everybody listens. Do intermittent fasting, and then you won't need anything till noon. I brought my berries, Mary. Little raspberries. Oh, His nice berries, Mary. I pop them in when uh, I go off. Have camera. they been washed? Of course. As soon right. as I get home from the store. All right, cut, th- <laughs> cut 13, Trump uh, ordering 30 milkshakes uh, from a Chick-fil-A in Atlanta, Georgia. Cut 13, Phil, go. Look at the way you hold. You like each other, right? <laughs> I, I think that's very nice. Have a good time. Nice to see you. Thank you very much. So we'll order 30 milkshakes. We'll give them out to the people, and we'll take some for ourselves, okay? <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. Hello. Hello. Great, great American franchise, Chick-fil-A. It is. It's a great franchise. The owner is a great man who is a member of one of my clubs, and he's fantastic. And, uh, yeah, they do very well. They're closed on Sunday. It's the Lord's Chicken. That's the Lord's Chicken. You're right. It's good chicken, too. <laughs> yeah, good to see you. Man. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And everybody lined up to see him. Hello, everybody. Get ready for a milkshake. You got plenty of All right. Uh, you got plenty of guys. Huh? This is an original from 2016. You can say you can say what you will. Like, Trump is really good at this. Yep. He's really he's good at pressing the element. flesh. Yep. This is this is his this is his jam. Yep. Autograph and hat. Yep. All the CIA, Secret Service people there. Yep. You got it. That's cool, man. What's your name? Mark. Shakes the hand. Yep. Boom. He understood long before the rest, right? Mr. Trump, he and Shelly Winter. Hi, I talked to you oh, yesterday. Oh, good. You are fantastic. Thank you, brother. You know Shelly? Yes. A great host. Best. And are you guys you friends show? or no, something? No, just be a Sanjay. Well, that's nice because he's, he's been there a long time, too. Yes. I think right from the beginning. Right from the beginning. We did a radio interview with Shelly yes, yesterday, and I appreciate it. Remember when the media was trying to push that he's in mental decline? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's mm-hmm. he's not. No. I mean, it's like the, the fact that they were trying to push that is just absurd. Such a desperate attempt yep. to say, look at see, oh, the other guy just has the same issue. It's not yep. even close. No. Um, I think it's great. 30 milkshakes. He's going to hook people up. He loves to do that, whether it's pizza or burgers. Um, I, I would have asked if I was a reporter, all right, Trump, uh, Chick-fil-A or McDonald's, you can only choose, you can only choose one. Which one are you going with? Uh, you know he's going with a few shakes to go. The only question is, is he a vanilla milkshake guy or is he a chocolate milkshake guy? I'm yeah. always oh, a chocolate wait, wait, milkshake yeah, guy. No, no. Vanilla milkshake is... You have to be a communist to like vanilla milkshakes. I mean, come on. Yeah, I'm not a huge vanilla milkshake <laughs> guy. I prefer chocolate. Yeah. Sad, harsh. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's just... Like, if you're going for the milkshake, go for the chocolate milkshake. I agree. Put a little whipped cream on there. It's the same thing with the Frosty at Wendy's. You got to go chocolate. You don't go with the strawberry. Do they have vanilla? They have a, they they had a vanilla first stretch. They, they did oh, a okay. strawberry one. I'm like, no, yeah. it's, it's chocolate. Yeah, you go to the classic chocolate, yeah. 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 Uh, a Trump supporter uh, came up to him and said, uh, I don't care what the media tells you, Mr. Trump. We support you. I think the reason this is making headlines is because it's a young African-American woman, I right. believe, is why this is making headlines. A lot of people, I think, from Morehouse College, uh, which, which I a, believe is an, all, is an it HBCU. Is. It, it is. is. Yeah. Uh, this is cut... Where are we here? Cut 12, Phil, go. So I don't care what the media tells you, Mr. Uh, Trump. We support you. We support you, Mike. Okay, 4 p.m. We're here 4 p.m. Come here, let me give you a hug. <laughs> no, 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 don't do it. He's racist. I was don't just going to say that. him. Ah. Whatever you do, don't show this to the media. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Wow. Um, We've seen the numbers. Now, again, you know, you're going to have your social media grifters that say, it's over for Joe Biden. Look at this. A black person hugs Trump. But the numbers have, have, have gone up, right? You saw him. He was at like 9% support from the black community in 16. It was 12% in 20. And now it's roughly about 24, 25%. Which is very significant in, in this day and age where we're looking at a razor thin election. But there is clearly a growing, ground swelling base of non traditional Republican voters that gravitate towards Trump. And we've seen this now. 
Yeah, but yet the polls are all saying that Biden's ahead of Trump now, right? Like it's all flipped and Trump's not ahead anymore. He was ahead two weeks ago. Now Biden's ahead. Uh, so I, I don't, I'm not quite sure what's going on with the polls, and I don't put a lot of stock in them ever since 2016. I don't think anyone should put any stock in the polls yeah. uh, personally. But if you look at if you look at these videos where people go into black neighborhoods, they go into Latino neighborhoods and they uh, Hispanic neighborhoods, and they ask them, Trump or Biden? They're almost overwhelmingly Trump. Now, I don't know how edited they are right. to make it seem as if it's overwhelmingly Trump, and I think that's a fair question to ask. But they, that that woman was not the only one who asked to have her picture taken with him. At the end there, all of these black people were coming up to Trump and wanted their picture taken with him. Contrast that to when Biden walks into an ice cream shop and people are buying their ice cream and walking out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the, nobody's asking to have their picture taken with him. Nobody's asking him to autograph anything. There's no fanfare. There's no people are like eh, Biden's here and out they go. I, I think at the end of the day, what you are seeing is the bottom line is, regardless if you're white, black, Asian, Hispanic, people say, you know what? At the most entry level, the first talking point, I had more money in my pocket under yes. under Donald Trump, and I think yeah. a lot of people will be like, well, I don't necessarily agree with this or that or that. But you know what? My bottom line was better with the last guy. Trump is a, Trump is a schmoozer. This is what he does. This is why he's so successful in business. And we talked about this er, earlier in the week. When Trump walks into a room, he's got the same personality as Obama. And I don't think Biden has it. He's got that thing that when he walks into a room, you literally feel his presence. Obama was the same way. Yeah. When he walked into a room, he sucked the air out of it. He owned the room. Yep. That's not Biden. Biden shuffles in and, and you know, people just assume grandpa got out. You yeah. know? No, you're right. O- Obama had a charisma. He yes, was a great he, he was a great orator. You know, he had that ability to when he was on the stage, he commanded all of your attention. And I don't even think it's Joe in the current rendition of Joe, which is obviously out of it mentally. I don't think Joe ever had that 25, 30 years ago. Now, he would get angry. He would yes. yell. He would yes. put on a performance. But he didn't He didn't own it like Trump and Obama do. Now, right. Trump, Biden's a good politician. Like, you, you can say what you want about Biden, but he's a good politician. Well, to be around was. as long as he has been, you have to be doing something right in the political game. With Trump, he's a good climber. With Trump, it's different. Trump is not, Trump doesn't. Trump's not a politician, so he doesn't have. He, he's a businessman. He's a guy who yeah. who knows TV. He knows business. He knows all of that stuff. So like that's that's his uh, that's his strong suit. I agree. Um, yesterday, Mary, we discussed a lot the um, Arizona Supreme Court ruling a near total abortion ban from 1864 is enforceable. Trump was asked that yesterday. Asked about that yesterday, and he does say that Arizona went too far with the abortion law. This is cut. Eight, Phil, go. Oh, thank you, sir. Did you, Mr. President, did Arizona go too far? Did Arizona go too far? Yeah, they did, and that would be straightened out. And, and you know, it's all about states' rights. That would be straightened out. And I'm sure that the governor and everybody else are going to bring it back into reason, and that will be taken care of, I think, very quickly. What do you think about Florida? Uh, well, Florida is Florida's probably maybe going to change all of a sudden. See, it's all about the, the will of the people. This is what I've been saying. It's a perfect system. So for 52 years, people have wanted to end Roe v. Wade to get it back to the states. We did that. It was an incredible thing, an incredible achievement. We did that, and now the states have it, and the states are putting out what they want. It's the will of the people. So Florida's probably going to change. Uh, Arizona's going to definitely change. Everybody wants that to happen. And you're getting the will of the people. It's been uh, pretty amazing when you think. Mary, I'll give you first crack at this. Tony Bruno and I spoke a lot about yesterday with what happened in Arizona. Okay, I don't care what you talked about with Tony. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're cheating on me. I am. Um, enforcement has stayed on this for two weeks. Okay, so enforcement has stayed for two weeks. It's going to be on the ballot in Arizona. They're working to get it on the ballot in Arizona. The problem is, is this law is one of those old laws. And this is the problem with just putting a law on the books and never addressing it again. It's been on the books since 1860s. And nobody bothered, you know, looking at saying, hey, what dopey laws do we have on our, uh, you know, on the books in Arizona? Nobody cleans them up. I'm a big fan of before you can make a new law, you have to get rid of two old ones. 
like it just just to kind of clean things up a little bit cuz people get get tried then on uh, somebody digs up an old law from over 100 years ago and says you can't do that because this law's still on the books and somebody gets dinged for something dumb. So that's what happened here in Arizona. Trump's right. You put it on the ballot. Let the people decide. That's the way it's supposed to work. Problem solved. Trump doesn't like what happened. Uh, Carrie Lake also tweeting yesterday that she's not on board with what Arizona uh, is doing. But you know who is enjoying this? The Biden administration. Course, because the White House has now dispatched Kamala Harris to Arizona. Okay. There uh, goes that success. Uh huh. Story coming out yesterday as the vice president has been, quote, a leading administration voice on reproductive freedom and uh, the veep will be traveling to tucson tomorrow just days after the ruling so um here mary, we go they're sending her in mary are you uh, uh, are you in the camp that believes uh, that uh, that the abortion issue is going to be a big issue in 2024 or you not think well, I find it interesting that the arizona supreme court ruling came down the day after trump said it should be up to the states I think the timing of that is suspicious to me. That's yeah. just me. Yeah. Um, I look at that and go, hmm. Uh, I, I don't know if it's going to, if they can keep that going long enough to November. You know, there's still a lot of people screaming about that. But inflation's getting worse. What's it going to be in November? You know, if inflation goes down, if prices start to come down, I think abortion becomes more of an issue. Abortion will always be an issue for a segment of the population, no matter what. They are one issue voters, and that issue is I want to be able to kill my baby even during delivery. Right. That's what that's what their that's what their issue is. So you're never going to change those people, and it, they're just not with the majority of Americans. We talked about you know the majority of Americans say first trimester. After that, support goes way down. And I think you're going to see this all eventually settle out in that area. That's I like, what's going to happen on a state-to-state -state I like basis. The way, I like the way you positioned that because what we're looking at right now is, you know, obviously the abortion thing works against Republicans, yet the Republicans have the economy in their back pocket. They have the border. They have crime. And it's, it, it's I think it's going to be a travesty if, you know, all of the issues show advantage GOP, yet they lose because of abortion. But it is is based on who you speak to right like i don't think abortion is a major issue for certain guys some guys are like eh, it's probably issue number five or seven now you, you talk to a liberal female it's the number one issue but i do think that you make a really good point if inflation continues to tick back up and we're at four and a half percent or five percent or if gas is up to four dollars a gallon then it'll be interesting to see how especially the liberal female positions especially if you're a liberal female that's career-oriented, that's married, that handles the finances, are you going to be the one that's sitting here and saying abortion is still number one, or is it the cost of every single thing that you might spend money on each and every week? I've, and I'm getting ready for all, all of the hate. Here it comes. Here it comes. I don't care. <laughs> this is my opinion, and I, I have been proven right about this. Wherever abortion is on the ballot, the GOP loses. So the GOP, the uh, the Democrats are going to put it on the ballot every state they possibly can. I'm telling you, it's a winning issue for to date for, for Dems. We've but gotten... if they put it on the ballot in as many states as they can, that's that's what it's supposed to be. That's a good thing in my book. Put it on on the because it it ends the conversation then in those states. Even if it means that the, the GOP doesn't win, then. But but why would the GOP lose if they put it on the ballots and the people feel empowered and you can make your 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 choice? Because they're going to put it on the ballot in on an election year and vote against the person that they feel took Roe v. Wade away Oh, you mean away put, from by them. putting it on the ballot? Yes. You don't mean putting it on the yes. ballot in those states. You mean putting it on the ballot in uh, yes via the presidential election? Yes, and, and I got you, and and on. And on the ballot in, I mean, it's going to be on the ballot in Arizona. It's going to be right, on the ballot in Florida. Be. Well, right now you've got New York, Maryland, and Florida where it's official, and you have eight other states. I do believe Arizona is one of those eight other. So you're looking at a if it goes through, you're looking at a well, eleven of fifty, and we've got six months to go. Arizona just has to get like three hundred fifty thousand signatures, and I think you know by July, so they're going to get that. So and it's I think going the signatures the vary state to state as well. Right. So. Yeah, exactly. But and so if they do, though, again, they will literally get to vote on it in the ballot. But to your point, Greg, that will be in November when the presidential election is yeah. happening yeah. as well. Yeah.
Uh, so we've we've been saying the theme on this show, Mary, has been this election is going to be immigration versus abortion, and it just depends on which base for each of that comes out m- more. Uh, Nick, you did your big take this morning on Alejandro Mayork. Well, oh, my buddy. Uh, the director of Homeland Security uh, was on Capitol Hill yesterday on the president's 2025 Homeland Security budget request. Your bu- also, your buddy, I pulled this just for you, Nick Hale, uh, Senator Kennedy. I love Mr. Kennedy. Grilled Mr. Mayorkas. Yes. Uh, this is worth 90 seconds that <laughs> that uh that that yes. it is here uh this is cut mm. excuse me boy sorry Are you developing emphysema over there what's going no, on no i've had <laughs> i've had bronchitis for like two and a half weeks yeah you it's have it's just not it's just not clearing up it's like my cold that lasted a month yeah i feel fine it's just the, this cough whenever i laugh um <laughs> We could do an entire segment on all our personal ailments. Yeah, exactly. You know, we could do an unfunny show so you don't have to laugh anymore. That way you Wait, won't what cough. what do you mean? Yeah, we can't do that. I could try oh, to do Oh, so that like Greg doesn't have to yeah. laugh anymore because I, I could try to do. We could try to do a very boring show to make oh, Greg not okay. cough. I could read, like, the Constitution. Um, Some people need to hear that. <laughs> Some people carry one in their pocket with them. Yes. Cut six, Phil, go. Mr. Secretary... I love this guy. I, um, I don't hate anybody. <laughs> I look for grace wherever I can find it. And I certainly don't hate you. But uh, my chairman talked about the, uh, the woolly mammoths in the room. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm glad he... Uh, he brought that up. Um, the chairman's immigration bill was negotiated by two members of my party, Senator Langford and Senator McConnell. And I don't, I don't speak for either one. They're both good men. <laughs> the chairman said that the Republicans who negotiated his bill trusted you and wanted you there. And and I'm not doubting his word. It gives me no joy to say this. You but suck. most Republicans don't trust you. Yep. And a vast majority of the American people don't trust you. That's why you've been impeached. Now, my Democratic colleagues are going to try to sweep your impeachment under the rug and violate 200 years of Senate precedent in doing it. I I don't think that they will be able to sweep the issue, maybe your impeachment, but not the issue, under a rug as big as the United States of America. Again, it gives me no joy in saying this. I think m- well more than a majority of the American people think that uh, as a result of your behavior and President Biden's behavior, our southern border is an open, bleeding wound. With no gauze. I think they believe that uh, Need a band-aid. our southern border is chaotic. I think a vast majority of the American people believe that a lot of it is political. I think a vast majority of the American people believe that it is chaotic by design. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. That, uh, and that, that all of this is atten- intentional. And this is a wound that cannot be healed by Neosporin. My colleagues say <laughs> stitches and sutures are what is required. Again, I don't, I don't hate you, Mr. Mayorkas. I just think you stink at what you are paid to do. So this is great. Um, I, that's what happens right there. And that was a grown adult undressing another adult before Congress. And I absolutely love it. Um, again, you know, I'm being a little bit partisan here because I love Kennedy and I can't stand my orcas. That was a song, a dance. That was a production. But that was absolutely accurate because this is a guy. And I said this a couple of weeks ago, Mary. Sadly, 
tragically, and this is where I think Republicans should be doing what Democrats do, and that's impeaching people that fail to do their jobs. They, they started this trend in the last administration, but also we should be doing, Republicans, the GOP, exactly what Democrats did with George Floyd's death. Sadly, that's where we are, but the Lake and Riley death, that needs to be the Republicans, George Floyd, of getting basically the border under control that's the inflection point right where enough is enough and it's it's probably too little too late but you know my orcus is a total stooge he's a puppet but he's the face he's the front man he's the fall guy right and he should it, be he is and is it me or is he like a creepy looking dude he is a bizarre guy right like I've, I've also tried to figure out why he's wearing like a casio watch like a 12 year old when you're oh, in, in a suit, that. yeah, like usually you wear a dressier watch with a suit. He's wearing like one of those like the rubber bands watches. It's like, come on, man, up up, up your watch game a little bit. Uh, but he is he's a bizarre guy, and he never can answer a question. How it's for now? Kennedy didn't ask a question there. In all fairness, right. uh, he gave him a speech, but he just never. You heard in the big take this morning, simple yes or no question. He comes in with scripted responses, right. and he gets he gets undressed every time he's there. Well, first of all, he's he, I. Kennedy's right. I don't trust him. He's the type of guy with his look that if the elevator stops and he's the only guy in there and I got to ride like 16 floors and I'll be like, I'll get the next one. Yeah. <laughs> right. He's, he just has that mm, look. He he does his job well. His job is to do exactly what's happened at the southern border and and go in front of Congress and lie under oath because the Democrats calculate accurately that republicans will never do to them what they have done to republicans mm -hmm. and and per, and go after them for perjuring themselves yep right that's not going to happen for whatever reason republicans do not go after witnesses who are democrats who perjure themselves in the name of the administration mm -hmm. so they mayorkas has nothing to lose and everything to gain by doing this yep. he's doing joe biden's bidding we all know that mm-hmm and if we had a mainstream media that was honest and actually cared about doing their job, they would be grilling this administration five ways to Sunday right. today based on the story that I gave you in the big take this morning from Axios about how Biden's going to issue executive actions and executive orders before the end of April. We were told he wasn't going to do that. He can't do that. He needs Congress. Blame Trump. He, he undid 94 Trump uh, orders in yep. his first 100 days. The problem with that is, especially regarding the border, they're be they put themselves once again between a rock and a hard place. This administration has put themselves in several no-win situations, right? And the media bails them out, and with the help of Republicans who don't go after them mm -hmm. and let them get away with it. Kind of like the Alabama-Ohio thing. Uh -huh. Keep them off the ballot. They made, they're made. they the ones who put themselves in that position. So when it comes to um, putting that EO and he's like, well, he may take executive action, after telling us he didn't, we all know we've been told for three years he doesn't have the power, mm -hmm. right? So now he has the power. We're all going to see that. They know we're all going to see that. Mm -hmm. And I think it's to the point now where even Democrats are upset about the border. And you're going to start to see some of them report that, oh, he, he did this executive order. Wait a minute. I thought he said he didn't have, after for three years of saying he yeah. didn't have the power, he's going to say it's the power. They don't care about the hypocrisy of it if they think it'll win them votes. I don't think it wins them votes. That's a good point. And also, this will be a distraction from the economy because if at the end of april joe addresses the border he tightens things up it'll be pr spin of look we're clearing things up at the border and we'll, we'll be focused on that that'll take our attention away from some people that have the attention span of a fruit fly and they won't look at the economy they'll start forgetting about inflation or gas prices i always look at gas prices at three times of the year what's gas prices on memorial day the fourth of july and labor day and if those numbers keep going up to four dollars a gallon, then this is going to be a deflection of, hey, look at what we're doing at the border to take your mind off the economy. Super hard to, to do that, though. It's easy to do it with immigration and take people's concentration off immigration because not everyone has a, um, a camp on their kids playground across the street right mm -hmm. that's only in the inner cities where they did that they did that to to the black and latino neighborhoods you know their base their voter base that's what they did there it is incredibly difficult to take people's um concentration or their view off of the economy 
because they see it every day. Yeah. It's an every day, it's something they experience every day, which is why the whole Bidenomics thing didn't work, no. which is why the whole spin on the economy, and no, it's really good, the economy is getting better, is not working with people because they're like, really? Yeah. Maybe your economy is getting better, but but the prices keep up going up in my grocery store, and you did a whole thing on the on the prices earlier, you know, eggs up almost 50%. <laughs> they can sit, you can sit there and tell me the economy is good, and there are a lot of people who will buy whatever, whatever swill you're selling, but that... Wait a minute. That's where that's where they draw the line. So that's a very hard thing to spin. It's a good point. And one thing uh, that should scare the, the ever loving s out of everybody who's who's listening right now. Uh, this is cut sixteen. Phil officials uh, seized one point one million fentanyl pills in four days at the border crossing in Arizona. Oh boy. Uh, this is a report from Fox News yesterday. This is cut. 16 field go. Take a look at these photos out of Arizona. CBP at the port of entry in Nogales, Arizona, reporting they seized 1.1 million fentanyl pills in four days, hidden in different smuggling incidents, including hidden in a microwave, a deflated bounce house, and the doors and firewall of a vehicle. Then take a look at these photos. Border Patrol reporting this last weekend alone, their agent seized 270 pounds of hard narcotics, including coke, meth and fentanyl street value six million dollars all those drugs seized between ports of entry by border patrol agents and then lastly those wild photos you mentioned off the top dana take a look at this also nogales arizona cbp stopping these guns from going into mexico 10 different wow. smuggling events where people were trying to smuggle weapons into mexico for the cartels uh 13 different ak style rifles seized four pistols seized fifty thousand dollars in cash and yes you can see in the photo some guy strapped an ak style rifle to his body <laughs> and thought he could get past cbp and bring that into mexico for the drug cartel so that's probably enough fentanyl to kill every person in the united states of america oh, uh, several times over several times over so that's always encouraging i actually think arizona is going to tell us the way the election goes this fall think about it arizona with the 1864 thing we talked about with abortion yep. arizona border state yep. you saw all the evidence there if we're saying it's immigration versus abortion, Arizona yep. might be uh, the uh, the experimental uh, test dummy. So you, to speak. you are a hundred percent right. That is that will be the test. Will will people will more people come out because of the immigration issue, or will more people come out because of the abortion issue? That that's what twenty twenty four is going to come down to. Wow. Well, it depends on how many white women, white liberal women, decide to vote. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm telling you, they're yeah. the problem. Oh. I echo that sentiment. Uh, speaking of white liberal women, oh no, Hillary uh -oh. Clinton. <laughs> Do you know that she is now a Broadway director? You could have stopped that. Well, I don't want to say it. Uh, no, I did not know that. Broadway's gone to hell anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, she's uh, producing a video or a excuse me, a video. She's producing a Broadway play musical called Suffs. Suffs. Oh, uh, she's. It's a musical about the women's s suffrage movement. Okay. When does her other uh, musical come out? I think it's called uh, Who Do I Hate More, Trump or My Husband? <laughs> uh, this will. This is right now off Broadway, but it will transfer to Broadway in the spring, opening at the Music Box Theater on April 18th. Mm. So if you want to get your tickets for this. Yeah. What would you rather do, Pints and Politics or see Hillary Clinton's uh, Broadway play? Poll question here. Um, I hate all musicals and I hate all plays. So I, I, I really, oh really? god, oh just the the just. I gotta tell you, you know, oh. for 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 the the types of events that I have to suck up and yeah. deal with as a a married man with two daughters, I I don't dread musicals or plays or any type of Broadway. When I get uh, sucked into that stuff, I can manage. Well, it. all right, let me let me just let me say this. I saw Misery on Broadway with um, Lori Metcalf and Bruce Willis. I think it was okay. Very good. Yeah. All right. Other than that, I don't want to see a bunch of people singing. Yeah, as long as they offer cocktails, I get through anything. Wow. Uh, so, now, Greg, see, now we're we're done again. Uh, we're done? <laughs> I'm sorry. You guys are flip-flopping <laughs> yeah, back and forth like John Kerry. Yeah. Unbelievable. We can, it's a very tenuous relationship yeah. at this point. <laughs> we can make up for it on Monday. <laughs> um, this, is a, uh, this is a clip from Hillary Clinton's Broadway musical, Suffs. Just in case you really want to see it or hear it. Suffs. Is this short for insufferable? Oh, that's good. Yes. Clip 14, go. Perfect. Is that AOC? Yeah. We 
We demand to be heard. We demand to be known. We demand. We demand. We demand. We demand. We demand. I can't believe AOC's over in the far right corner performing there. It did. It did look like her. Did it not? I think that is her. It's not her. No, I don't. Are you it's sure? Hundred percent sure. That's not her. Come on. Yeah, she's I mean, she doesn't make a lot. She says she doesn't make a lot of money, so True. she could have you know a side hustle. Right. So. Yeah. And I think a lot of people have no problem with AOC being seen. We just don't want to hear from her. That's all. Yeah. I love I love your interpretation of Suff being insufferable yes. because being lectured and de by de by Democrats and liberals is insufferable enough, but having them sing it to me yeah. could be a whole new level of insufferable. And I demand, I demand that I demand, this could I actually be worse than Cats. Are we sure that was not Alexandria Ocasio Cortez? Yes, yeah, yes. Can, I free, can we freeze frame that? No, film? don't. I don't, think uh, Nick, you Phil, should pay. No. Uh, Nick should pay to go see I this and then get God, back. I thought us. that was AOC. It is not. Why would she be in the musical? It's it's in New York. But it's she's in DC. Oh uh, well, yeah, some days she is. She never goes back to her district. What are you kidding me? She lives in the Navy Yard in a brand new high rise. She ain't going back. Speaking of uh, musicals and productions, you should have been here yesterday when we played the uh, the yeah. Pennsylvania liberal women video clip. Uh, they were dancing and having like a, a food and drinking session about voting against the Orange Man. Remember we played that clip yesterday? I saw I saw that um, last week, I think. I yeah. saw it somewhere along the line. The chick in the orange in the yeah. middle of it yes. dressed like the orange. Yeah, yes. And all I could think of is, <laughs> oh, this liberals, when they're young, they never change. They And then they just look like aging hippies when they get That's older, true. right? That's absolutely right? true. They all, the, the women, they never take care of their hair anymore. They all like comb their hair with a balloon. You know, they all look yeah. like Bernie Sanders. The <laughs> hair is out in all different directions. They're all wearing socks with, with, with Burke. And stocks oh. and their clothes are all big and flowy because they're all fat under yes. there. Ugh. As, as somebody in high school that did own a pair of Birkenstocks once, Ugh. total violation to be wearing so socks with the sandals. You total idiot. violation. You own Birkenstocks? I had a pair in, in high school. They were like Ugh. a, I guess they were like a popular thing for. For yeah. who? For like. For you? Uh, high school kids, I were guess. They? Yeah. Okay. Greg, yeah. Nick thought it made him cool. Leave him alone. I was in, at an impressionable point in my life. Yes, he was do desperately trying to fit in. No socks, though. It's just, you know. Nick was a jock in high school. He was, he was way cooler than I was. That's what he tells us. Does any, Do any of us really know? No, there's no confirmation. I'm like Joe Biden. I played at Delaware. There's no tape of it. There's no tape. Of it. <laughs> uh, what will the undecideds do? <laughs> MSNBC... Uh, had uh, polling that had a bunch of undecided voters, and yep. the, they were talking about the uh, the view of voters in key swing states, and uh, they were not very favorable to to uh, to, to Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. uh, this is cut eleven. Phil, go. I want to show two more. Um, the undecided voters were also asked how they think President Biden is doing on the economy. Take a listen. I think he's been absolutely disastrous for the economy. Mm -hmm. I agree. Six, raise your hand if you think President Trump's policies on the economy would be better for your family personally. Uh, raise your hand. All right, so that is eight out of everybody. nine. President Biden uh, argues no, that his everybody. economic oh, eight out of eight. I'm sorry. very good. He said President Trump's was not as good. Um, <laughs> what, what, what are you keying off of, uh, Sean, since you had the best smile I mean, in Virginia, the second best smile? What are you keying off of to say President Trump's economic policies would be better for you. I mean, the, my past performance of my of my 401k. I know it's it was PA 2020 yep. and everything kind of flipped around. But I'm from PA. You can't, you can't blame everything on 2020 for forever. We have areas here in Pennsylvania where it's just at a standstill right now. Like, things are supposed to be being built and the interest rates are just way too high for people to, to, to you know, invest and, and start moving moving around. And Virginia, just staying with you, because because Pennsylvania is near and dear to Joe Biden's heart. Are there Biden policies that you would blame for the problem? And if so, what are they? The interest rate is so high right now, and I know they're trying to um, cut the inflation down. But like, if nobody is building, no no businesses are really coming to Pennsylvania right now to keep us moving forward. Even if you're trying to um, buy a house, because I'm trying to become a first time home buyer, the prices are so high right now. It's just hard. She's from Is there Michigan. Anything Joe Biden could do or say between now and, and, and the time you vote that would make you feel differently about 
feeling that his policies would not be as good for your family on the economy? Or have you, have you pretty much decided that Trump's policies would be better for the and, economy? I mean, I feel like he doesn't even take accountability for what's at all with what's going on in the economy. Not even accountability, like he's in denial that it's happening. The point is Biden needs to hear the people because when he's talking about the economy doing stellar, he's talking about the stock market. He's not looking at homelessness or joblessness. He's not at AG's point and thinking about how much it costs to go to the grocery store. And he's gaslighting literally everyone in the process. Okay. And, and Omar, you voted for Joe Biden last time, right? Yeah, yeah. Some there you go. All right, uh, if Phil, if you could just go back and pull up and freeze frame it with the box with everybody in those pictures. I want to give a, a little breakdown for the audience that didn't see it. So you have five females, you have three males. They talked about Pennsylvania and Michigan. And you have younger females, older females. Uh, you have an African-American female, uh, I believe a Muslim female, and you have three males. Uh, and so you got a good a good eclectic variety of voters in these swing states. And I, I thought the one uh, guy in the middle made a good point uh, about, you know, the pandemic. You can't blame everything on 2020 anymore, right? Like when Joe took over and took office in January of 2021, um, if you want to talk about the struggles with COVID and stuff on the economy, okay, but like, you know, we're three years past that. So that 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 excuse has long been out the window. But I, thought, I think that's a very good breakdown right there. That's, that's nice work out of MSNBC. Not my style to cra- uh, praise them, but... Uh, it's a good breakdown there. Yeah, I saw this uh, when it was on. I believe it was on last night, and I just, for whatever reason, the, the TV was on MSNBC, and and I saw this, and I thought, ooh, MSNBC stumbling into journalism. Look at that. Notice he did not ask them, though. He said, you voted for, for Biden last time. He, did, he didn't say, are you voting yeah, for Biden this time? It's a very mm-hmm. good point. It's a very good point. I would also like to know, see, that's where I'm in the spot if I'm running that operation uh, in that you know setting right there and doing that little survey, so to speak. I would ask the abortion question. I mean, you got five females there out of eight people total. I mean, I would ask them, is abortion ahead of the economy to, and the border? To be fair, maybe they did. Okay. We only took 90 seconds of that, so right. maybe they did. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but the economy... By the way, can I just say something, too? Who, like, who... I mean, we've we've done this dance in 2020. Who's who's undecided? Thank you. It's yeah. It's. I mean, I, I the only question, it, the only I I don't think there are hardly any undecided. No. It's just a matter of whether there are some moderate Democrats that voted Biden that look at the bottom line and are willing to jump ship. And I think there are some never Trumpers who just hate him so much, who voted for him in 2020, uh, 2016, and I I know some of them, and they will not vote for him. They just hate him. There's just this visceral, I hate him thing. Yes, I've said that for months on this show. Yep. And it, it makes zero sense to me whatsoever, yes. but I, I I just can't with people like that. I'm, I'm, that's, well, that's, and, mm. and, and, and so you're a never Trumper, so you're willing to cut off your nose despite your face. Exactly. That's exactly. what I like, Yes, I process. will. I don't care. I, 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 yeah. Or they're like, well, I'm fine. I'm, I'm I'm retired and I, I've got my 401k. I'm living off this and I got my social security and I get cost of living increases if inflation goes up with my social security. I'm like, well, I'm glad you got yours, mm-hmm. you know, to hell with the rest of us. Um, but I think those people, I don't know if they'll vote for Biden, but I think they'll sit it out. Okay. I, I agree. Yes. Ding, 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 ding. I agree with you 100%. I think all the undecideds are are just people who are just not going to vote for either Trump yeah. or Biden. Mm-hmm. Um, so now will they vote for an RFK Jr.? I, I don't know. Right. right. Um, when they complain, though, down the road, yep. um, I, I have a family member who does this and doesn't, I don't vote, you know, because it's, it's weird mixed values, um, which I I just can't. And and I he'll complain about this or that. I'm like, did you vote? No. Then, then be quiet. Right. If you don't have the courage of your convictions to vote one way or the other, don't complain. Haven't we learned over the last four years that elections have consequences, right? Like, I mean, we see it all the time in these big blue cities. Oh, I can't believe the crap. Well, <laughs> you keep voting D, <laughs> you know, you haven't had a Republican mayor since 1952. Well, yeah, that's on you. Speaking of uh, speaking of crime, we talk all the time on the show about how uh, criminals are just getting younger and younger and younger. Yeah, um, mm. I think the uh, that uh, that awful incident that happened here in Philadelphia uh, with the shootings at at the Ramadan service. Yep. Uh, I think what did you say they went from the age the 15 ages, to 21. Yeah, 15. 
Like mm-hmm. 15. It's just a, Freshman in high school. I'm going to go younger than that. Okay. This is a group of 13-year-olds that mm-hmm. carjacked a car at 12 a.m. on Sunday, then took turns joyriding through, throughout Raleigh, North Carolina. I can't even imagine trying to drive a vehicle at 13 legally. They were vaping, drinking while driving, driving, 45, or driving 80 in a 45-mile-an-hour zone. Uh, luckily, there was one of those dash cams, so you can actually see these kids in the car. Wow. Remember, 13 years old, and they're vaping, they're drinking, and they're driving. They're on the track to success. Oh, yeah, yeah. These are our best and our brightest. Yeah. You know Future what I mean? president of the yes, United States. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. The, and, when, and when the news story comes out, their parents were like, they were valedictorians. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes. We'll have, we'll have their baby pictures put up there and say, see? My kids are cute. They don't. They would never do anything like this. Oh God! Uh, this is cut fifteen. Phil, go. Installed inside her husband's work vehicle. Take a look at what they saw. You see five kids inside the car taking a joyride in the Raleigh area. Yeah. Video shows they're vaping, drinking, and swerving in and out of lanes in the early morning hours. This is a problem, and they are getting younger and younger. The speed limit shows forty-five miles per hour. But the child wearing the black mask is driving more than 80 miles per hour. <gasps> then another juvenile takes a turn behind the wheel. They, they were no younger than 13. Like, it looks like one of them is sitting on top of something in order to reach the steering wheel. As an educator for eight years, Heath knows firsthand how dangerous this is. One of her students was killed after stealing a car and joyriding through the streets of Memphis. There you go. I mean, imagine that you got to put like a booster seat in so you can even see, which makes me wonder how your feet can even reach the brake or the gas pedal. Yep. Uh, but at least the kid was wearing a mask. You know, he was trying to stop the spread and flatten the curve. No, I think it was just a ma- it was just a mask. Cause they, I, I mean, they I, were throwing up they were throwing up um, hand signs that looked like gang symbols. Yep. But, uh, you know, I could be wrong about that, but that's what it looked like to me. Yeah, I, I, I just don't understand how do their parents not know where they are. I gotta tell you exactly thirteen. I, I mean, come on. I would. How do you not my, know where they mind. are? Yeah, if, if I had boys and they did that and they came home, all it would be over for them. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. I love the fact that I have girls, but yeah. if I had boys, oh my what's, goodness. What's interesting to me? Not interesting, but what I think is being overlooked in this is that the, the, these cars weren't just stolen; they were carjacked. Yes. Which means. I assume that they somebody was driving in them and they went up to them with a gun or whatever and well, yeah you know what I mean and it, it's probably not their first rodeo either oh, they, you know, probably, yeah. they have probably been in groups of people where they've seen it done before and learned it and then did it themselves the reason the gangs have the kids this young do yep. it is because they know they won't get charged as adults. Yep. So they're going to get a slap on the wrist and yep. they're going to they're going to be let go mm-hmm. to their parents who have are paying zero attention to what their kids are doing. Zero. Is it is it time to stop protecting the identities of minors like this? Stop uh, blacking out their face with the little fuzzy shadow or the little blur. Yeah. Stop protecting no their names. Yeah. I know that's what they do, and that's standard operating procedure with the the, the, the courts and also the media. Mm-hmm. But you know what? It's just like I think it's time to start getting tougher on these little punks. I agree. Scare the ever loving you know what out of them. Absolutely. I have I have no problem with that whatsoever. My father always used to say to us when we were kids. If you're going to engage in adult behavior, then I will allow adult consequences to happen. I ain't bailing you out. Yep. And Good that's point. it. But let's go to the crumblies, which just happened not to derail Greg's cut sheet here, but very quickly. Yep. Um, they, they, they're going to do jail time because their son killed those kids in, in school, yep. right? Because there mm-hmm. were warning signs and they bought him a gun four days before it happened, despite knowing that he was having problems. He went to them complaining that he was hearing voices and they totally ignored him. He went to his dad, then he went to his mom. They ignored him and laughed at him. You know, they were called into the day that they were called into school saying, hey, your kid's showing pictures of, of people dying and guns and everything else. They chose not to take him home that day. So how do you feel about that? Because I know they've served 858 days already, and they right. got sentenced to 10 to 15. Are you you're on board with that? With time served. I, I'm not... Well, that's a long story. I don't want to take this conversation totally off the rails, because I have feelings about all this, the sentences all the way around. Okay. But I don't, I don't necessarily want to take this off the rails into that direction. Okay. Uh, NYPD, the NYPD commissioner... 
Uh, we talked about this yesterday, Nick. I think this was your big take yesterday, that crime rate is perception versus reality. Yeah, the subways are very safe. Exactly. That's basically <laughs> what that's basically what they're trying to tell you. This is uh, this was from the NBC uh, Nightly News with Lester Holt. Uh, I think it was last night or the night before. This is cut one, Phil Go. We're back now with our NBC News exclusive. As recent videos of unprovoked attacks fuel safety concerns in New York City, the city's top cop sat down with Tom Yamas to talk about what's driving the violence and shaping the public's perception. It's the type of crime and video that gets the NYPD commissioner angry. The brutality of a 68-year-old Queens woman tossed from the top steps of her church just to be robbed. The woman now in stable condition, and this video going viral. Another example of violent incidents in New York City at a time when the NYPD says overall crime is trending down. Yes, we are heading in the right direction for crime. But to someone's reality, someone who's been a victim of a crime, it tells a different story. And that's something that we're struggling with right now, perception versus reality. New York's top cop, Commissioner Edward Caban, is less than a year into the job, taking charge as the city faced a crime wave, migrants overwhelming shelters, and a transit system where riders didn't feel safe. I think a lot of the country was stunned when the governor sent a thousand National Guard troops into your subway system. What was that moment like? Well, you know, when you talk to people riding our subway systems, they just want to feel safe. And we want to thank the governor for bringing resources into New York City Police Department. We'll take that. Do you think it was necessary? We'll take the help any day of the week. <laughs> mm. well, let's, Didn't let's answer that question. Exactly. Yeah. Perception versus reality. You want to talk reality, um, NYPD? Let's talk reality, okay? And let's talk about the reality that we have hamstrung police officers and uh, inhibited their ability to do their job. We've got a bunch of prosecutors that don't want to prosecute crimes. Alvin Bragg, guys like that. All they want to do is mit look for mitigating factors and downgrade, if not toss cases completely. And mm -hmm. that the reality is, no, we do have this society where criminals feel empowered and emboldened. Say what you want about criminals. Some of them are not stupid, and they know the lay of the land right now where the criminal has never been given more ability to get right back out on the streets. And of course, crime rate is going down because if you don't report a crime or you drop the charges, yes. then the crime didn't happen. Yes. So they're cooking the books. But you forget it. I used to ride the New York City subway all the time, day, night. I was in Times Square. I walked. It was fine. And I knew where I could go and where I couldn't go. And I, and I never had a fear. I will not even go into Manhattan now. Unless yeah. I have to, I will not go. And then I have to like plan the whole thing. How am I going to get from A to B? Because I can't walk. I can't do this. I can't. It's 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 a it's very dangerous. And they're just gaslighting. To use that yep. guy's word on the other video. You're yep. exactly right. And uh, for those that missed the show yesterday, read the Washington Examiner column about how the FBI has been providing bad data uh, yep. to all of these outlets, and you'll see that the crime is in fact not going down. New York City. Uh, what are they, 2006 levels again, so that's uh, 18 years ago. All right, that'll do it for round one of the cut sheet round due coming up, uh, or part due coming up in just about an hour. We'll come back, wrap up the 8 o'clock hour, top of the hour. Dan Zakshevsky from OutKick will join us. He is the one that put Dawn Staley on the griddle last Saturday about biological men competing against biological females in college athletics. That's coming up at 9 o'clock, and we're back after this on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Nick stick, Nick, stick with me here for a second. Sure. I'm looking at the Masters. This is FanDuel, FanDuel Sportsbook. Uh, who who you got? Scotty, uh, Scotty Scheffler at plus 400, Rory McIlroy plus 1,000, John Rahm plus 1,100, Xander Shoffley plus 1,400, Brooks Plus eighteen hundred. Brooks, eighteen to one. Eighteen to one. Major Brooks. I like yes, it. I like it. He only shows up for majors. He's got five in the last six years. So there, you, there you have it. Fanduel Sportsbook. Uh, you heard it from Nick Kale. Brooks Kapka. He likes Brooks. Eight, plus eighteen hundred. The sports calendar is loaded at Fanduel in partnership with Valley Forge Casino. Is making it even more exciting to to get in on the action right now. New customers can get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks you can use to bet the tournament and the Masters, that is. The MLB, NBA, NHL, and so much more. All you have to do is go to FanDuel.com slash Greg, FanDuel.com slash Greg, and make your first 
bet a big win. Fandor Sportsbook is the official partner of 1210 WPHT and is America's number one sportsbook. 21 and over, President BA. First online, real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued is now withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fandor.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. This is the time of year to enjoy life. Dawn Stensland here. Stop letting that pain in your joints keep you from doing what you want to do this spring. Just call my friends at QC Kinetics. QC Kinetics is the nation's leader in regenerative medicine. I'm talking lasting joint pain relief. No surgery, no drugs, no downtime. It's a fact. QC Kinetics is transforming lives. Their advanced treatments harness your own body's ability to restore and repair damaged joint tissue. Now, this life life-changing treatment is available for you so you can walk run climb stairs play golf move again pain-free no pain pills no risky surgery it's an all-natural solution qc kinetics has tens of thousands of satisfied patients who've reclaimed their mobility take action now do this live your best life this spring and summer great use of your tax refund check by the way call qc kinetics for a free consultation 215-999-3000 215-999-3000 tell Dawn say you. At California Psychics, we know that nagging doubts like, how much will a psychic cost? And how will I find the right one? Can stop you from getting the guidance you need. That's why we offer the best psychics at the best value. California Psychics have a wide range of psychics available 24 seven. So you can find the one that meets your needs and your budget. If you can't decide, our dedicated customer service team are always available to guide you. Right now, new customers receive 20 minutes for just $20. And what do you know? Most of our customers get everything they need from a reading within that time. Our psychics may surprise you with their ability to offer unique insight on your life situation. In fact, we guarantee if your reading isn't life-changing, it's free. So there's never been a better time to take the next step. Visit CaliforniaPsychics.com and experience the joy of certainty. California Psychics. And paid for by AG Marketing Group. Attention timeshare owners. If you need to get rid of your timeshare for any reason, please listen to the following message. Getting out of a timeshare commitment is not easy, and it takes time. But we specialize in helping consumers legally get rid of their expensive timeshares forever. Can't get the vacation dates that work for you? Maybe you felt taken advantage of or forced into the timeshare? Maybe you just can't continue to shoulder those monthly payments any longer. If you need to eliminate your timeshare commitment, then you need to take down this number, 800-866-7061. We will safely and legally get rid of your timeshare payments forever, all with a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Don't continue to let your timeshare be a financial burden to you and your loved ones. Call us now at 800-866-7061. The call is free. The consultation is free. Call 800-866-7061. That's 800-866-7061. Again, 800-866-7061. Are you a victim of the timeshare trap and think there's no way out? I'm Chuck McDowell, founder of Wesley Financial Group, the original timeshare cancellation expert. And I'm here to tell you that there is a way out. All you need to do is give my office a call. I will send you a timeshare exit information kit absolutely free explaining how the timeshare industry works and your options for cancellation. Call Wesley now for your free info kit, 800-790-1400, 800-790-1400. As an educator, Mr. Nelson's teachings are still being quoted in schools. Education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. Mr. Nelson taught hope. Everyone can rise above their circumstances if they are dedicated and passionate. And giving our best efforts. It's always impossible until it's done. Mr. Nelson Mandela's teachings not only united a nation, they inspire us today. Inspiration. Pass it on from PassItOn.com. Free speech lives here. With Rich Zioli, afternoons 3 to 7, Talk Radio 1210, WPHT. WPHT.
Welcome back in, Kelly Company, 846, as we roll on here on this Thursday morning, the 8 o'clock hour, presented by Wawa, with our new built-to-order wraps, and they are here. It's all the flavor you love, wrapped up and ready to move with your day. Try an Italian or the Bacon Ranch Chicken Steak Wrap today, which I've actually had that one. Very delicious. Gotta have a... Wawa. All right, coming up top of the hour, we'll talk to Dan Zakshevsky of Outkick, who had a very busy weekend last weekend when he asked uh, South Carolina women's basketball coach and former Temple basketball coach Dawn Staley uh, a very interesting question. I think, honestly, probably the most pertinent question that needs to be asked and answered and addressed Honestly, at every level, like to me, this is the number one issue in sports today that I think most people that even aren't sports fans necessarily would have an answer for. And I think nine out of 10 people say that men have no business competing against women. That's why we have a separation of the sports. Uh, And his uh, Q&A and his story that he wrote for OutKick has really taken off a lot of reaction to it. Uh, If you don't know what we are talking about, this was how it sounded last Saturday as South Carolina was getting set to take on Iowa in the national championship. Dan Zakrzewski, OutKick coach, you just talked about, you know, what a massive weekend this is, obviously, for women's basketball, women's sports in general. One of the major issues facing women's sports right now is the debate, discussion topic about the inclusion of transgender athletes, biological males in women's sports. I was wondering if you would tell me your position on that issue. Um, (laughs) Damn, you got deep on me, then. I wasn't expecting that. I, I, I'm on the, I mean, I'm on the, the opinion of, of. Mm, let me be careful here. If you're a woman, you should play. If you consider yourself a woman or, and you want to play sports or, or vice versa, you should be able to play. That's, that's my opinion. You want me to go deeper? Do you, do you think uh, transgender women should be able to participate? That, that, that's your question you want basketball. me to ask. I mean, you want to ask, so I'll, I'll give you that. Yes. Yes. So now the barnstorm of people are going to flood my timeline and be a distraction to me on one of the biggest uh, days of, of, of our game. And I'm okay with that. I really am. Mary, I believe her as much as I believe Alejandra Mayorkas <laughs> saying the border is secure. Uh, I think she had to give what she felt was the politically correct answer, and her timeline probably not flooded, even though I think 90% of Americans think it's wrong. But Dan Zakshevsky's timeline and his DMs and his mentions were flooded with all sorts of hate and bots for asking what I think is the obvious question to ask. And it's an issue that most Americans, whether they're willing to come out and publicly say it or not, agree with. Guys shouldn't be able to compete with females. But this is the world we live in where we cater to the select few and act as if it's gospel. Yeah, it was it was a tough question at a tough time, I think, for her. And the tell was the drink of water. She was like, oh, oh yeah. God, yeah. Oh, right? On. Like that, that was the tell right there. If she could have just slunk down on her chair and slid under yep. that table, yep. I, I think she like a cartoon character. I think she would have, right? Yes, I, I totally agree. Uh, so, so I, I may take a little bit of, of a, a little bit of umbrage with the timing of the question, you know, like, Hey, we just, well, yeah, it's a big deal. Yeah. It's a happy moment. By the way, I'm going to bring this down now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> enjoy your happy moment. Cause it ends right now. So, but, but yeah, I think she copped out. She took the easy, the easy road out. Um, she should have been prepped that that question probably is going to be asked and you probably should pay attention because you're going to get this question and have, have a, an answer ready. Yeah, I, I would, How did you not know? I, I would argue that all of sports media should be posing that question to all mm-hmm. of these coaches. We should get everybody on record, coaches, media members, um, the athletes, the female athletes specifically. And, you know, you sit here and say, is it the right time? Is it the right setting? 
Here's what I would say. We've never had more eyeballs and ears on women's college sports than we did for this women's tournament, in large part because of Caitlin Clark, the girl from Iowa who just was a legendary scorer and maybe the greatest college basketball player we've ever seen. So now... Now that college basketball is over for women, like we're, we're just going to check out. Most people don't consume women's sports to begin with. Cold, hard fact of life. It just It's not a draw. It doesn't sell. It doesn't get the ratings. It's the reason why they don't make the same money as professionals as men do. So I, I think with the spotlight burning as bright as it was on Iowa and South Carolina, in part because of how good South Carolina was as a team, 37-0 and 0 or whatever they were, and with Caitlin Clark, that was actually the the time because it is probably yeah. and it's and there's a lot of people that come out and say, well, this is a political question or this is a social question. No, it's not. It is a fundamental eligibility uh, eligibility question, right? I'll give you that. It's a like, good point. Like we create weight classes and age groups for sports, yeah. and we differentiate and we separate based on gender. So to me, it's it's not trying to troll. It's like it's. It's one of the biggest issues in American society today. I mean, we just talked about it with the, the Penridge story. Yeah, no, that that's a fair point. I'm not accusing him of trolling her. I, I just think the question was going to come. Yeah. And I, if I have any takeaway from the whole thing is, how could you have been so unprepared? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're giving this press conference probably something coaches do, not on a super regular basis, depends on who you are, right? Depends on the coach. But they she's given quite a few of them. Mm-hmm. And she probably had, uh, how she didn't know this was coming is absolutely beyond me. I also wonder how some of the girls on her team took that. Because yeah. if, if you're a, a female on that team and you hear your coach say that, do you then sit there and say to yourself, you know, internally in your own head, so if a biological male comes along that's better than me, am I mm-hmm. at risk of losing my spot on the team or my starting position or my sure. scholarship? Like, you know, if I'm a female... And a female coach doesn't have my back, so to speak, and will kick me to the curb for a better player that happens to uh, be a biological male. Yep. I, I, I kind of lose a little of respect for my coach a little bit, I would think. I would tend to agree with you, but they're not going to say it because it's not politically correct. And they know they have to bow down to the altar of this religion and they have to say the right thing. They must repeat the prayers, you mm-hmm. know, and um, pretend to worship. It's it's this is government religion, basically. Yes, I agree. 855-839-1210 is the number. We'll come back. Dan Zakshesky, who asked that question and had that Q&A with Dawn Staley from OutKick. He will join us. We've got our morning mystery movie clip in about 25 minutes and a lot more it's kale and company final hour coming up next mary walter in for dawn here on talk radio 1210 wpht hi it's dawn want an environmentally friendly approach to lawn care call my lawn care company natural lawn of america natural lawn has been creating green lawns quickly more naturally and with fewer weeds for more than 35 years i've been a customer for years trust me you're gonna love the results their certified specialists tailor their treatments to your lawn's specific needs this reduces reduces the need for chemicals and creates a safer lawn for your entire family, including your pets. Natural Lawn is locally owned and family operated. They have offices in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. They're competitively priced and have a satisfaction guarantee. I trust the leader in organic-based lawn care. You should too. Give them a call. New customers? Take advantage of Natural Lawn's unbeatable offer. Free seeding every year. Schedule Natural Lawn's full-service program and they'll seed your lawn every year free of charge. 800 free seed naturallawn.com 800 free seed and choose my lawn care company natural lawn of america greener grass fewer weeds guaranteed tell them dawn sent you if you want jazz music go to new orleans bagels has to be new york skiing colorado every time and for psychics think california psychics when you want the best, some places are better than others. That's why at CaliforniaPsychics.com, home of free spirits, big dreams, and open minds, we know better than anyone what makes a good psychic. In fact, 98% of the psychics who apply to work with us don't make the grade. We connect you with the very best, so we can guarantee if your reading isn't life-changing, it's free. Download the app or connect with us at CaliforniaPsychics.com. Right now, new customers receive 20 minutes for just $20. So whatever direction you want to take your life, you know where to start. 
Experience the joy of certainty. California Psychics. I'm Philomena, founder of Kin Apparel here in Philly. I love my natural hair, but not what hoodies and hats were doing to it. So I made my own satin line hoodies and created a business in the process. I've got big dreams and Chase for Business in Philly was like, all right, how do we get you there? Get financial guidance from bankers in your community and convenient digital tools all in one place. Learn more at chaseforbusiness.com. Make more of what's yours. Real customers compensated. J.P. Morgan Chase Bank and a member of DIC. This is the time of year to enjoy life. Dawn Stansland here. Stop letting that pain in your joints keep you from doing what you want to do this spring. Just call my friends at QC Kinetics. QC Kinetics is the nation's leader in regenerative medicine. I'm talking lasting joint pain relief. No surgery, no drugs, no downtime. It's a fact. QC Kinetics is transforming lives. Their advanced treatments harness your own body's ability to restore and repair damaged joint tissue. Now, this life-changing treatment is available for you. So you can walk, run, climb stairs, play golf, move again, pain-free. No pain pills, no risky surgery. It's an all-natural solution. QC Kinetics has tens of thousands of satisfied patients who've reclaimed their mobility. Take action now. Do this. Live your best life this spring and summer. Great use of your tax refund check, by the way. Call QC Kinetics for a free consultation. 215 999 3000-215-999-3000. Tell Dawn sent you. There's nothing quite like local. Local is your weekly farmer's market or homemade strawberry ice cream. It's live music on the corner, yoga in the park, and a chance to try something new. That's why AARP is local, right here in our community, offering free events and enriching experiences that can help with finances, family, and fun. Join AARP Philadelphia and Longwood Gardens for a free virtual tour of the garden's history on April 23rd. Register at aarp.org slash local. Pastor Brad Lacey here, First Baptist Church, Conshohocken. Join us Saturdays for the great message and be blessed. 5 a.m. right here on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. WPHT, WPHT, HD, WOGL, HD3, Philadelphia. From the Cherry Hill Volvo Studios, where relationships matter. Always live on the free Odyssey app. Crash Proof Retirement records all financial meetings. All promises made in recorded financial meetings become legally binding between Crash Proof Retirement and the investing client. Crash Proof Retirement provides all of their clients with a certificate of authenticity, further documenting that recording financial meetings brings fiduciary responsibility to the highest level. I'm Jack Gunning from Bluebell, Pennsylvania. I don't know whether anybody can offer you the security that Crash Proof Retirement does. I have this certificate that tells me they're a fiduciary. Everything is recorded and they have your best interest at heart. That certificate is 100% documentation that you know what they're saying is 100% correct. Other companies don't have this guarantee. This certificate means an awful lot for me and it should mean an awful lot for you. Certify your retirement future and register for our next educational event at Springfield Country Club on April 16th. 800-722-9728 or crashproofretirement.com. Hi, Stephanie from Emmons. Are you not loving your bathroom? Is the King's Throne looking a little outdated and run down? Let Emmons Design Specials design a bathroom that you will love and one that Emmons will redo in as little as one day. An affordable, maintenance-free bathroom with little to no inconvenience to you and your family. With finance options available, there's really only one problem. Your bathroom will be so nice, your king may never want to come out. Call Emmons today at 856-885-6677 or visit us on our website at callemmons.com. Download the free Upside app to earn real cash back every time you buy gas. Use promo code EARN for an extra 25 cents per gallon on your first fill-up. That's promo code EARN. My kitchen is the heart of my home. Dawn Stensland here. If your kitchen or bath is outdated, you need Kitchen Magic. They're local, family-owned, and operated since 1979. Schedule your free in-home design consultation today. Kitchen Magic is the full service remodeler I trust to quickly, beautifully and affordably transform your kitchen or bath. Right now they're offering 12 months, no payments, no interest financing and 10% off your remodel. Just visit kitchenmagic.com Tell them Dawn sent you. Calling on Blackwood to follow 1210 WPHT on the free Odyssey app. Download it now.
All right, let's get down to it. Kale and Company, fourth and final hour here on this Thursday morning. Talk Radio 1210, WPHT, Nick Kale, Mary Walter, Greg Stocker with you. Get us on the free Odyssey app and watch us live on YouTube. As we welcome in Dan Zakshevsky, outkick writer and reporter. We just played you the Q&A that he had last weekend with Dawn Staley prior to the Women's National Championship. And Dan's been getting a lot, of, um, a lot of mentions, a lot of notoriety after asking what I thought was a very simple, important question. Dan, good morning, buddy. How you doing? I'm doing really well. And I want to say, you know, I've done a few interviews and that was the cleanest, most perfect pronunciation of my last name that I have heard yet. Well, don't worry. If you stick around long enough, I'll butcher nine other names before I get one right. So, uh, I, you know, honestly, you remind me of the, the last name reminds me of Mike Shashevsky, the coach at the former coach at Duke. So, if for some reason it just flows off the tongue relatively easily, so uh, I appreciate that. I'm curious because you just actually posted a new uh, update to your story, uh, actually their story, uh, and you said the following: After hearing what Dawn Staley said about allowing biological males in women's sports. Several former women's coaches have reached out to you and OutKick to express their disappointment with her comments, and you say, here is their story. I just retweeted it. Uh, what can you tell us about what was said, obviously, off the record between uh, these former coaches and their sentiments? Uh, no, this was totally on the record. All oh, three okay. of them, um, all three of them went on the record. Okay. Uh, Kim Russell, former Oberlin college lacrosse coach, who was ousted from her position um, for saying she she didn't think biological men should compete in women's sports. Uh, Jamie Holmes was a former volleyball coach at the collegiate level, and Barbara Ehart, who's a current representative in the Idaho state government um, and a former women's basketball coach. So yeah, all three. Uh, reached out to us and said, you know, hey, we want to talk about this. You know, it's an important issue. Thank you for raising this issue at this time. But, you know, essentially the the message from all of them was we were disappointed. This was a perfect opportunity for someone who has a ton of power in women's sports to stand up for women and women's sports, and she didn't do it. And so they wanted to, you know, they wanted to talk to us, and, it, you know, I appreciate it. Everybody go read the story at OutKick.com. It's, they, they had a lot of really, really important things to say. I am just shocked that the coach was so unprepared for this. I mean, don't, don't isn't it something that is just so big in sports right now that every school, I'm sure, has has had some kind of meeting, some kind of, of way to game this out, to do that, but were you surprised at how unprepared she was for that question? Uh, that's a good question. Initially, yes, I, I was, because my first thought was, how had how has this never come up before? But then, right. you know, let me tell you what I learned, because I covered, you know, I'm not, I'm obviously not a, a women's college basketball beat reporter, right? Um, I write for OutKick, I cover, you know, national sports, uh, culture, everything. Um, but over the last two weeks, I went to Albany, New York, to cover the Sweet 16 Elite Eight because South Carolina was there, Iowa was there, LSU was there. Um, and then I, I obviously went to Cleveland to, to cover the Final Four. So I covered women's basketball pretty closely for two weeks. And what I learned was, you know, that media isn't much of a media. It's really more just PR. Everyone in those ro- everyone in every room I was, was in, you know, every one of their questions was just so positive and so like fluffy, I guess would be the right word. Like there, mm-hmm. there, there are no hard questions asked of these coaches and players. And so I guess I'm not surprised because Don Staley probably never expected to be asked by that group, anything resembling a question that could be considered difficult. Although I don't think this is a difficult question to be perfectly frank. Yep. Um, so I think just, you know, being constantly being in rooms where nobody's asking you anything difficult, um, yeah, I think it caught her off guard that someone had a, a real question, to be honest. Well, Dan, this is, I mean, it's the most pertinent question in all of female sports right now, and it shouldn't be a tough question because I think nine out of ten Americans agree right. 
men shouldn't be competing in women's sports. But today's media, if we had an honest and open media, they would actually do their job and ask the question that you asked. But we have media members that basically operate as uh, advocates now for for the far left. Yeah. I, w- I want to get your thoughts on what the NAIA just recently did. For those who don't know, it's the lower level of college athletics below the NCAA, and they have now banned biological males from competing competing against biological females. I think that puts the onus, the pressure, and the ball, so to speak, now in the court of the NCAA. Do you agree with that? And then secondly, do you think they will join along with the NAIA or they'll play more political and uh, kind of hope this thing just goes away? Yeah, so uh, first of all, I absolutely agree that the NAIA, A, did the right thing, and B, that you know, it absolutely puts the pressure um, back on the NCAA. The problem for the NCAA right now is they, they have a lot going on. Um, they're being sued by several former athletes, including Riley Gaines, an OutKick contributor, um, essentially for discrimination, for allowing males in, you know, um, biological males in women's sports and taking away medals and forcing them to share locker rooms with males who have fully intact male genitalia. Um, so if the NCAA were to come out and immediately – make a statement like the NAIA, I think it would hurt them legally, right? Because they're being sued for this, and that would essentially be an admission of guilt. Yep. So I'm not sure they can do that right now. I think they have to let the legal process play itself out before they can really make any moves. So ultimately, where do we wind up at the end of this? Because I think you're right about the NCAA. They've got themselves, they backed themselves into a corner because they tried to make everybody happy, and in the process made no one happy. So where does this wind up, do you think? Yeah, I, and I think that's kind of what Dawn Staley ended up too, right? She was trying to think about in that moment where she takes the deep sip and, you know, she makes the <laughs> comment about how it was a deep question. And, you know, it was a good, what, 20 seconds from the time mm-hmm. that I asked the question before she actually started to answer it. Mm-hmm. And I think that was probably what she was thinking, like, okay. What is the answer here that sort of makes the most people happy? And, you know, I, I, I don't think she made the right choice. And, and I'm surprised that she answered it just given the fact that she had an easy out in the situation, which was, hey, good question. Uh, got a national championship game coming up tomorrow. It's not something I'm really thinking about right now, but, you know, we could talk about it at another time. Easy. Um, but she elected to take a stand. Where does this end up? So, you know, I, I've, I've talked with Riley Gaines many times. I've been to her I've, several of her events and you know she's she's not afraid to make the point that you know women's swimming when the whole leah thomas thing happened no one cared about women's college swimming prior to that riley will openly say you know how many media requests i got in my time as a swimmer before leah thomas came on the scene the answer is zero no one ever wanted to talk to us no one cared and i still don't think people really care that much because it affected a sport that isn't super popular Now, that's where the Don Staley thing comes in, because if this happens, I'm sorry, when this happens in college basketball, if there aren't changes made, that's when you're going to see changes have to be made. Now, I had a lot of people come at me and say that this was an irrelevant question because there aren't any transgender women in college basketball. And my response to those people is simple. Okay, so should we wait until it happens to talk about it? Or should we maybe think about getting ahead of the issue before it happens? Yeah. Because that's the side I'm on. Agreed. And, and Dan, I'm curious, and this is a total a guess or a projection or a prediction I'm asking uh, from you. So we had Dawn's answer, and we played that last segment. You also asked the Iowa head coach, and I'm paraphrasing here, but I believe she said something to the effect of it's an important issue, it's an important question, uh, but I want to address it at a later time. This is not the ideal setting. I have no idea if she disagrees and has the diff- a differing opinion than Dawn Staley and I know you're not a a columnist that covers women's college basketball but if you had to guess how many head coaches in women's college basketball regardless of whether the head coach is male or female how many do you think would come out and echo the sentiments of Dawn Staley and how many would echo the sentiment of nine out of ten Americans that say dudes have no business being in female sports All right, so let's break this question down a few ways. First, let me say that I actually just got an email back from the Iowa Athletic Department uh, because I followed up with them and said, hey, Coach Bluter says she wanted she would talk about this at another time. We'd love to talk with her, you know, when she's available, season's over. 
And they said that, you know, she's still busy this week. She's going to be going to the WNBA draft to support Caitlin, which, of course, she should, and that's incredible. Um, but they're, they're going to follow up with her next week. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to stay on that. I want an answer. Okay? And, and you know, a lot of people came at me, too, for that. Like, oh, you asked the black coach, but not the white coach. I'm like, well, I did ask the white coach. She just <laughs> didn't give an answer. And, right. by the way, to those people, I am following up with her. Right. She said she would talk about it at a later date. I'm a reporter. I'm going to continue to follow up on that story. And I would like to get her on the record. Now, is your question, would they echo those sentiments publicly or what do they actually think? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what, well, what would I they, think those yeah. two answers are different. Correct. Yeah. Um, how many people do you think would genuinely, whether we like the answer or not, whether we agree with it or not, how many coaches do you think, or even percentage wise, would give you their honest opinion? <laughs> <laughs> um, very few. I, I would very agree. few. But yeah. I would say that the percentage of women's college basketball coaches who truly believe that it would be fine for a biological male who transitioned to a woman to play women's college basketball is zero, including Don Staley. I would say the, those who truly believe it, the answer is zero. Gotcha. Personally, that's what I think. All right. D- uh, go ahead, Mary. No, no. I, I was just going to ask quickly. I, I was going to ask and, and say. So, what is the what are the odds of the solution to this being an entire third category? I guess of biological males who play as women, a transgender category. So, men, women, and others. I guess, or however they whatever they want to call it. So, you know, what's interesting about that is there really isn't actually a such thing as men's sports. We think there is, but really men's sports is just the top. Any woman who wanted to play men's sports can. She's allowed to do that. The only thing we really do is stop men from competing in women's sports because of the obvious biological disadvantage. But the men's category is generally just the open category. It's just, of course, that's that's why it is the way it is. That's why we don't want biological men competing in women's sports, because the open category is dominated by men. Nothing is stopping a woman from playing in the NFL from playing in the NBA, they're allowed to do that. We just don't want it going the other direction. So do we need a third category? I mean, look, that's for other people to decide. That's not up to me. I don't know. Um, to me, we have an open category for all these sports. So I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. Hmm. But, you know, if they want to create that, that's fine. I'm fine with that. Whatever. Just not allowing biological men in women's sports is where we need to be. Whatever you do from there, that's on you. Right. Dan, final one for me. I know you used to work at ESPN for many years as a producer on the radio side of things. I also was in sports for many years and made the transition a lot like Will Kane, a lot like Clay has going to news and politics. But I'm very, I've always still kept an eye on the way sports media covers stories. And it seems like over the last 10 years or so, maybe even a little longer, that the sports media has kind of gotten into the same position that the mainstream news media has gotten into, where they are now left-wing advocates. Where, where do you think the, the, the general state of journalism is today, whether it's in sports or in news media, where we just have far left or far right, and it seems like it's more slanted than ever before? Yeah, and I'll add to that that I'm not even sure we can define journalism at this point because, again, you know, everyone accused me of having an agenda by asking that question. Now, if that's true, then by your own logic, every question that's ever asked has an agenda, which is true, by the way. If, if, you're, asked, if you're writing a story about, you know, a Patriots game and you ask Bill Belichick, formerly, obviously, mm-hmm. uh, you know, what happened on that third and sixth play because you already have it in your story that the third and sixth play in the third quarter is part of your story and you want to quote from him, like, well, don't you have an agenda to get an answer specifically about that question because mm-hmm. you've already decided that you thought that was an important play in the game? Um, You know, someone tweeted me, and I thought this was interesting, that sort of unbiased journalism is really a myth anyway, because every human being has their own biases. I I think what really happened, though, is that we at least tried to put them aside, or at least give the illusion that we were trying as hard as we could to put our biases aside. But we've reached a place where I don't think that's even, like, journalists don't feel compelled to do that. Right. Um, I saw this turn, in. in you you talked about being in sports, and and so I'll, I'll use sports as an example as well. I saw this in sports turn about 10 years ago. If you remember, like, journalists or people on TV, commentators, they never talked about who their favorite team was because the whole thing was, I cover these sports. I don't have a favorite team. I'm, right. I'm here for the stories. All of a sudden, 
if you remember, like Mike Greenberg, it became this huge. Like he's a Jets fan. And oh, he he's talking, talking about, about the Jets like, every day. Yes, on yes. the right, and he talked about, and then that became a thing. When I was working at ESPN, I'll never forget. There was like a story with the Seahawks, and I was producing a radio show, and someone was like, "Well, you got to call Mina Kimes," and I was like, "Why do we have to call Mina Kimes?" They're like, "Because she's a Seahawks fan," and yeah. I was like, "So, well, don't we not want to have the Seahawks fan perspective? Isn't our job <laughs> to get someone who doesn't care about the Seahawks like that?" Right. Like, no, that we made this turn in sports where it was like, you know, hey, it's great, wear your fandom out loud. Be- mm-hmm. That's not journalism. No. So I saw it in sports, and I think that that's kind of the thing with news media is like your team is the Democrats or the Republicans, and hey, wear your fandom out loud. Yep. Yep. You're exactly right. Good observation. Great stuff, buddy. We really appreciate the time this morning. Hey, thank you. Anytime. You got it. Dan Zakshesky, outkick writer and reporter, covers sports and culture. You know, it's a great point. He talks about being like a fanboy as a media member. Yesterday, we talked about the story about NPR. I mean, the executive editor of NPR, or I forget what his official title is, but he's been there for 25 years, comes out and says the left-leaning bias is so obvious now that I have to come out and write an op-ed about it in the free press. And I think the numbers that we threw out yesterday of the 88 employees that NPR employs, it's either 87 out of 88 or all 88 of them are Democrats. They don't even try to hide the bias anymore, Mary. So somebody sent me that story uh, yesterday, so Tuesday, while we were on the air. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't read it while we were on the air. I tried during the breaks, but if I remember correctly, Tuesday was one of those days. And um, so so I, so I got to read it, and I finally digested the whole thing. And I thought to myself, and I'm seeing it blow up all over X. I'm like, why is this surprising? Right. I'm sorry. How is this news? Did, did we not know this? Mm-hmm. I, I, if, getting a gig at NPR is the sweetest radio gig in the world because it's paid for by taxpayer dollars. You get paid far more than than anyone in private, the rest of the radio world. In D.C., they have chefs. They prepare food for them there. You guys were complaining what? about we can't get a food drop. Yeah, they we do. Can't even get a food drop. By the way, yes. by the way, speaking of, Ed, <laughs> and I don't want to derail Mary's point because she's onto a good one here. Yeah. But when you ask for a food drop, J and J Snacks would like to send over some soft pretzels. See. Ask and you shall yep. receive. That's yep. the way the gods work, Mary. Yep. Oh, all right. Well, good. That's right. you enjoy. That's back, wonderful. Back That's your, very, very kind. By the way, back too. to your NPR rant. It was a good one. Yeah. No. So, so you know, I'm I'm just watching this. I'm like, has no one listened to NPR? I mean, do, ha, yeah. the people who are surprised by this entire thing now, in the interest of full disclosure, when my husband and I are on a long ride. We'll turn on, we'll, you know, we turn up. We love to scan terrestrial radio yeah. to find the NPR station because it really is truly like the Saturday Night Live skit. Yeah, <laughs> and it's so much fun to listen to to them like wax poetic about ferns, and they've got a fern expert in, and right. they're going on. And the reason it's pub, it's government funded by us, is because it's unlistenable. Mm-hmm. It's crap radio. Right. That's what but, that's, that's, bottomless bottomless budget. Budget. that's what that's what annoys me about the whole thing is yes. that we rely on listeners, yes. sponsors. You know, we we are a for profit business. We don't survive without listeners and advertisers who take a chance on us mm-hmm. by advertising mm-hmm. with this radio station. Right. They can do whatever the hell they want to. Yep. They don't there's no commercials there. They rely on tax taxpayers and they rely on donations. Mm-hmm. That is how they are funded. And when I see W W-H-Y-Y in the top 10 in this radio market, it just makes me want to throw something. <laughs> it makes me want to throw something because it's horrible radio mm-hmm. and they don't depend on advertisers. Yep. And it's no. just, it's it, like, they're not even in the, in the same game we are. It's a heck of a blueprint, right? Yes. Yeah. It's a hell of a business right. model. How do we do that? <laughs> How know. can we get involved in that? And Mary, did uh, you say NPR hosts make a lot of money? Is that what you said? I, I well, because, this, so what they do is they go into, they buy college radio stations, right? Yeah, right. So they buy these, they, they go into these college radio stations, and these college radio stations are operate on a shoestring, if you've yep. ever been in a college radio station, but the kids don't get the on-air jobs, uh, right? Okay. They put on, they put on their, their hosts, mm-hmm. and the kids are behind the scenes 
kids doing all the things. So they take that opportunity away from the kids, which also makes me crazy. On the, and the sad thing about it is these kids then think like, wow, radio is this yep. this world with all you make a lot of money yeah. and look at all these perks and all this other stuff. And then they walk into an actual real radio station, a real life that's not funded by the government. And they're yep. like, they suddenly start to rethink their life choices. Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. There you go. You're 100 percent right. I, I, and it's just I I don't even somebody on the YouTube chat is like, oh, you touched a nerve. Yes. This this. This affects me. This affects my bottom line, and oh, I yeah. just I hate to see radio stations that 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 just exist because you know they're like oh we don't we don't have commercials here like those other stations. Yeah, we wouldn't survive without commercials. Okay, mm-hmm. I, I hate to say, it. and right. that's how the real world works. Right, right. And that's yes. why we always tell you to patronize our car, our advertisers and uh, do good by them because without okay, so- them we're gone. Now, the, the numbers I have here are 2008, but um, let's see, one of their, Ira Glass, who I don't even oh, know yeah. if it's still there anymore, $170,000 in 2008. Yeah. Mm. On taxpayers' money yeah. and, and donations. Uh-huh. Tote bags. Mor- Morning Edition host, Renee Mont- Montagna, in yeah. 2008, $405,000. Wow. Wow. Look, did, did you see Nick's head just like pop up? He just popped up and looked like, wait, what? <laughs> That's what Joe Biden makes a year, 400 grand. Yeah. yeah, and 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 the co-host makes three fifty six, and I love that the woman makes more than the man. Look at that. Mm. Um, but their their morning show alone in in um, wages is over seven hundred thousand dollars in two thousand eight. Yeah, and yeah. we're paying for it. Right there, you go. All so right. they, I had to check that they do make good good money. All right, nine twenty two. Let's get to our morning mystery movie clip. And now the morning mystery movie clip on Kalen Company Talk Radio twelve ten WPHT. Anyways, we thought we'd call y'all to see what you got. Yeah, we know you can talk to the press and sign autographs and stuff. We can do more than that. Oh, yeah? Well, we can teach you how to play like the real Team USA. Yeah, what would you know about it? You gotta earn every inch. Tag team back again. Check it directed. Let's begin. Party on, party on. Did we just do this one? I was thinking the same thing. Definitely in this calendar year we have. Think you know what it is? Be call at 12 at 855 839 1210 and you could win this great prize. Uh, it's like a rerun episode of SNL. <laughs> we run out of ideas, so we're just going to throw out a, a rerun. There you go. 855 839 1210. Call or 12 if you can identify that movie. You will get a pair of tickets to see mm. Jeff Lynn's ELO over and out tour. It's coming up on September 21st at the Wells Fargo Center. Tickets on sale. Ticketmaster.com. Call at 12 855 839 1210. See if we get our winner on the other side, followed by what's on the cut sheet part due. It's all still ahead here on Kale and Company. Back after this. Are you still holding on to that winter weight? Time to shed that fat and get ready for the warmer weather of spring with NJ Diet. For over a decade, they've helped thousands of people lose a contractually guaranteed. 20 to 40 plus pounds in only 40 days. That's nearly twice as fast as weight loss injections and without any of those nasty side effects. NJ Diet uses your hair and saliva along with scans to personalize natural solutions and supplements to get you to shed that fat quickly. Then NJ Diet uses your DNA info to help you keep the weight off. You are fully supervised the entire time to make sure you are burning fat and not just losing water. And you even get the doctor's personal email and phone number. Locations in King of Prussia, Cherry Hill, and Newark, Delaware, or available from home with live online consultations. Call 855-5-NJ-DIET. 855-5-NJ-DIET. Or schedule your consult today at njdiet.com. Get slimmer before this summer with njdiet.com. This is Larry Steinitz with Investor Schooling. You may know me from my book, Money Hacks. You may know me from my radio shows. And you may even know me from some of these commercials. But listen, I'm teaching stuff that people need to learn about money. In fact, my favorite topic is money. So go to InvestorSchooling.com and you will learn things about money that you never even knew existed. We will teach you things about real estate, about the stock market, and about how to use your IRAs properly. Go to InvestorSchooling.com and sign up for a complimentary class this Thursday night at 7 o'clock. That's InvestorSchooling.com. 
This is Larry Sinus from Investor Schooling. Are you tired of hearing about the recession that's coming? Are you prepared for it? Well, listen, at InvestorSchooling.com, we're going to teach you ways to prepare for the recession that you didn't even know existed. We're going to teach you strategies on how to use real estate. We're going to teach you strategies how to use the stock market properly. That's right. You can even make money in the stock market when the stock market goes down. Hey, go to InvestorSchooling.com and register for a free class this Thursday night, and you will learn all of these techniques. Go to InvestorSchooling.com right now, RSVP for this Thursday. We'll see you there. Indulge in an extraordinary dining experience at Del Frisco's Double Eagle Steakhouse. For intimate dinner parties to corporate events, the chef-driven cuisine, impeccable wines, and exceptional hospitality give you an experience like no other. Call 215-246-0533. One in five rely on the Catholic Charities Appeal for help. The fact is, nearly one million times per year, our programs provide assistance to people in need. We can't do this vital work without you. Your gift matters. Go to Catholic Charities Appeal org to donate today in these unusual economic times do you wonder what to do with your money if you have questions about retirement planning iras 401ks tax planning or any other type of question then listen to the heart of your money heard every sunday from 9 to 10 a.m here on talk radio 1210 wpht featuring noted author and financial expert joe yakovich the heart of your money will focus on you, your family, and the best ways for you to navigate your financial portfolio. That's every Sunday, 9 to 10 a.m., The Heart of Your Money with Joe Yakovich here on Talk Radio 1210. Joe Yakovich is registered with and securities and investment advisory services are offered through Brokers International Financial Services, LLC, member SIPC. Brokers International Financial Services, LLC, is not an affiliated company. Hey, Philly, Jason Kelsey here. Even though I won't be playing on Sundays anymore, you can still find me at Lincoln Financial Field on Saturday, May 18th for the Eagles Autism Challenge, presented by Lincoln Financial Group. This event raises millions of dollars to support autism research and care and gives you the chance to walk, run, or ride your bike beside your favorite Eagles players. Together, we can transform the lives of individuals affected by autism, Register today at EaglesAutismChallenge.org, and I'll see you there. In business, service is everything. Cintas delivers what you need to better serve your customers. Whether it's freshly laundered work apparel for almost any job imaginable, tested and inspected fire protection systems, first aid and safety supplies, on-site AED training, or mops and restroom products, stocked and ready when you need them. Better work days happen together. So visit Cintas.com. And get ready for the work day. I'm a waitress, so I know the difference between regular shoes and Skechers slip resistant work shoes. Skechers slip resistant work shoes make my job go like this. Here's your Pasta Primavera. Thanks. While regular shoes make my job go like this. Here's your Pasta Prima. Whoa, whoa! And that difference is why I wear Skechers slip resistant work shoes to keep me safe on my feet. Plus, they're easy to clean and have Skechers exclusive air cooled memory foam for comfort throughout my shift. Get America's number one selling work shoe at Skechers.com, a Skechers store near you, or wherever work shoes are sold. Lexus of Cherry Hill, a six time JD Power dealer of excellence for customer service. Why would you buy your Lexus from anyone else? The 2024 Lexus models are here and moving fast, and the 2024 Lexus GX will be arriving soon. Tony LaBelle and his team at Lexus of Cherry Hill are your source for the Lexus of your dreams. Over 300 new and pre-owned vehicles are in stock and ready to roll. Face it, you deserve this Lexus and you deserve award-winning customer service. Start your journey at LexusofCherryHill.com. Hey everyone, this is Brett Boone. Would you know it? I've got a podcast going strong in our fourth year. Tune in as I sit down with my friends, some of the biggest names in sports, media, entertainment, for a lot of fun and in-depth conversations. As you know, baseball has been my life. It's been in the family for a long time, but it's a lot more than that here. It's sort of like taking a ride in a golf cart around a beautiful track. Join me every week for multiple episodes on the Brett Boone Podcast, available on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcast. My kitchen is the heart of my home. Dawn Stensland here. If your kitchen or bath is outdated, you need Kitchen Magic. Yeah, they're local in Pennsylvania. They have an experienced team which has transformed more than 60,000 spaces. A dedicated design consultant works with you on your choices for refacing custom cabinets backsplash counters and tub shower conversion right
Right now, they're offering 12 months, no payments, no interest financing, and 10% off your remodel. Visit KitchenMagic.com. Tell them Dawn sent you. Be sure to follow Talk Radio 1210 WPHT on the free Odyssey app. Download it now. Kale and company, 9.30, Thursday morning. Mary Walter in for Dawn as we head until 10 o'clock. Dawn show, top of the hour. Kathy Burnett in for Dawn. Who won Twitter today? Today in music history. Cut sheet part due. It's all still on the way. 9 o'clock hour brought to you by the Piazza Auto Group. Get 0% financing for 60 months on a two th- or a $2,000 customer bonus on the new 2024 Volkswagen Tiguan. Only during the 75th anniversary sales event. Visit Piazza Volkswagen of Ardmore and Langhorn or PiazzaVW.com today. All right. Uh, looks like we have our winner. I was thinking we might not get the winner, but we do have it. Linda is in Telford, and she's got the correct movie this morning. Linda, what clip did we just play for you a few minutes ago? Mighty Ducks 2, my yes. boy's favorite movies. Yes, D2 <laughs> is correct. Congratulations. You've got another pair of those tickets to see Jeff Lynn coming up in September. Great. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you, Linda. Appreciate you listening and playing. Yeah, I'm almost certain we played, not only did we play a Mighty Ducks 2 clip earlier in 2024, I think we played the same exact clip, to be completely honest. (laughs) I agree with you. You, you, you're a hundred percent right. We didn't even, we didn't even stretch out for clips. No, we had the same clip. No, and I was thinking maybe there was like some catch yeah. to this. Maybe it came out, it came out uh, thirty-two years ago today or something. Magic Man writes the movie of the day used to be a movie that was referenced from the previous day. You people have just bastardized it, I, I, dude. I, 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 I came up with this idea. Yeah. How can I bastardize my own, my own thought, my own? What are you talking about? <laughs> I just hate. I hate people. I I'm gonna hate, need to have a meeting with myself. I hate people. <laughs> oh, you've you've bastardized this. I created it. <laughs> yeah, because no other radio station's done this. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> it's the same. Yes. It's a dopey morning show bit. And folks, you bastardized it. Shut dude, up. No. Cr- Stop listening. <laughs> Stop oh listening. My God. I don't need you. Our ratings are just fine without you. Go away. Thank you. Or. Anthony, you are fire. <laughs> you could do that. Sorry, I needed a. I just needed one one outburst while Mary was here. Do you feel better now that you purged? Do you have like the verbal diarrhea? Yes, you just got it all exactly out. It's it. good. Thank yeah. You, thank you, Mary. Yeah. Thank expelled you. the demon. Yes. <laughs> he has exercised. I got the it demons. all. Oh, I just want to know: Did his head spin around? <laughs> There's <laughs> like steam Linda Blair. Out. There's steam coming out of his ear uh, yeah. his earphones. His headsets, his headsets, yeah. Greg is psychotic. Edward Wright. I, I, I think one blown gasket a day is is good for the, the yeah. soul. I yeah. think it's good for the blood pressure. Uh, I think it's good for a lot of things. Hey, Edward, mm-hmm. it's radio, brother. Okay, just relax. <laughs> Jesus, mighty. Oh my God. You enjoying this, Mary? I love this. I just, I, I love I just this. Sit back and I let him stew. <laughs> Well, you know, to 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 Greg's credit here, he he's kind of quiet. He kind of sits back. He's letting you and me do our thing, right? And then it builds up, it and so he just has to just eventually just boom. He's like Mount Etna. Every now and then, he just yeah. like, boom, you. you know. Yeah. Jen, uh, Jen, Jen, Jennifer, Jennifer Lewis actually wants to check in on what Greg oh, just no, said. I know what mental illness looks like. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that has to be one of the best rants, that rant there with Jennifer. That, that's that got to be one of the best. That's a rant for all times. So that's got to be in the top ten. By the way, has she been reprimanded by ABC for that outburst? Because I Nobody know, would if, know, you know, so a lot of people, if somebody would say that about Joe Biden, you know, their employer would call J- him in for, uh, to HR. Mm-hmm. JK13, mm-hmm. if you keep screaming, I will turn it off. Good. Good. Turn it off. I don't care. I don't care. Turn it off. Good God. You do reach I, notes that dogs can hear you. Thank now. you. I I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna stop now. And then, and then when we lose that guy, Greg's gonna be like, "Damn, I should not have said that." <laughs> now he'll blame you. Yeah, yeah he'll blame me. Nick, no, you blame fault. me. I won't be here. You can blame me. Right, there Mary. You go. I would never Her. blame you, Mary. I would never blame you. You guys would... ready for one last crazy story of the day? 
Sure. This, this is almost too good to be true. The New York Post with the headline, Lori Lightfoot. Remember, oh, yes. You remember her lightweight, right? The mayor of yeah. Chicago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably the worst mayor short of Jim, uh, Jim, uh, Jim, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Jim Kenny here in Philadelphia. But they're all awful because uh, they all subscribe to the same failed progressive policies that don't work. Uh, but Lori Lightfoot has now been hired to investigate <laughs> the worst mayor in America, Tiffany Henyard. And oh, by the way. Lori Lightfoot to investigate. I mean, think about this. You fail. This would be like uh, one of us having the worst ratings in the history of radio and then being hired as a radio consultant to tell people it, how to do radio. Isn't that how it usually was, happens? Well, that's usually the way. Oh, uh, you beat me to yes. it, darling. I'm sorry. Yes. No, that's, yes. that's how it usually happens. Yes. The ones who were fired yeah. or, or never made a name for themselves in the business become right. consultants. Right. Oh, I'm singing a gig for me. Yeah. I used to love it when I was in sports and we would bring in a guy from like Phoenix, Arizona to tell you, the lifelong Philadelphian, what Philadelphia sports fans want to hear on the radio. And then they get 10 grand. They go through their talking points yeah. and then they leave. Not that I was jealous. Um, but uh, Lori Lightfoot has been hired at $400 per hour. Wow. To investigate the worst mayor, the Illinois village of Dalton, D-O-L-T-O-N, has voted in favor of a resolution to hire ex-Chicago mayor Lori Lightfoot to investigate its own leader, Tiffany Henyard, who is accused of misusing taxpayer funds and various other corrupt practices. Lightfoot, who lost her re-election bid in a landslide last year. And the, the sad part about uh, Chicago is they, they were they were sick of progressive policies and super left stuff, right? So they yeah. they, they <laughs> vote for Brandon Johnson and he's exactly. further left than Lightfoot That's, is. So yep. It's like, again, you know, elections have consequences. Um, and they go on to say Lightfoot um, was, quote, honored to be tasked with the investigation of Henyard, uh, Dalton's self-proclaimed Super mayor, quote, is somebody who has made good governance the cornerstone of my career <laughs> in public service. I recognize that maintaining the trust of those awesome. who you serve and making decisions in their best interest is essential. This this is not a parody. This is not the Babylon Bee here, Mary. This is real life. And, but that's why this is so delicious. And I love this. But this is this any different than hiring a criminal to have like a TV show to tell people how to how not to become victims of crime. Correct. That's exactly, right. That's exactly. So it's right. like the same thing. It's yes. like like this is how I stole the you know the title to your home. Yeah. This that guy's on TV. He's got he's got like the commercial for that company, right? Mm -hmm. And he's like, I used to do it all the time. And I'm like, yet yeah, they're high. which it makes sense. Mm -hmm. So who better to investigate corruption in mayors? than like Lori Lightfoot. This is the equivalent right? of Claudine Gay being fired at Harvard for plagiarism and then yes. coming and getting a lecture about academic integrity, right? And she didn't get fired. They just gave her that's, another gig at the same salary. Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> so she it didn't was, get fired. They just kind of rearranged the deck chairs on the Titanic. Who was it? That, was it McGill that got fired at Penn, I believe? Yes, McGill got, yeah. It was Liz McGill, yeah. Well, she's white, so I think that's why she got fired, whereas Claudine Gay, they just said, okay, you just go over here, and you don't have to do anything, and we'll still pay you the same amount of money. Yes, $400 per hour to talk mm -hmm. about things that you're not equipped to talk about. That in a city like Chicago that couldn't wait to get rid of you and then probably made their situation even worse. That's a good life if you can get it. All right, there you go. Last story of the day. We'll come back. We'll wrap up. We've got what's on the cut sheet part due. We're going to find out what's on tap at the top of the hour, who won Twitter today, and today in music history. It's all still on the way. Kale and Company as we put a bow on today's show after this. Space may be the final frontier, but it's also what a lot of us lack in our basement or garage. By switching to a Navian tankless water heater, not only will you have all the hot water you need whenever you need it, but you'll gain storage area as well. Maybe a place to display your space collectibles. Highly logical. Learn about Navian's series of high-efficiency tankless water heaters and how they don't just save space, but save dollars on your utility bills too. For more, go to tanklessmadesimple.com. Are you a victim of the timeshare trap and think there's no way out? I'm Chuck McDowell, founder of Wesley Financial Group, the original timeshare cancellation expert. And I'm here to tell you that there is a way out. All you need to do is give my office a call. I will send you a timeshare exit information kit absolutely free. 
explaining how the timeshare industry works and your options for cancellation. Call Wesley now for your free info kit. 800-790-1400. 800-790-1400. As veterans, we're no strangers to helping others. It's what we were taught, trained, and told to do. It could be for anything. Helping a friend move. Listening to a fellow veteran for hours at any hour of the day. Or just simply making time for people, a neighbor, a loved one, or even a stranger. We're often the first to help others. There's no question about it. But we do have one question for the veterans listening. When is the last time you reached out for help? Perhaps it's time to do for yourself what you would do for others. If you or someone you know needs resources, whether it's for stress, finances, employment, or mental health, don't wait. Reach out. Find more information at va.gov reach. That's va.gov reach. Brought to you by the United States Department of Veterans Affairs and the Ad Council. If you're drowning in IRS debt and can't afford to pay, then you need to take advantage of special IRS tax programs that are available and free yourself from IRS collection efforts once and for all. Due to the financial hardship consumers are facing throughout the country, the Internal Revenue Service has made it easier to settle delinquent tax problems. An open phone line has been established by Community Tax for consumers to call and see if they qualify. Take down this number or store it in your cell phone, but call the Community Tax Helpline at 800-514-1020. If you owe back taxes to the IRS and cannot afford to pay them back, or even if you have years of unfiled tax returns, there's no need to fear anymore. But you have to call the Community Tax Helpline today at 800-514-1026 for the help that you need. Don't take on the IRS alone. They can attack your wages, savings, pension, home, and even your Social Security check. Call 800-514-1026 for your free consultation and to see if you qualify. That's 800-514-1026. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle, unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Hi, it's John DeMassey, host of Health Watch, Sunday mornings at 8 and again at 4 here on Talk Radio 1210. If you or someone you know has been diagnosed with cancer or undergoing treatments that cause severe fatigue or brain fog, medical hydration may be right for you. Dr. Molly Fantasia of Innovative Medical Associates has more than 30 years' experience in helping cancer patients to improve their quality of life. We believe in medical hydration. We've improved it so much that we are able to help people across the board with challenges before they become chronic. Nutrients delivered right to the cells support your immune system through surgery, chemotherapy, or wherever you may be on your cancer journey. Visit InnovativeMedicalAssociates.com to schedule a free consultation with Dr. Molly in their Marlton, New Jersey office. And join us on Sunday mornings at 8 and again at 4 for Health Watch to learn more about the benefits of medical hydration for cancer, autoimmune diseases, and more. Tom Giordano at noon, Kale and Company now on Talk Radio 1210, WPHT, and the free Odyssey app. Oh, yeah, fired up Thursday, Kale and Company, Nick, Mary, Greg, 855-839-1210. Get us on the free Odyssey app. Watch us live on YouTube for great radio moments like you just heard or saw. 
last segment. A stalker went nuclear. <laughs> it's always good radio. I just kind of put my feet up and let him do his thing. I love when people blow gaskets and it's not me. Gives me a, can- a little chance to catch my breath. Um, can I ask a question? What, what is this that we're listening to? What, what is this? I'm dead. Give me roses. What, what, what is this? Yeah, yay, Stone, happy, happy Thursday to you. Stone Temple Pilots, dead and bloated. You a little Lovely. STP? little yeah. STP, Mary? Come on. Like like whales at the Jersey Shore that yeah. Bill Murphy's killing? Yeah. I, I, I get dead and bloated to start your day. There you go. Yeah, I, hey, hey, have hey, a great day, on, everybody. Rock and roll, baby. Yeah. That's how rock we do it here. Roll. This is not rock and roll. Oh, it's, this is, it is. Oh, please. The opposite of dead and bloated is alive and bloated, or also known as sloppy Chris Christie. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I'm bum. All right, we got a lot to get to here in the final ten minutes of the show. Let's get to what we like to call "What's on the Cut Sheet Part Two." What's on the Cut Sheet? I do. What's on the Cut Sheet Part Two? Sponsored by Budget Blinds. Spring is here, and now is the time to budget. Budget Blinds is your one-stop shop for blind shade shutters, custom drapery, and motorization. Yes, motorization. Visit, bud- visit BudgetBlinds.com for a free in-home cons- consultation and the only no-question-asked warranty in the business, BudgetBlinds.com. Thank you, Budget Blinds, for sponsoring the ever-important Thursday edition of What's on the Cut Sheet Part Do. We didn't get to this earlier. Hat tip to Mary Walter for finding this audio for us. Michael Yay. Avenatti oh, yes. was on um, MSNBC yesterday. He called in from prison. <laughs> And he and he kind of defended Donald Trump. Ooh. Let me say that again. Michael Avenatti called in MSNBC from prison. Okay. And defended Donald Trump. Oh boy. Yeah. This is cut one. Phil, go. Uh, and you join us at a very newsworthy time. Uh, some of your lawyering uh, led to the exposure of the evidence in this case. Uh, the New York trial now will be Donald Trump's first and possibly only trial this year. Um, how do you assess the strength of the prosecution's case? Well, I think what I'm about to say is going to surprise a lot of people, and Uh that is that, um, you know, I think this is the wrong case at the wrong time, Ari. Um, I I think that the case is in many ways stale at this juncture. Wow. You're talking about conduct that occurred some eight years ago. Uh, I think the uh, fact that it's occurring in state court in New York uh, is a mistake. Uh, And I think that when you are going to... Uh, potentially deprive tens of millions of Americans uh, of their choice for the presidency of the United States, whether we agree with those folks or not, or regardless of what we may think of Donald Trump, I think it's a mistake to do it based on a case of this nature. Hmm. Um, I I was hoping, frankly, that uh, there would have been less hand-wringing, less bedwetting, and that the January 6th case would have been filed in a more timely manner. There's no excuse or reason as to why that case could not have been brought in 2021, and it should have been brought in 2021. And had it been brought in 2021, we would not find ourselves in the situation that we're in right now. Now, I know a lot of people have been critical of the United States Supreme Court, and uh, as well as the second, uh, not the second, but the D.C. Circuit. Yep. You know, I, I think those complaints are frankly misplaced. Wow. How about that? So mm. he comes out and says Alvin Bragg's case is stale, a.k.a. legally. I mean, the statute of limitations, for God's sakes, they expired. To, yep. to reactivate it, he basically had to bootstrap a misdemeanor to a felony. Um, so, Mary, you found that clip. Uh, your, your thoughts on that? So, first of all, I want to know who Michael Avenatti's agent is, because i got to get that agent, because he, that agent got him a gig from prison. It's true. That's right? a very good point. <laughs> so, good you know, point. and I'm on a street corner, and I'm considering becoming a greeter at Walmart. <laughs> so, um, so I need his agent. That's the first thing. But he, he's absolutely right. This case, uh, Cyrus Vance Jr., who was the DA before Alvin Bragg, s- turned this case down, yeah. which is why the statute of limitations uh, went out on it. Uh, the feds chose not to um, go after... The feds didn't go after Trump on this. They they booted it to SDNY. Yep. They said, no, nope, we're not doing it. And then along comes Alvin Bragg, mm-hmm. who we know is, I will not be surprised if we find out that members of his office have also been to the White House, just like members of Fannie Willis and Letitia James have all, and Jack Smith have all met at the White House with someone 
and why are why are they meeting at, with anybody at the White House when their cases don't involve the White yeah. House? But you a know. good point. So. Look, when multiple prosecutors at multiple jurisdictional levels decline to touch a case, and then yep. all of a sudden somebody does, you have to ask yourself why. Do you guys mm-hmm. think that this is the first time they've brought on a guest from his jail cell? Just curious. I, I've never seen it before. And I, I'm also wondering, did did the host there, did, does he know well, that I mean, Avenatti's going to sit there and basically... We, we've played those clips. We've played those clips of basically the media just like fawning all over Michael Avenatti. Oh, yeah. So much so that they said that he should run for president at some point, I believe. Somebody God. said. Yes, so, you're right. Like what... I just want to know who, who the... Uh, to Mary's point, who's booking him from his jail cell, and how does one do that? Mm-hmm. And I have first dibs on them, so get in line, Greg. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Yeah, the other the thing is, is every now and then it's interesting. CNN and MSNBC will stumble into journalism. Mm-hmm. CNN more so, shockingly, which I find interesting, than MSNBC. But here's my thing. What's Avenatti's angle here? Yeah, that's a good question. Right? Yeah. What's his angle? Trump's on the hook now for the Stormy Daniels thing that he started. Yeah. Right. 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 And Stormy Daniels went up having to pay Trump because so, of Avenatti. And that starts if my calendar's correct on Monday, right? Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. And this is the same thing that John Edwards was hoisted up from. And he used campaign cash to pay mm-hmm. off uh, Riel Hunter. Right. Oh, my God. Uh, and that he walked away from that. So why we're, why we're even doing this is just to obviously it's election <laughs> interference. But what's Avenatti? What's Avenatti's angle? Like, well, and how, it how about him coming out saying, especially on the January 6th case, if they wanted to prosecute it, they could have done it three years ago. Ago. They should have done exact, and that's right? the point. Yes. So, what's his angle? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg on the View yesterday claimed oh, that God. Republicans want to bring slavery back. Oh, the whoopster <laughs> coming out firing. I, I, I haven't heard this. We played a clip the other day um, when Mary was here of the um, them saying that they were going to bring back the kids in cages. Mm-hmm. Yes. They're just they're just replaying the hits from 2016. Yeah. Well, they they're have out of to. Content. Yeah. They, they have to. Yep. What are they going to talk about? Biden's economy? Uh, cut nine, Phil, go. Look at the, <laughs> take a look at the things that they're rolling back. Mm. Remember I said ages ago, you know, they, in their minds, they want to bring slavery back. Mm-hmm. They're okay with it because, you see, things change. You know, one of the good things about the Supreme Court is you can fight to make sure you make stuff better. You don't generally fight to make stuff worse. (coughs) And to me, or to roll back. And to me, if you're okay rolling that back, when things were not even a state, when we had no say, Mm -hmm. yeah. So how's that going to roll? How's that going to roll? What What's the next thing? Because you know, on this, uh, with all of this comes birth control. Right. With all of this comes. Everything that you need as a woman to have 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 had put in place to make sure that we were doing better than we were and well, before. Well, hold on, I... By the way, Alyssa Farrah Griffin's response to like you see her visually there for a second. She's like, "What are you talking about? They're trying to bring." By the way, like how do we? How do you bring slavery back? Do we get together for like a big meeting? Yeah, you know, do we sit down on Zoom? How do we? How do we bring this back? I'm just curious, Whoopi. The abortion bones connected to the slavery bone. I just even refuse to entertain this. Sorry. It's just, it's just, I, I, I just can't. I cannot give the sorry. Yentas any kind of credence by sitting here and trying to figure out what Whoopi Goldberg really meant. The woman, the woman is, it, I, I can't. Yeah. You know, it's sorry. amazing to me is forget like the actual politics or the the concept of slavery or anything like that. You're on a show. How long is that show? Is that show two hours? No, it's an hour. No. So oh, it's, dear it's Lord, a, no. Yeah. It's yeah. a panel of five God. people for one hour. Yeah. That's got to be the e- with probably 33 different producers. 42 mm-hmm. minutes of content. You couldn't. I mean, that is the easiest gig on the planet. We do yes. four hours a day with two producers and an executive producer. And this is the best you've got. Yep. This is the best content you can come up with. Four hours it's the a day, NPR five days a of TV. Yeah, you're 100 percent right. It's awesome. uh, you're just do, jealous. Do, do, I am. Do I have time for <laughs> no. I guess I guess we should out save, of time. I guess we should save Aaron Rodgers for tomorrow. Yeah. All right. Let's get to uh, a uh, Thursday edition of Today in Wait, Music. Hang on. Hang on. Hang oh, on. he's not ready hang yet. On, this ready. is where we play the music that yeah. Phil talks about. He's like today. Yeah. Here we go. Here ready? It comes. Here we go. What happened on this day in music history? Here it comes. Music history. April 11th. Actually, no notable birthdays, but I got a bunch of albums. 
including Firehouse's third album and White Zombie's Astro Creep 2000, both released in 95. Sabotage released their debut in 83. CCR released their final album in 72. And Iron Maiden released Seven Son of a Seven Son on this day in 88. And by the way, they're coming to Wells Fargo Center in November, and of course, I will be there. One notable single, Argent released Hold Your Head Up on this day in 72. Argent. Also, in 91, Ringo Starr appeared on The Simpsons. Frank Sinatra recorded Strangers of the Night on this day in 66. And Dave Mustaine was kicked out of Metallica on this day in 83. Wow. And lastly, in 77, Alice Cooper played to an audience of 40,000 people in Sydney, Australia. It's the largest crowd to attend a rock show in the country's history. For Kale and Company, wow. I'm Phil Lomquist. I'm a little surprised that number seems low. Who knew that Alice Cooper held the record in Australia? Yeah, but they've got some big venues there. I would have figured they would have a six-figure attendance. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right. Let's get to uh, who won Twitter today. Uh, one more time. No. Who won Twitter? Who won Twitter sponsored by the Arden Theater. I'm going to give it to Jeremy Burke. He says, I'm now claiming victim status as a result of the be- the berating aggression projected by Greg Stocker. I do not start at 6 a.m. Oh, you don't. So there you go. Well, that's why we created the rewind feature on the app, so you can go back and get it. Don't miss Arden's Ooh. Children Theater's modern retelling of the classic tale, Pinocchio, adapted by Greg Banks, a wooden boy, a nose that grows, a huge whale, and a cricket with a lot of opinions. On stage now, info at ardentheater.org. That's ardentheater.org. All right, there you go. Merry great time. Uh, great time as always. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I'm back on Monday, Monday. right, guys? Monday. Yes. yes. All right. We will chat again on Monday Thank morning. Thank you for having me. Have yes. a great weekend. Yes. You too. All right. We'll see everybody tonight if you're heading out to uh, the Zlock Performing Woo-hoo. Arts Center in Bucks County. Say hello, Rand Paul, Dom Giordano. And as the binder would say after she says a whole bunch of nothing. I'll see you tomorrow. Come talk to me. Hi, this is Dom Giordano. If you're dealing with inflammation or stiff joints, then Glyco Plus from Rescue Natural Supplements can be your ticket to a healthier spring. Glyco Plus features a unique blend of green lipped muscle complex and UC2 collagen, specifically designed to support joint health. Collagen, a vital component of joint cartilage, plays a crucial role in maintaining strength and flexibility. And right now, Rescue Glyco Plus is buy one, get one free for anyone with our exclusive radio code just use the code relief to double up your order for free again that's r-e-l-i-e-f call them today at 826 live 800-262-5483 speak to a knowledgeable rescue product consultant you can also use the code on